Hello and welcome everyone. Today here on the Yu-Gi-Oh! channel, we have something special. I know you might be normally used to the trading card game, but we're actually featuring Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel. We have a special Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel event going on, and I can't be more excited to have an awesome commentary partner here. We have the Skilled Roy. Thanks for joining me here today. Hey man, thank you so much for having me. I'm actually so excited for Cross Duel. Uh, honestly, a four player card game is something really unique and fresh for the genre. And I'm really, really excited to see uh, how our amazing competitors uh, do in this uh, new format. That's right. I forgot to mention, I'm Billy Brink, and yeah, I'm a card game player, you know, to the core. I've been playing the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game for 20 years, and now we have this new mobile game. It's uh, available on mobile called Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel, and as you mentioned, it's four players. You still be playing a card game, but kind of going against three other players all at once. It's very, very exciting, but we have a lot of stuff that's going to be going on, not just one match. We have a bunch of matches, so let's go ahead and talk about the schedule and see what we're going to be going over today. Looks like first up, we're having the kickoff. That's going on right now, followed up by the Knights Arena, where we're going to have uh, players from the stream, uh, from the ch the King's stream is going to be playing against each other. And then we have the King's Raid. What about after that, Skilled Roy? Yeah, and then after that, we have the Kings of the Cross, sorry, King of the Cross, which is going to be our four Kings do doing battle in the typical four player format, seeing which of them takes the crown. And then finally, we have the wrap up, which will be going over the final sort of elements of the competition. That is right. It's going to be really exciting. I hope you're excited just to check out Cross Duel. You get Cross Duel, which is just an awesome mobile game. You can download it for free from the App Store, uh, iOS, or Android. So you want to make sure if you're watching at home, you just kind of want to see what's going on, go ahead and download it so you can play along, kind of start getting your collection together as we're going on. But first, let's talk about that first event we're doing. It's the Knights Arena. So we have the four kings. We have Amaz, Kibler, um, Dog, and uh, Trump. So they're going to be all competing later on. But leading up to this event, They've been playing for like the past month. They've been having streams at least weekly where they're kind of, you know, figuring out cross duel, how to go about it. And as the, the viewers are watching the Kings learn, they're also getting their chance to participate as well. And on their last uh, stream, they were able to take the top four competitors who are going to be able to face off against the other uh, groups and eventually will crown one knight. Yeah, and uh, I think right off the bat, we have uh, Amaz and uh, Kibler as our first two kings. We'll be seeing what their knights are sort of bringing to the table. I uh, have their names here right now, actually. It's going to be Rainbow, Ross.Bing, Nervzak, and Germ for Amaz. And for Kibler, we're going to have Fancy Diesel, Otter, Mikesan, and Crystal12. So uh, lots of really great competitors here. I know I've seen them actually practicing quite a bit already on their various streams. Uh, they've been doing lots of great stuff over on their uh, original channels as well. So I'm really, really excited to see what they're bringing to this competition. That's right, and we have awesome competitors, but we wouldn't have competitors unless there was some prizes on the line. So Roy, why don't you take a second and tell us about these awesome prizes they can win? Of course, of course. So right off the bat, we have a iPhone 14 Pro with a custom background for uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel. And of course, we also have some amazing iPod Pros to go alongside with them. I actually just got my own pair recently. They're absolutely fantastic. So absolutely amazing prizes right here. Yeah, the that I really, the one thing I like about Crossroad Myth is that like kind of the brand logo they have over there because well Cross Duel, you're not only playing across from other players, it's crossing, you know, the barriers of the anime series. You can see mm -hmm. Yugi and uh, Kaiba there from the original series, and then you have Yusei from five Ds, and of course everyone's favorite, Jaden Yuki from GX. Yeah, really cool to see that the custom branding there on the iPhone uh, 14 Pro and the AirPods Pro case. Definitely something I personally want to get my hands on, but unfortunately I'm here just getting to, you know, watch the players that are going to have the opportunity to win uh, these of awesome course. prizes. Of course, of course. And of, actually, you actually mentioned this earlier as well, but I believe Crossdoor doesn't even just stop at those four series. It actually goes even further beyond, I think up to sevens, you said? Yeah, it goes all the way to Yu-Gi-Oh! 7. So if you have like a favorite character from any one of the series, you should yeah, check out Crossdoor, pick your favorite character, and then you could use their ace monster. It's Crossdoor is a lot different from the trading card game where you can build up skills and you know customize the cards the way you want. Uh, the skills kind of being similar to what a monster effect uh, would be in terms of the trading card game if you're not familiar. But it's definitely really cool. Like, yeah, <laughs> Sevens is like one of my favorite ones. One of the more recent animes you can watch on Hulu or Disney XD. Uh, there's actually more episodes shown on Disney XD than you can find on Hulu. So make sure you uh, get those extra 20 episodes from that. But yeah, Luke with multi side Dragon Dragius is one of my favorites. But you did mention our players. You already introduced them, and I think they are ready to start. We're going to be having the first pool and the second pool be going simultaneously. And uh, we're going to be jumping back and forth just kind of see how these players are uh, going about it so we can figure out who's going to be the knight, the champion for their king. 
Yeah, exactly. I am really excited to see what they sort of bring to the table here. I believe we have each of them coming up just shortly, uh, and then we'll be able to sort of go over which sort of their various plays are going to be. I think we're going to be actually be jumping between both of the matches as well, capturing some of the best highlights of each. Uh, but first, we have Amaz's uh, Knights right off the bat here. Let's take a look. This is what I'm here for. I've been waiting for this moment. Like, Cross was a lot of fun to watch, even from like a viewing perspective, just because there's so much that can go on in the game. And it's like, it's like it's similar to Rush Duel. So Rush Duel, we talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. Mm -hmm. You get to summon as many monsters as you want. In the trading card game, you only get one normal summon per turn. But in Cross Duel and Rush Duel, you're able to summon as many monsters as you have, as long as you have zones to summon them to. In Cross yeah, Duel, yeah. a lot, there you have this board where you're able to summon your monsters. You take a turn, everyone plays the turn at the same time, summoning their monsters, and then which lane you summon on will determine where they go on the board. Nice, and I think right now, actually, you can see the card in the middle there. Can you tell us more about that card in the middle right there? Uh, which are, you, are you talking about like the Sardis Dragon in the hand here, or the... Oh, no, sorry, the, uh, the uh, card in the middle of the battlefield. I think both players start fighting over this. Oh, the card in the, oh, the middle, oh yeah, so the middle card, all four lanes can go towards that middle zone. Uh, the first person to reach that card gets to gain that card to their hand. Uh, so it's going to be a bonus card, something powerful, something like a mirror force, where like when your opponent monster attacks, you can destroy all monsters in that lane. Uh, it could be a powerful spell card like Monster Reborn to bring back a monster that had already been destroyed. Uh, so it's definitely one of your main tactics could be to go after that first card, but that's where the strategy begins. Like if you know everyone's going after that first card, do you want to waste your resources to battle for that extra power, or do you want to just maybe deal with that extra card advantage that they're going to gain? Exactly. You start setting up traps there, setting up a side attack. So everyone else is focusing on the middle. You can take a, one of your opponents that's on the side. There's a lot of different ways you can sort of ta tackle that angle right there. It looks yeah. like we're starting all going here right in the middle. Here we go. See who's going to get it. We do see a lot. So every player here seems to have brought a lot of Kaiba's cards. You see the XYZ uh, dragon monsters. So you see the Z metal tank out there. Looks mm -hmm. like. I don't know who got that middle card. It may have been Germ. It looks like it's Germ by the looks of it. I think that's who we got right there. Yep. Yep. Nice. It's and it's going to keep proceeding another... onwards too, right? It's going to keep going right over to Nerf Zack, I believe, here once it gets that middle card. Yep. Yeah, you keep going straight forward. You're always going to go straight. It's pretty easy to tell where your monsters are going to go. Put it in the left, it's going to the left. You put it in the middle, it's going straight. Put it on the right, it's going to go to the opponent on the right. So you got there's a lot of strategy in planning where you're going to put your monsters, where they're going to go. And it looks like that middle card was. Uh, really powerful trap card we're gonna have to see if he will be able to use that later on something else i want to mention about cross if you're not familiar you don't notice the stardust dragon one it's a synchro monster and a link mm -hmm. Kribo is also in this hand these are cards that are normally in the extra deck but in cross mm -hmm. things work a little bit different so you get to actually play with these cards they do still have the same kind of like color like link Kribo being a link monster uh but they just have their summoning mechanics are built into the card uh, themselves, so you won't need a you if to maybe some stars dragon, you'll need a monster that's a tuner, but you won't be wow, performing look at that, look at that animation. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, Dark Magician's really, really cool. Definitely awesome to see the ace monster come down. You always get to start with your ace monster in your hand that you pick, which is really cool. So you can kind of build your deck around the ace monster that you choose. Yeah, and there's Stardust, of course, also coming out. These animations are absolutely amazing for these ace monsters. I know each of them had one when I was first playing, so this is really, really amazing, cool stuff to see. Yeah, my favorite is Ajama King. It's like, you want to look away, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right, man. things are going, starting to heat up here as we get the ace monsters coming out. I think we're going to start seeing two of them now. Uh, I'm not sure if we can see the other two players just yet, but that was just the first turn. A lot of stuff going on really well here. Yeah, the, the cross the way you win is similar to Yu-Gi-Oh! You can either reduce the first time of one of these players' life points hit zero, the match is over. And then whoever has the highest life points is uh, in first place. So you can rank, the rankings go by how many life points you have. So while in like the regular trading card game, getting life points isn't as advantageous, mm -hmm. uh, in cross it can really matter because if you have the most amount of life points at the end of the match, you win. Yeah, exactly. And I think and now we're going to be swapping over next to Kibler. Kibler's uh, knights are now just about to get started here. We can see everyone sort of setting up. I like the one of Kibler's knights, Chaz Princeton, hanging in there. Chaz, you know, always having to show up and Chaz it up. Oh, Chaz it up, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you course, gotta Chaz up. But here comes Red Dragon Archfiend. Definitely one of my favorite cards in the Yu Gi Oh! trading card game. Wow, 3,000 attacks would be hard to beat on that lane. We'll see, because I think that Z Metal tank there heading up against it, not going to stand a chance in most situations. Hopefully, he maybe has a spell card to change the odds here. Oh, that's Neo, right? Yep, Elemental Hero Neos. That's Jaden Yuki's ace monster card. Definitely awesome to see him touch down here. Oh, I think we're seeing small technical difficulties. Okay, there we go. We're back Jumped here. Jumped right back. Jumped right back. Gear Freed, the Iron Knight coming down. Oh, you can just nice. go. I love the Link Karibo animation. I love yeah. that. 
Yeah, Giant it's so cool to see them all standing, standing like just like the uh, anime as well, like on top of the cards. It's such a cool animation. Yeah, I really like that it's the cross duel is so intertwined with the anime, and yet you get to see those actual animations. It's it's really cool. The 3D models are fantastic. Like even the like the video that you watch while you're like downloading the game is really mm -hmm. cool. Like you get to watch like all the monsters battling each other, like in what seems to look like Battle City. Yeah, this is all right, really, really attack. fantastic. So the spells and traps in Cross Duel, you set them in your spell and trap card zone, and then once you get to the battle phase, that's when you're going to be able to activate them. And it looks like we had a double attack here being activated by Rainbow. We see Rainbow holding that Ojama King in his hand. I hope we get to summon it so we can see that awesome 3D animation for it. Right, the skill being activated here as we start seeing them start attacking to the next section here. Let's see this progressing to the next phase. Here we go. Everyone's still sitting at 4,000 life points. No one taking too much of a lead. We see Nerf Zack with 4,200. Probably got like a 200 life points out of one of the skills. Just a bonus effect. Oh, there we go. Taking one for sure there. And of course, they start getting some life points there. Actually, what's really interesting there, Trap Hole in the original card game was a destruction uh, trap card, right? But in this game, I think right. it actually impairs movement, which is kind of cool because that's exactly <laughs> what, what a, a trap hole would do, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, so you like really, fell into really cool. a hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes the time to, you got to take the time to climb out of that hole for sure. A really um, unique way to sort of show it in this, sort of, this different type of game. Yeah, I love that about Cross because like these are cards I've known like my whole life. I love them and I, I know what they do. I'm like everything about them is so awesome. But in Cross Duel, you get to kind of customize them. They have skills instead of effects, and you get to pick what effects they have. And yeah, they kind of are adjusted a little bit as you mentioned the trap holds where they can kind of apply to the board state uh, mm -hmm. a little more applicable. But yeah, I think like that trap card that he took from the middle there, the Ring of Destruction, might be really impactful. Nice oh, another cool looks... animation there on the side there. Yep, Rocket Warrior coming down, and then I believe that's Gaga Ga Magician and Dark Resonator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's the Dark see. Resonator is going to try and stop this gear free. The Iron Knight looks like Dark Resonator has a skill built in to give his other monsters on the field more attack. Fantastic. And here we go to the next battle phase. We'll see who managed to win out with between these characters here. Okay, this trap looks like it's modifying wow. the attacks of all these monsters. Ross do nothing, really trying to make a comeback here, making taking a stand. Yeah, zero attack is not gonna be able to stand much of a chance here. Yeah, so when we first demoed this game at the New York Comic Con and uh, San Diego Comic Con, this is kind of the same experience when I was watching games. There's so much going on. It's hard to like make sure you manage. You just gotta wait till the very end because someone who's ahead at the very beginning could sneak by and be saving their cards till the end and then play everything at once and take complete control of the game. As long as you manage your rounds right, because there is a total of eight turns. And at the end of that eight turns, even if everyone still has life points, that's the end of the game. Exactly, especially if someone is chaining together a bunch of life gain effects on their own, they can suddenly mm -hmm. burst out of nowhere and get steal the steal the last round really easily. So Oops. they have to be really careful about resources. Yep, shield and sword, that's a classic. Of I'm course, assuming it's course. gonna do something similar. It, oh, at least boost the attack and defense. Nice, okay. It looks like the battle phase is about to finish up here. There's a movement. Nice, takes out two right there, really, really strong. Looks like Stardust Dragon launched a direct attack. So the thing about Crossbow that's different from the trading card game. So in the trading card game, all the monsters have attack and defense, just like in Crossbow. But when the two monsters battle, you can see that their stats are changing. They're being reduced by the attack of the attacking monster. And then they get to continue on with the remaining uh, stats that it has. That's completely different from the trading card game, but it's something really cool to like take advantage of. So you can summon out a monster, have it destroy one of your opponent's monsters, but now it only has like maybe 100 attack remaining. So then you're mm -hmm. going to want to use that monster as a tribute summon. So you, you can tribute your cards no matter where they are on the field, as long as they're still you know on the field. <laughs> so you can yeah. like kind of play your strategies about that, send out the ones that you think will survive one attack, but then be useful to tribute to get out your powerful monster later on. Yeah, and then that's where a lot of the depth comes in too, right? Because then the opponents might try to stop your uh, your unit who's approaching them, but oh, watch out, you're actually gonna tribute some of that. So you actually <laughs> baited them into playing a move, a move that wasn't necessarily the best. So like, there's a lot of different, really cool in-depth motions here that really come into play and add, add another uh, two extra players to the mix and it becomes a really, really engaging strategy game. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Definitely love cross tool. And now it looks like Rainbow's in a pretty, like he doesn't, he has a lot of monsters on the board, so. He has two in the left lane there. It looks like two in the right lane, maybe? Maybe mm -hmm. just one, but definitely a lot here going for Rainbow. Nerf Zack is losing life points fast. So once, and that's another thing, once one player starts losing life points fast, you know all the other players are gonna be looking to gang up because they want to end the game. So they're gonna, especially if they have the life point lead, that's the player they're gonna focus on is the one that might be 
lower low enough at the first which right now we're looking at nerf zach yeah, exactly. Especially for actually looking here too. Rainbow's being really conservative, still holding on to his ace card. So that's also a huge part of this as well. Yeah, no, Jama King, you know, just such a cool card. <laughs> I, I want him to summon it. I want to see the animation. Me it's too, just, me too. It's horrifying and beautiful all at the same time. Uh, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. He also has Tiger Jet in hand as well. So he'll be able to play that out as well. Uh, let's sort of see where these players start putting down their cards here. We're getting down to the last two final turns. So this this is where the, the start starts mattering. Nerf Zach has a huge mountain to climb here, especially against people who are now in the 4,000s and 5,000s of, of life point totals. We'll have to see what happens. Here we go. There it is. There it is. Here's the animation. Here we go. I love what Joey just <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. It, it's, it's so beautiful. And just you, just, you want to look away, but you can't. Truly, I love truly a work of art. Truly a work we of saw, art. We saw Jazz in the other match. I'm sure he's yeah. amazing. I'm sure he's happy to get a break from the Ajamas over here in the other game. But look, how, he, look how big he is on the board. Yeah, he's gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And I think that's that's so cool too. Getting able to see the car, uh, the different cards like actually have animations. I can actually see Tiger Jet actually flying. I can see mm -hmm. the uh, Java King just taking up all the space in the world. Uh, it's no wonder he normally removes uh, slots uh, from the opponent. That's really great. Oh man. Oh yeah. If he did what he, and crossed what he did in the trading card game, nobody would be able to play. He, just <laughs> yeah. him, he can't summon any more monsters. That would be hilarious. Oh man. Oh man. All right. All right here we go. We've got, looks like Zach has a little bit of a de defense here. It looks like he does have that Ring of Destruction, so he's going to use that on the left lane to destroy that monster. Nice, take some LP damage there as well, trying to get as much lower as he can, but it's still looking pretty rough for him. Yeah, even that, even with even with taking a battle and a defense down, it's still at a, a nice uh, 1,900 defense. That's that's a huge wall for people to try to overcome here. Yeah, Rainbow knowing that he can use his Ajama King to protect his life points. And going to continually be able to gain defense, so it's just always there as a huge protection. Yeah, Definitely a awesome strategy. And with only two rounds left at 6,800 uh, life points, it's going to be super, super hard for people to try to challenge him right now. Oh, yeah. So this is something else that you should know about cross tools. So as the time runs out, you've already gone through six rounds. You're probably out of cards. So in the last two rounds, you get to draw two cards for your draw phase instead of one. So even if you're out of cards, you still have a chance to make a comeback into the game. Exactly, and what we're going to see here, everyone's roughly around the same cards. We still, Germ's still holding on to the ace. So let's see if this Turn is going to play out. Yeah, mm -hmm. got to play it now. He has a bunch of monsters coming at him too, so yeah. definitely might not have an opportunity. He's just going to have to play defense here. All right, summons are coming out right now. Stray Cat, that's another, yeah, another cool thing is there's Rush Duel cards in Cross Duel. Like Stray Cat is only from Rush Duel, not out in the trading card game yet. So really cool yeah. to see. Yeah, I really just feel like Cross Duel just brings together so many different elements of what we all love about the various uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! different games and formats and sort of puts into one cool new one. And I think that's what's so unique about it. Yeah, you nailed it. All right, here we go. I'm starting to see how this starts shaping up right now. Rainbow has a clear lead and it's difficult to see if anyone can really get past those walls of units. But and this this is where this is where the strategy of of the group sort of comes in. With him so far ahead, the other rest of the players might need to start ganging up on him to try to take back the lead. They can. Yeah, maybe even like use their cards to protect the person with the lowest amount of life points and be like, I just I need another turn. Don't let I mean, this yeah. game in quite just yet. Exactly, exactly. All right, Germ's taking a bit of damage here. Looks like that Vice Dragon is going to get in for 100 points of damage. <laughs> All right. Needs more defense there. That middle lane is completely blocked off. There's no way. Yeah, I think Rainbow's in pretty good control here of this matchup. With one round to go, just overwhelming lead. Not anything coming across, really coming at him. He's he's actually the aggressor in all the lanes and has the defense for himself. So definitely complete control here from Rainbow. Yeah, this is looking like it's pretty wrapped up, but let, let's see if the other players can make a difference in the second and third and fourth placings here. This mm -hmm. might be uh, might be a situation where you might want to go towards uh, playing out for second when there's such a dominant first player. Here we go, the last phase here. Looks like a Trickstar and a Ram Clouder, a Vorst Raider coming down, and the go 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 golem maybe i don't know. I've, I've seen it from behind uh, yeah, yeah. i'm not sure about which one that is i, I think it is the golem though. i think so too yeah, yeah. 
All right, we're getting into the final battle phase here. These were the last LP gains and losses will be made. 7,000 LP for Rainbow right now. Basically almost unstoppable. To, <laughs> almost to 8,000 where we started at in the trading card game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's almost doubled uh, the life points entirely. <laughs> I mean, Rainbow came in with the strategy and it looks like he's been able to apply it uh, very well. It looks like a block attack coming up. Block attack's cool. So in the trading card game, block attack is just like, oh, well, I'm putting a monster in defense. I may have a lot of attack. Well, here you're changing the stats on the monster you're dealing with. Because if a monster's mm -hmm. in defense mode, it just only looks at its defense. So it could be, take a monster that has 18 attack, put in defense mode, zero defense. You're Not only you're going to destroy that monster, you're not taking any damage for your monster's attack. So exactly. definitely a lot more practical uses for block attack here. For sure, and that's just one thing I thought was really cool too, is that so many of these uh, old school cards, I remember from like early season one, like reinforcements and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. castle walls, like they're actually massively powerful in certain situations now, because they've been revamped to, to suit this new type of game format. And I think that's what's really cool to go back and see these cards that might've been passed up by now, uh, and seeing like, oh man, they're in a new light and they're just as powerful now. I love there that as well. The final battle right here. It looks like we have a clear one and two, but we're going to see between three and four here. Looking a little tight. Wraps up. This is the end. So it looks like Ross do nothing. It's going to come in second. Yeah, it looks like a pretty solid match there with a rainbow absolutely dominant in across the entire board there, managing to not only uh, stay on the aggressive, but also have the highest uh, LP total as well as uh, some of the most uh, units on the board dealing the most damage. So really great stuff by rainbow there. Yeah, it was really a fantastic match. Uh, fun to watch. And I hope the other one went just as well. Indeed, but I think... indeed. Yep, we'll have to wait and see what we're going to go to next. I think we're both... Other pool is finished, so we are going to go to a quick break before we jump into the second uh, group of pools between uh, yeah, pool three and four. So we'll be right back after a short break. Don't go anywhere for more awesome cross duel action.
Hello and welcome back, everyone. That was an exciting first pool we got to watch. Uh, I believe we had some winners, though, there. Why don't you tell us about the winners, Roy? Yeah, of course. So we had Rainbow for Amaz and we had Mike Son for Kibler. So two amazing players already sort of making their names known in the uh, cross duel matches. We had some really, really cool matches, especially getting to see all the uh, really cool animations for all the different ace monsters, uh, as well as uh, seeing what was uh, can only be described as the true work of art that is uh, the, uh, the Ojama uh, ace card so i'm i'm really really excited to see what we have in our next set of pools here yeah i mean going into this that was the card i want i mean okay my favorite card and all honestly is multi-side dragon dragius i love luke i love the way he enters the card you're not ready for this you're so not ready for this but it's not the best cross school card even with all the skills that you can attach to it i would still mm -hmm. play it because i love it it's it can attack it's so nice it can attack twice like yeah <laughs> but uh ojama king is a, a quick uh, second uh for me mm -hmm. uh but so to see it not only come out but not to actually just be so dominant and win the game i know once so once we finish these nice pools there the, the four winners are going to face off against each other so i'm already looking at rainbow like he did not only did he win he was so dominant and he seemed to know what he was doing he's yeah. gonna be my pick to win it but we'll have to see how the other players do he's not the only one that's going to make it because now we're going to be having the pools three and four this is going to be trump and dog dogs uh groups so these viewers you know just based upon the players i mean they're all amazing contenders all our kings are fantastic but i imagine trump and dog dogs like their viewerships their their players are probably pretty good i mean look at who they're watching they're both trump you know master of value you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and dogs just you know incredible gamer to begin with so i'm excited to see which one of their champions are going to be moving on to face off against rainbow and mike sands of course. And also, just as a reminder, everyone in chat, we do have a giveaway running today. As long as you're active in the chat, you'll have the chance to win some of our various awesome prizes. Uh, we've got a custom Yu-Gi-Oh! themed power bank. And also, if you stick around to the end of the show, we also have a custom skinned AirPods for some of the lucky viewers that we have back there as well. Yeah, I really love the decal on it. It's so amazing. Like the cross duel logo is so cool. Like so at New York Comic Con, we're showing off our booth. We have this huge booth. If you're ever at any of the cons, you should come by and check out the Konami booth. We always have mm -hmm. a ton of awesome stuff. We, like I've been telling people, we have more ways to play Yu-Gi-Oh than ever. This is just one of the ways we play Yu-Gi-Oh is cross duel, and it's our newest yeah mobile game. Play on your phone anywhere you go. We also have Master Duel, where you can play anywhere on any digital platform: PlayStation Four, Five, Xbox, Steam, mm -hmm. Switch, literally everywhere. And it's the closest thing we have to. The trading card game and of course you know we have the always amazing trading card game i think y'all just saw a commercial for the tens of the pharaoh's gods i believe which is the mm. first strand, which is always you know a place where you can catch up and get cards that were released in the past year that you may not have been able to get your hands on quite just yet but either way there's more ways to play Yu Gi Oh than ever so if you're just a fan of the anime a fan of the card game there's different different ways you can get your hands on it more so than just playing the physical cards in person and cross duel is just the newest way to do that yeah, and, and what a great way it is too, right? Let's be honest, this is such a unique format and it has challenges you on new ways that you've never seen in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, sort of formats previously. And the f fact that it's four players rather than just two allows you to have so much more of the like politics and intertwining strategies that aren't typically seen in a typical 1v1 card game. Yeah, my, one of my favorite ways to play cross duel is like 2v2. So you and a friend take on two other friends. Y'all can like talk together. Y'all can build decks that help each other because you can play your cards. They affect the entire board. You can put mm. something to, to like put a trap that's going after your teammate. If you have, you know, a co-op teammate, uh, you can yeah work together, build decks. You can include cards that you can't fit in your one deck and fit them in the other deck. I really think a 2v2 is a cool way to play cross duel. But, you know, online, just playing against three other players, that's like the hardest way. And I'm always about challenges. Mm -hmm. So really fantastic to see and we also have the raid mode which we're going to see a little bit later on after we finish the night sequence we kind of saw it there on the schedule and that the king's raid that's going to be really cool it's another way you can play cross duel you actually don't play against uh the team up with uh you team up with the people instead of playing against them so you can take on one key monster in the middle instead of one of those cards but let's go ahead and talk about the prizes that are on the line here for our knights here this weekend yeah, we have, again, the iPhone 14 Pro with the custom Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel branding, of course, showing case, showcasing the amazing logo as well as the different protagonists across the series. And to go alongside that, of course, we have to give you guys the AirPod Pros with the custom Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel skin. Look at that amazing finish. Looks really, really great right there. Oh man, I just noticed that the the actual the actual uh, case for the for the uh, for the um, AirPods looks amazing too. It has the whole little logo on it as well. Absolutely perfect. That looks so good. Yeah, I have a, let's see if you can see, oh, there's like a, a briefcase back there, but in that cool, awesome Kaiba Corporation briefcase, 
Oh, it actually it was one of the things that was given away during Duel Links and a kind of, kind of thing like this. And it came with like a Duel Links power bank with the same kind of like logo, like etched actually part of it. It wasn't just like a sticker slapped on top of it. Uh, and yeah, it was really cool. And I'm excited to see this, the cross tool stuff. But yeah, I got distracted about the cons. I was talking about, we had a big uh, image like of this logo. It was like the mm. first thing you see when you walk into the exhibit hall of New York Comic Con. Yeah. And it, it, everyone was just like, wow, this looks so awesome. Because you see the instant recognizable characters from the show. Plus, you know, they're ace monsters and everything. And everyone loves Kaiba and Yugi, mainly Kaiba. From what yeah. I've learned, uh, it seems like everyone's a lot more inclined to like Kaiba. I mean, I my first structure deck or starter deck was, uh, you know, the blue eyes. I, I structured starter deck Kaiba for sure. So I'm definitely yeah. in that same group of loving Kaiba. For sure, and of course, Ka- Kaiba just 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 a legend. We've we've ha- ha- seen him across most of the yeah, most of the series now, and uh, just absolutely iconic. And, and how he always uh, talk, takes over to the scene, and just a hilarious character in general. I very think it's. Yeah, I think it's his intro into the show is what got everyone from the beginning. It's like yeah. the first time you see Kaiba, he's like, "I have the you know three blue eyes. Do you you have the other, you have the fourth one? I don't yeah. want it. I just want to destroy it." Like yeah, yeah. He just, he's like, "I want to be the only one with the blue eyes white dragon." Like yeah. it's actually just so funny. I'm big. I'm a Kaiba fan. I mean, blue eyes is also really good in cross duel because you know normally in the trading card game, blue eyes while it's an awesome you know engine of destruction, few have faced such a fearsome dragon and you know lived to tell the tale. But in, in this game. It actually can have effects. You can just, when you play, it can destroy a monster on the field and get more attack. And depending on how many you get and upgrade the skill tree, you're able to make it an even more powerful card. And that is probably the most unique part of the game, if we're being completely honest. Like when you face different players, how they might play their blue eyes is going to be different uh, entirely based on what their own strategies and decks are. It's not going to be a meta list that you're going to be facing off against. People are going to be coming up with their own strategies and unique attributes that are going to be better suited towards a four player format that might give them more control or more aggression or more defensive power. It's entirely up to you as a player to make those choices and in, in a way, almost design your own cards. It's really, really cool. Yeah, you nailed it. It's it, that's what I really like because I mean, everyone. The best part about like Yu-Gi-Oh is a lot of part is the deck building because you're mm-hmm. using your mind, you're creating something from scratch. You're oh, well, you're looking at the cards. Does this? Oh, this will work well with this. Let's put them together, and then if it works out, you're like that's part of the gratification. And now, yeah, you mentioned Crossbow goes even a step beyond. We're like, mm, I want my card to do this. Like, oh well, maybe the meta is changing, so I'm going to change the skill tree that I have on it. So mm-hmm. yeah, the flexibility is fantastic. Uh, even when you went to use yeah, the same card. I mean, we kind of saw like there's a lot of Z metal tanks everywhere because I think that Z metal tank has a lot of skills that can either increase his attack and also increase the attack of every monster in your other lane as well. Mm-hmm. So it's just like a card that would normally never see much play like in the trading card game actually being awesome here. But I think we are ready to jump into our pool and it looks like we are going to jump green. And that's a dog dogs team right there. Dog. Yeah, we have uh, Brian, CD Tournament, Blast Cool, and Astro. Uh, and it looks like the match is just about to get started here. We'll see where each of the players puts out their first opening cards. Oh, we see a Utopia in Blast Cool's uh, hand there, as well as the classic uh, XYZ, as you can also see right there as well. Yep. Oh, the XYZ Dragon Cannon. We're talking about it. Definitely. There we are. Awesome card. Yeah, you see, you see the Utopia. This is a fusion monster also in this hand. They still have certain specific summoning requirements, but there isn't an extra deck, so you're just going to have them in your opening hand. And there you see the effect Blue Eyes White Dragon. There we are. It has a skill, so it has that effect board around it. Definitely inter- interesting to see if you are a trading card game player. Indeed, indeed. And it looks like we're getting our first sort of laydowns here in just one second. Let's see what everyone's playing here. All right, looks like a bit of a defensive start for Blast Cool and Astro, but CD and Brian are coming out swinging with all three lanes being aqu- uh, set up here. Everyone's playing for that first initial card, seeing what we get off of it. Yeah, three monsters. I'm always hesitant to summon three monsters at, at right at first. I kind of want to see what lanes the opponents are going to be going in first. Maybe throw something out in the middle just so I can kind of contend for that center card, or maybe hold off on going in the middle knowing I'm just throwing away my monster because three other monsters are probably going after that center card. Exactly, exactly. But what what a huge value it is to get that center card. Mm-hmm. Typically something incredibly powerful, like you mentioned earlier, Mirror Force uh, or a Ring of Destruction, the one we saw last game as well. Uh, we'll have to see who manages to get this. It can doing a huge favor for the, that player. Yeah, one, so I, when I played it one time, uh, the, the one player who got it, I just ignored them the entire game. They, cause they Right after they got that middle card, they set a trap card. And I was like, I'm not going to put any monster in any <laughs> lane doing that. If they come at me, I'll throw up like a defense mode monster or something to try and like hold them off. But yeah. no. Uh, oh, enemy controller. It actually does something similar to what it does in the train card game. Left, right, A, B, enter the code, put that monster in defense mode. Nice. And that will stop it from progressing forward, I believe, to the card as well. Let me see who manages to get it now. Yeah, there's also a 
uh, special like cards that'll like, double your movement speed or make you faster. So a lot mm -hmm. of times you can use that on the first turn to make sure you get that card immediately, but at the cost of using like two of your cards, because since your monster is going to go first, it's going to be attacked by everything else coming at it. So you're basically giving up two cards in exchange for that center card. So losing in terms of advantage, but maybe gaining in terms of uh, the value of the card that you're obtaining. Exactly, exactly. Especially if that card then winds up netting you two or three cards into the future as well, right? So we yeah, it's, it's a real big risk. It is. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Here we go into the second main phase, though. We'll see everyone. Oh, there it is. There's the mirror force that we just <laughs> talked about a moment earlier. So that's going to be a huge a swing card for him as well. Next, we're going to be going to Astro to see what cards they have, sort of getting ready to set, set out here. Stop defense, of course, we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, the normal card, at Y Dragon Head, <laughs> interesting card to see there. <laughs> Uh, and then we're gonna any see... skills assessed on that one yet. All right, and again, we got the Brissinatrix as well as Blue Eyes right there as well. The tuner looks like a pretty yeah, good setup here. Yeah, Brian off to a strong start. Monsters on the board, cards in hand. All right, oh, we got an we ace go. monster coming. That's wow. cool. Wow, what, what an animation. Of course, <laughs> the XYZ Dragon Cannon, the fantastic card of Kaiva's. Uh, yep. Let's see what they end up doing with it here. Yeah, when you capitalize XYZ, it's XYZ. But if you have a capital X and YZ next to it, it's Xyz. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, st but it's still an XYZ dragon, not an Xyz dragon game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't get that mistaken. And now... Oh, man. Man, the dragon cannon is here. That's the coolest part about these ace monsters is they're so much bigger than the other monsters on the field. Yeah, it really sells the fantasy of how powerful these cards are going to be, especially like having to assemble something like those three cards together. Let's see what ends up happening here, though. The first next sorry, the next battle phase is getting off here. They're deciding what they want to do. Poisonous winds. Losing attack on both that entire lane there. Gonna give them more advantage on that side lane as they sort of attack into Astro. Yeah, it definitely looks like CD tournaments focusing on Astro here on the left. And the, the Astro just has a lot coming at him right now, so he's going to have to... It looks like he has some defenses put up, but he's got to worry about both CD tournament and Brian because it looks like they're both focusing on him. Indeed, but thankfully, he thanks to the defense uh, Z metal tank, that's not going to be pushing into him either, so hopefully one free lane of uh, breathing room, so to speak, will be <laughs> enough. We'll have to see here, though, going into the main phase number three. This is the main phase of the third turn. Yeah, that's, that's what it would sound like if you were playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's Kaiba's voice too. Does it? Eric Stewart, just fantastic. Yeah, fantastic work as always. Okay, here we go. Everyone's getting ready to set down the next sets here. I'm curious as to see what we can really expect from each of these players here. Astro is sort of on the back foot, but he is still holding on to the uh, blue eyes. So might be able to make mm -hmm. something really awesome happen here. Yeah, try and like send out his little monsters first to lower the attack of something else and then catch him off guard with that blue eyes white lightning. I could see that. For sure, because if that gets a direct attack in, it's game over, honestly. Nope. That thing is absolutely brutal. Brian drew an Exodia, the forbidden one. Now, I, I know it does something different in Crossville, but oh, first we have an Xyz7 coming out here and it's Utopia number 39. There we go. One of the right original Xyz monsters. And of course, the blue eyes. An awesome engine of destruction. What an animation. I, I love these things so much. All right there. So that's going to be two ace monsters versus each other right there on that side lane between Brian and Blast Cool. We'll have to see who manages to eke out a victory there, especially with their attack tools being so close. A single spell or trap could really swing the balance there. All right, a couple seconds left. Let's see what people are thinking here. See what happened. That's a lot of attack and defense. Yeah, it's a massive boost there. Oh, a huge attack buff, buff across the entire team of Brian. I think this was Brian was setting this up for some time now. Yeah, that, that, that's a pretty terrifying board coming all at Astro. Astro. Is Astro the one with the Mirror Force? I don't think so. I think it was Blast Cool who ended up getting it. But if it is, I do see a face down card in Astro's side, but I think Blast Cool might have been the one that got it. I believe it's Blast Cool as well, but we'll have yeah. to see here. If that is the Mirror Force, that's going to be absolutely devastating. He needs it. He's in trouble. Absolutely. All right, here we go. The battle phase decision being made here. Let's see what ends up happening. Stop defense, of course. Nice. Pretty right. into attack. Much weaker attack to have to deal with overall. Yeah, another strategy is if you feel like you're the one that's losing, try and make sure somebody else might lose harder. <laughs> like, they can lose a little bit quicker. Like, oh, we'll just we'll throw this guy out of this game. Hopefully, they'll go after him instead of me. 
Exactly, exactly. And then that will give you a lot more breathing room as well as people start being a little bit more scrambled. Reinforcements, I mentioned this earlier, but it's a huge team-wide attack buff this time around. It's only going to be affecting the blue eyes here. Is that enough, though, to make the difference? No, it's not. Z-Metal tank going in hard. First time I've seen a Z-Metal tank beat a blue eyes, but, you know, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of cross -Bill. You never know what you're going to get. Oh, XYZ getting a full direct attack here with 3,000, it looks like. Oh, no, it wasn't direct. I just, he's, he's so big, I couldn't even see it. Uh, <laughs> that, that is uh, destroying the defense places for Monster. That's TD Tournament with the Mirror uh, Force. Okay. I'm just going to just destroy that Gear Free the Iron Knight, only taking down one monster in turn. But it was the only monster going after them that they're currently. So TD now has a really solid lead with 15, uh, 5,200 attack, only being contested by Brian's 4,900. And with no monsters even in, in progress to attack CD, CD's gonna have a, a bit of breathing room here to set up a really strong attack. Yeah, and we're only halfway done. I mean, this game, this one could end a little sooner than the last one we watched. The last one went the distance all the way to eight turns, but unless Astro turns something around quick, it could yeah, be over. Be really quick. rough, yeah. Super rush recklessly. This is normally a quick play spell card. <laughs> <laughs> We see CD tournament holding on to Genex controller, enemy controller, plenty of controllers in his hand. Looks like he's going to summon the Genex controller. <laughs> I like how the Genex controller yeah. just kind of flops out there. <laughs> the sound effects and like the character put into these cards is so perfect. I love it a lot. Yeah, it's always thought he's kind of he's just like Genex controller is kind of like junk. He's like the junk you add when you use your Genex effects to like yeah. change things into a Genex monster. All right, here we go. Astro is looking pretty bleak. This could be ending right here. Of course, if one player does hit zero, we do immediately go to see who won. Or so a unicorn. Seems like a lot of people are going to be trying to make it happen right now. Yeah, Astro's just been spending his spell cards trying to help out Blast Cool pretty much. Yeah. So he's just trying to, oh, maybe I'll help Blast Cool. He'll help me out. But... That hasn't been the case yet so far. I guess he's helping out. He's not sending any monsters straight after him. So maybe that's yeah. why Astro is helping. I was like, you know what? I'm going to help you since you're the only one not coming after me right now. Exactly. And with other players being attacked by Blast Cool, they might have to divert some of the resources that were on Astro to go defend themselves. Hopefully. I can see the logic there. We'll <laughs> see if it's enough, though. Is that three white dragon heads? It looks that's like three of them. Yeah. <laughs> got, got the whole menagerie right there. Enemy controller, but from CD once more, putting that into defense position looks like CD absolutely locking down any attacks against them, trying to cement that lead. It's only 300 LP, but with no one else challenging it, it's going to be really hard for him to lose it. It's very right. true. Battle phase, here we go. Let's see what happens. Is Astro going to be around? Nope. Oh, that is it. <laughs> Now, let's see if any life points change here. Brian and CD turn only separated by that 200. The, the, the difference is Astro really helped out CD tournament here. He got that extra damage in. Yeah. Oh, no, because he put the monster in attack mode, and then it got Mirror Force. But still, Mirror Force, really yeah. cool. Awesome. And congratulations to CD tournament. He was the winner of that pool. That yeah. was an exciting one. It was a little, lot quicker than the first one. Yeah, exactly. And... That was the uh, that was for Dog Dogs uh, Nights. So that was a really, really interesting one. Uh, after this, we will be going eventually to Trump's as well. But before then, let's just quickly talk about the overall strategy there. Astro obviously, uh, unfortunately, got taken out pretty quickly by CD and uh, and Brian, who were both really pushing into him pretty hard there. But the 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 real strategy there eventually was really going to have to revolve around trying to eke out a victory between their overextension into Astro. You know what I mean? Uh, having to find a way to try to take the LP lead from uh, CD was going to be the real challenge there. And I think CD played it really expertly, securing the lead and then immediately starting to lock down the defenses to make sure that it was completely cemented that no one could really challenge it. Yeah, when the game ends, so like with only four or five rounds, uh, the, every life point makes a difference. We saw just that 200 incremental difference made a, a world of change. Like So that's why when you see these skills, you're building your skill tree for your monster effects. Sometimes the skills just like... Oh, also gain 200 life points. You can like throw this on there as one of your skills and that, that can make all of the difference. But we will be right back after a quick break for another group. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly.
It's time to do Yu-Gi-Oh! Darkwing Blast has tons of new monsters and the return of Black Wings. They're back for a whirlwind of destruction. 100 new cards for decks of all kinds. Darkwing Blast! Nine cards per pack, each pack sold separately.
Hello and welcome back everyone to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel Saturday. It's an awesome event. It's the King of the Cross event, but right now we're in the night portion. So we have all our knights for our streamers playing right now. We're in our final pool to find out who's going to be move on to the Knights Arena Finals. And this is going to be Trump's pool of players, I believe. So let's go ahead and jump in and see what they are working with. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how Trump's sort of knights sort of put this all together. Uh, when I was watching their footage across the various sort of past weeks we just had, uh, I noticed, of course, that Trump was really doing a great job of teaching his uh, his his his, uh, his knights how to play the game, how to get the most value, of course, of course, and uh, and to see uh, what ends up being their main strategies moving forward. All right, here we go. The match is just underway. Here we go. So Trump wanted to make sure he had the best knights representing him here this weekend. That makes sense. <laughs> Of course, of course. We got Ross.Bing, Chiaki, uh, Fancy Diesel, and Orphanus. Uh, lots of really great players here. Let's end up seeing what their initial strategies are going to be. Can we see Red Dragon Archfiend? Not the Synchro version this time, just the effect monster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got the Z-Metal tank. Uh, Neos, of course, right there as well. A, a bit of a trap-heavy hand, but we'll see how that ends up working out for them. Wall Disruption, if it's as good as it is in uh, dueling, so definitely be good. Yeah, for sure. Stardust Dragon, of course, the ace monster for Ross.Bing, as well as you can see the Y Dragon head as well. Lots of great stuff here. Backup and, Secretary. <laughs> oh, and Chiaki, of course, also rocking Neos. Uh, Rush Recklessly, of course, another classic card, uh, as yeah, well as that. Elemental Hero Sparkman, I think I see there. Yeah, Rush Recklessly, I think, is the card in this game that lets you speed up. So you get to go twice uh, the movement speed, so you'll be able to jump and get that uh, middle card right away. Oh, that'll be really exciting here. Oh, rushing right for the Neo. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's going for. I think he's going to summon the Neos only with 1,500 attack instead of the normal 2,500. Well, we're getting a lot of ace cards coming out right off the right out of the gate here. Looks like a really fast pace for the match here. <laughs> Hero cards everywhere. Everywhere. Three <laughs> seven. Wow, that is crazy. All right. Looks like looks everyone like... has found their strategy here. Let's see what ends up happening. Ross up being playing defense with the Stardust there in the middle. Gil activated. Let's see what his skill's doing. There's that bonus little, that's what I'm talking about, that little life point skill where you just gain 200 life points. It, it can really make all the difference. Yeah, it doesn't sound like very much, but if, it, if, but if you read that as, as thinking like, oh, now I'm just winning the game by default now because everyone <laughs> started at 4,000, that's pretty good. So people will definitely like that. But doing so so early, I can't help but wonder if that's going to put a, a target on their back, even if it's just by a slim amount. It, everyone's <laughs> going to be like, oh, that person's winning. Let's go after them, you know? But there's Rush Recklessly. You can see actually the arrow where they're going to meet on the board here. It, look how much faster it manages to snag the bonus card before anyone else even gets there. And it only yep. trades one-to-one, -one, which is pretty good for them, right? That means they get the card, the powerful center card, as well as trading one-to-one -one on another card. You can't be too mad about that. Yeah, definitely not not bad at all. And it looks like Neos has a skill that after it's destroyed, it's going to be able to go back to the hand. Yep, nice. and it looks like they both are using that same skill. Now, the next time they summon it, it'll have that full 2,500 attack points. Yeah, and that, that seems like a really solid strategy by Chiaki there, but playing the Neos, securing the middle card, it trading, and it getting back to your hand anyways. I, I call that a super win on my in my books. <laughs> Yeah, definitely feels good just from a gaming perspective. You're always like kind of paying attention to like the advantages, like what am I giving up to what am I getting? Exactly, exactly. And paying almost no cost and getting some really <laughs> powerful card in return, I, I, that's, a, that's, that's pretty good. Mirror Force, we can see it right there on the far right. An extremely powerful swing card, if, especially if you're getting focused. Uh, so this is going to be a really solid start for them here. Oh, and actually just looking at it right now, we are seeing that like the both of the lanes going into Chiaki on the side lanes there are both in defense position. So this is looking like a pretty solid position for Chiaki to be in, only having to worry about the attacks coming from the front right now. We'll have to see what ends up happening here. Yeah, and he's definitely holding off on playing a lot of his cards. Oh, he only has two cards in hand, I guess, after this turn. And now we see all the other monsters coming out. Or Phineas. What and a great animation. That, uh, turn, I love the. <laughs> yeah, I love when they move. Yeah, uh, really cool. Only is coming back down again. This time with the full attack power. Chiaki with the twenty three hundred right there, going on the side lane should be able to defeat the two thousand defense unit in just about two phases. And it looks like both the Chiaki's monsters are stunned. Seems like they're frozen in place. Might be one of the enhanced oh, yeah. skills that sort of give it for a trade off. We'll have to see just shortly. Well, here we go. Yeah, they have the speed, the speed buff there, so they're going to be traveling way faster. In one phase, they'll be able to make it. Here we go. The first attacks coming out here. 
And they get to go all the way right away. And that's so powerful because remember, not only in this game do you have to worry about life totals, we have to worry about speed. The traversal of effects of characters it matters so much too because most of the time attacks typically take about two phases to, to, for the attacker to reach you. If someone wasn't prepared to have to deal with it right away, you can really capitalize on it with these enhanced speed attacks. Yeah, and we saw another, the British Tinder also had that same skill where when it's destroyed, it'll go back to your hand. Definitely a really cool skill to have in this game because, yeah, card advantage, it matters a lot because if you're summoning three monsters per turn, but you're only drawing one card per turn, you're going to run out of cards quite fast. Exactly, and getting that, getting the ability to trade one to one with someone's other card, but knowing you're going to get it back means you're going to be able to keep winning that uh, uh, the the war of attrition, so so to speak, with them. Exactly. And now let's see what our players have in store for us next. All the life points the same, except for that 200 here from Fancy Diesel, still making a big difference. Exactly, exactly. And I think we are, we will see it perhaps change here a little bit, especially as the, the guy managed to attack here the 300, unless they have a spell mm -hmm. card that really makes the difference here. Yeah, we do see some monsters coming after Ross Dot being. And I mean, yeah, Fancy Diesel facing down that guy. Uh, he does have a monster in defense mode though, but ooh, Fancy Diesel summoning a blue eyes there to the middle lane. Another Neos right there coming out as well from Orphanus. Three summon right there. Yeah, Ross Shiaki out of cards well. from the hand. And they love seeing Gear Free and Voice Raider. Those are two just Classic Dia yeah. monsters. Yeah, classic iconic ones right there. Skill activate destroying it. Oh, that's gonna be huge for them. Taking I think that was the blue attack. eyes skill. Yeah, yeah, blue yeah. Eye, I know blue eyes has a skill that he can destroy a monster when he's like put into play. It's effectively removing an 1800 attack monster is gonna be huge, especially when it's one of the only ones coming at you right now. Still, the fancy diesel is putting a lot of pressure on the Ross here. You see the Z metal tank there in 1900 follow, being followed up eventually with the blue eyes at 3000. That's going to be a 4,900 attack uh, swing you're going to have to stop eventually. Well, Master Brutality, lowering the defense, but raising the attack. Yeah, that's 3,500 on Orphanus's uh, Neos there. That's going to be really spooky to deal with, especially now that their ace card's actually going in the middle lane. There's not going to have a strong monster cont to contest that. Wall of Disruption being activated here. It's going to make all of Rostov Beans monsters lose attack. Lots of attack Ooh, at that. Wow, zero attack on the first two, effectively neutering them entirely. This is going to be huge here. Yeah, I wonder if it has front. a similar effect as the trading card game, where it's, it makes them lose more attack for how many monsters they control. But in this case, it would be in that lane. And with three monsters in that lane, they all yeah. lost a ton of attack. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, that's brutal. D's almost getting one shotted entirely by Orphanus's Neos there that was left unblocked. 3,500 attack. That is going to be brutal. You yeah, have you to wonder. For L lanes, you're going to get caught off guard like that quickly. Especially because Neos had the increased speed, it was not prepared at all. <laughs> you have to wonder if Chiaki and Rust. Bing are actually going to have to like support Diesel here in some way just to ensure that he doesn't just immediately lose the game to that really powerful attack. Yeah, that came out of nowhere. But see, that's something. If you were able to connect like a huge direct attack, not only are you getting closer to eliminating someone, you're putting yourself in the lead at the same time, which is why I like multi strike Dragon Dragius, because it's so nice it can attack twice. Uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's see what ends up happening here. It's going to be a pretty huge wall to sort of insurmount here. 3,500 attack. So cool. Dragon Arch Fiend, yeah, of course. Jack Atlas would be proud of this animation. Oh, yeah. Let's see what everyone else does here. This is a pretty big emergency situation. The game could be over in the next attack. Yeah, Fancy Diesel on the back foot for sure. Dark Resonator's effect, lowering the attack that are the monsters that are on his side of the field. Nice pumping with their attack a bit more after being reduced to zero the only the turn prior, which is good. But I'm not seeing too many effects going in to rescue Diesel. <laughs> this is my everyone seems to be okay over. with just losing uh, yeah maybe Might nothing not defensive option. there to help him out yeah yeah that's what i was thinking i think orphanus waited to see what everyone was doing in the first couple turns wait till he expended some of those resources we saw some really powerful spells and traps go out and then made sure to target a player who did not have the the bonus card from the middle and then just went all in on a single strike but it looks like you know, archville managed to survive there i think it'll take another the attack from shiaki but that'll probably be it yeah, you used Wall of Disruption, lowered it to 800, but that's still enough to end this duel. 
And even though Orphanus did not do the last blow, I think he's gonna have the most amount of life points just from the, getting that one big direct attack connected. Uh, there you go, and it looks like it is going to be it. We'll have to see here, the final attack between Chiaki and Rasta Bing, is that gonna be enough to create the difference? I don't think so, no it is not. More attack coming in. It is a 1400 point swing. Yeah, it's getting closer, but I think that's gonna be it. Yeah, that is it. Morphineus is going to be our winner here in the last pool before we go on to our ninth arena finals. Yeah, what, what, what a match. match. Yeah, like the, yeah. I, I think it was so clever making sure to wait for everyone sort of to overextend the resources. And immediately as they saw the sort of opening there on the side lane, they were like, all right, Neos, ramp up your attack and just go in, get a nice decisive blow in. And then by that point, no one had any more resources to pressure him enough. And he had that one really cr clutch uh, de uh, attack reduction uh, trap to like completely neuter one lane. And at that point, it was, it was the deal was done. Nothing much could be done there. Yeah, Wall of Disruption, definitely a powerful card in Duel Links. Seems like it's pretty good here in Cross Duel as well. But we'll have to see if that's going to play into our next match, which is the Knights Arena Finals. We're going to see all our winners take on each other. So you think these players are good? Let's see how they do against the other winners. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with our Knights Finals shortly. has tons of new monsters and the return of black wings they're back for a whirlwind of destruction 100 new cards for decks of all kinds dark wing blast nine cards per pack each pack sold separately Hello and welcome back, everyone. We are back. We've had our four knights crowned. Well, we, they were the knights for the thing, but we have our winners for the knights crowned, and now they're going to be playing against each other here in the finals. Do you want to explain kind of how we got here? 
Yeah, of course. So right. Each of the four uh, kings had, had to decide their four knights to sort of represent them. Uh, and then they had to do a match to sort of determine who, which knight would be the one to represent the king. And uh, we now finally have them. So we have Mike San, uh, Rainbow Unicorn, TBC Taekwon, and uh, Orpheus. Uh, so that would be Amaz, who, ch who chose Rainbow, uh, Kibler, who chose Mike San, uh, Trump, who cho chose Orpheus, and Dog Dog, who chose TD Tournament. Um, really, really cool team here uh, across each of these different people. We saw some really diverse strategies, I think in completely different ace monsters for each of them as well. So this is gonna be a really interesting match as we get to the finals here uh, and sort of see which of them really brings uh, the best strategy to the table. Yeah, no, I'm really excited. I, it's gonna be an interesting one. I think I liked, after watching the matches, I, they were all really good, but if I had to pick one blind who I think is gonna win, I'd go for Rainbow, just because maybe of that Ojama King bias. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm looking at Rainbow here to win this part. But well, I'll just see, this is, the, this is what it all comes down to. This is what it's been building up for like the, the past month. You know, the, these uh, viewers have been watching their streamers, you know, play Crossduel week by week and get better at it, learn it, and they were learning as they learned as well. And then they finally got to, you know, qualify through their beating other people in their own uh, exclusive chats. And now mm -hmm. they're here. They had to beat out the other three people, and they're in the finals. Like, one of these players will walk away and be like, I'm the knight. I represented my my king the best, and I can't wait to see which one it's going to be. It's going to be super awesome. And also, just a reminder, guys, we do have a giveaway running today. So as long as you're active in the chat, you have a chance to win some of our amazing prizes. Uh, we've got a custom Yu-Gi-Oh! themed power bank. Uh, and if you stick around to the end of the show, and we also have a few custom skinned AirPods for some of the lucky viewers at home as well. Really, really cool stuff. Yeah, I've been talking about how bad I want those just, just to have just as a piece to, like, you know, I don't have an iPhone even. I just have, I have an Android, but I still want those AirPods just to like have them. In fact, I, I might even just go ahead and get the iPhone. I'd rather win both of them together, you know, as one of these yeah. nights and then just of have course. it be ready to go. But yeah, definitely really cool. Love having that logo, like, you know, part of the product itself and not just like, you know, a sticker slapped on. It's actually fantastic. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah honestly, but, you've read, you have right behind you all the amazing uh, merch right now, which all looks absolutely <laughs> fantastic. So there you go, right? Yeah, all this stuff is official. I've gotten, you know, throughout my travels, uh, throughout the years of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I got some YCS trophies behind me. Can't really... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's grab go. One. Let's you know, go. Check out one of these. This is, this is from Europe. You see that YCS? Damn, we'll, we'll wow. Get a that's, winner. that's fantastic. Let's yeah, this is, from, this is from Europe. From many years ago. But yeah, definitely a lot of cool stuff to win when you play the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game, no matter what you're playing. You win awesome trophies if you're playing the trading card game, or if you're playing the digital stuff, we have awesome digital stuff you can win as well. Like, phones and airpods and yeah. power banks and yeah you stick around to the very end you're going to have that chance to win those awesome airpods i really can't wait to see what it's going to be and i mean this next section this is like kind of the finals of finals like sure mm -hmm. after this we're going to have like the knights raid or, or the king's uh raid where they're going to be able to take on grand marg the rock mm -hmm. monarch and th that's going to be them working together i like that they're going to work together at first before they're going to it's going to be completely competitive. We're going to have a five-game gauntlet with these guys. Yeah. Uh, 4v4, whoever has the most points at the end of it is going to walk away the winner. I really can't wait for that part of the show. That'll be coming up very shortly after we do this Knights sequence, the Knights Arena part, and then mm. when we have the Kings Raid. But the Knights Arena is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I'm these really guys have already showed that. off what yeah they already showed off what they can do in these first games. I mean, I just, just Ajama King, please stick with your same deck. I do yeah. wonder if there's going to be a little bit of strategy because, you know, this is a streamed event. And like, I don't know how seriously these guys are taking it, but there is a chance that the other players are watching like, oh, he's playing Ojama King. Maybe I'm going to switch my deck to try and counter the Ojama King. Yeah. Maybe throw like some stop defense or something in my deck just yeah. to make sure I encounter it. But then maybe he'd go to the next level and be like, well, I'm not going to even play my Ojama King that I played in the <laughs> first one. I already had this other deck set aside. So there's definitely layers of strategy that can be uh, applied here. And, and even if we're not even talking about deck changes, let's talk about strategy. Now that everyone knows that Orphanus has that 3,500 fast attack out of nowhere, I guarantee you no one who has him is going to be looking, no one's going to be leaving a lane open against him now. They're going to be like, I need to have something there at least so I don't get blown out of the water uh, if he does the same type of strategy again. Yeah, definitely going to be something to keep your eye on. Like, you, you know the players, you're like, okay, this is the lane I'm going to watch. Maybe you just always have, like you, you mentioned, they have that fast attack where they can just jump right in. Maybe throw something in defense mode and just leave it there just yeah, in just case. As a, like, just as a, as a contingency, you know? I don't want to get uh, in, instantly lose the duel because uh, I, left a, I let my concentration away in for one turn, you know? Yeah, that's something also I like about cross tool is that you can put your monsters in defense mode and like you can put something out there and it won't go forward. And mm -hmm. also like the defense stats matters. So like in Yu-Gi-Oh, the trade card, you can have a monster with zero attack and two thousand defense. 
and it's mm -hmm. probably not going to be very good because if you put it in attack mode, it's not going to be able to do any damage. And if you put it in defense mode, like you're not, you're still not doing any damage. But in this game, when a monster's in defense mode and it's battling another monster, it kind of works like it's attack points in the trading card game, where that two thousand is going to be applied to the other monster like mm -hmm. that is battling. So it can it, it can absorb more attacks than it would in attack mode, which is where it kind of like differs from the trading card game. Exactly, and being in defense mode and being able to manipulate your positioning as well as create essentially what are walls uh, is really really powerful because of how the game sort of handles positioning and speed. Be the nature of this almost three-dimensional uh, four versus uh, four player free-for-all game means that defense mode matters a lot more than just like being a, a wall that people, someone won't attack into. Now you can like set it out of nowhere while the opponent's rushing into you and that's going to matter. And that, that is something that's really, really cool about the uh, cross duel. Yeah, then when it, if it's not doing anything in defense mode, you don't have you put it in defense mode. Maybe you just watch for that like quick fast attack into that lane. Then maybe there's nothing coming. Your opponent summons all their monsters. You can look at see how you can see how many cards in their hand. They only have like one, maybe zero. Then you just switch that monster attack mode and send it on its way. You know, yeah. Just get onto the board, jump into the battle. That's why you know if you have some monsters with like eighteen hundred attack, eighteen hundred defense, might be a little bit better in the cross duel than it might have been in the trading card game. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a lot, that's, there's so many layers of strategy. It's not just, like, right forward. It's not just what my cards do. It's not just how you draw. In fact, mm -hmm. how you draw is probably the least impactful of Crossville because you're always guaranteed to start with that ace monster. You don't have to worry about, oh, he drew Blue Eyes Eye Dragon and I didn't, so therefore he won. You just all, everyone starts on the even playing field. The decks are kind of small, so you're able to see pretty much everything that you include in your decks. So you don't have to worry about, like, the RNG or worried about not seeing the perfect card. Like, well, that might happen from time to time, not as often as it might happen in other games mm -hmm. exactly and i think that's what's really really unique about this game across the board is going to be just like you're going to be tested on things you haven't been tested on before in a in a card game and it's going to be allow you to skill express yourself in in ways that just don't seem like you would normally have to ever deal with that and i think that's asking different questions to, to card game players is something that's really fascinating especially after what has been a, a really solid genre there all right, so I think we are at that point where we can finally bring in our kings. The moment you guys have all been waiting for, let's bring them in and meet our kings here for this weekend. Hello, everyone. Hello, kings. Thank you for joining us here for the Cross Duel event this Saturday. It's nice to see all of you. Are you all excited to see your knights take on each other here at the fi Knights Finals? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's right. Go. Do, do you do you, are y'all did y'all watch the night's finals leading up? Are y'all impressed with your champion that's gonna be competing? Do you think one of your champions or one of your knights is gonna have a better odds of winning? Uh Maz, do you what do, what do you think? I hope I think you might be muted. Oh, damn it. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm not muted anymore, right? All right. There you go. Um, no, yeah, right, yeah right, right, I was right. saying that uh, Rainbow is the representative for Team of Mars, right? And um, yeah. he has Ojama King, and Ojama King has yeah. the best animation in the game, so he got this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we were saying that earlier. We think that that's a, that's a clear uh, a clear indicator to how strong the card is, so uh, we're excited to see how that sort of goes. Uh, Trump, what did you think about your, your uh, knight, or Orphanus? He had a really, really strong showing in that match right there. Yeah, I gotta say, um, watching the other matches made me feel a lot better about my knight because my knight isn't playing trash like Ojama King. <gasps> oh, dare you! <laughs> I love Ojama King, but that we'll he's see very how... cute. He's a great guy to bring when you're playing for fun, mm -hmm. but when you're playing to win, you don't bring Ojama King. <laughs> Sounds like some good advice to follow. All right, uh, how about you, Kibler? How do you feel about your knight? Do you think he's going to have what it takes to win this weekend? I mean, Mike San did incredibly well in all of the games that we played during the Call to Arms stream, and you know, really, I feel like I learned a lot from him. So, uh, just the, the, the few games we had a chance to play together, so uh, <laughs> definitely looking forward to seeing how he does in the finals. Awesome, awesome, and of course, Dog Dog, your your uh, knight is going to be CD tournament. How are you feeling so far? Uh, I net decked everything from him for today, and he has he played like probably like four different decks in the tournament that I had to for people to qualify for this. So he is like he is such a good player, and I'm I'm really confident he's gonna win. He's awesome. 
All right. That's awesome to hear from you guys. It sounds like you guys have a lot of faith in your Knights. It looks like your Knights also helped out to the Kings for this weekend as well, which is awesome to hear. You know, the more minds you have working on something, the better it can always work out. But thanks for joining us. Can't wait to see you guys a little bit later when we're going to have the Kings raid and eventually the King Cross tournament. You guys are going to take each other on. So we'll see you guys in a little while after the Knight Arena. Thank you. See you guys. All uh, right. I, I was really shocked to see here that the Knights actually really helped the, the Kings as well. This is actually going to be really interesting then. It seems like they all had like their favorites who actually won out of their groups. It seems like all of them kind of knew that these were going to be the ones that would actually move forward. I'm really excited now. Yeah, it's really cool to see. I mean, that's the thing about gaming, right? It's about working together. Like, you're never going to know everything on your own. The, the more you play with others, the more you can learn. But let's go ahead and jump right into it. It seems like our players are ready. This is it. This is the Knight arena finals let's go ahead and jump right in all right oh, not not so, quite started just yet looks like they're still getting it ready to go yeah just getting into the load times no <laughs> worries guys we'll be there just shortly so again this is going to be uh, amaz who is being represented by rainbow we have kibler who has chosen mike san uh, orphanist is going to be representing trump and lastly dog dog it has a cd tournament as his night this is going to be a really really great match especially now that we now know that these were some of the players who are teaching the kings even this is going to be a really high quality match between each of the different styles of play and here we go we are getting into the finals what an amazing backdrop let's go Oh, we even see a playmat here for CD Tournament, the Joey playmat. That's really cool. You got that from the Joey event that went on near the beginning release of the game. Yeah, it looks like now, uh, I wonder, showcasing it a bit that uh, they've been playing this game for quite a while. They're ready for them. Yeah, I wonder how similar this will look to our Kings Cross since they, you know, they work closely with their Kings. They were mm -hmm. going to be playing similar strategies. And Orphan is still it has rocking that Neo. Might be going for that same similar type of strategy. CD Tournament is on the XYZ Dragon Cannon. Has Swords Revealing Light, might be really might be really good against Orphanus there as well, especially on the right-hand side. Oh, and next we have Rainbow, still rocking the Ojama King, not going to step off of that despite Trump's comments earlier. I'm really, <laughs> really excited for this to come out next. And Lice, yeah, Lice, Lice, Mike. Famous, la famous last words, right? Maybe, well, now I have to wait to see if one of the other, I hope <laughs> one of the other kings brought Ojama King to you know, show Trump how strong he is. But yeah, Neo's here on the last player's hand as well. It looks like our first main phase is underway. All right, looks like we have a start here. We got Neos right off the bat again. This is going to be the 1500 variant, I presume. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Gonna be heading it's a little stronger. Yeah. Oh, oh, one second. We're going to have a quick, small uh, break here as we get fixed here, figuring out all the uh, technical issues with that. Um, but as we get into the match, the 1500 attack Neos, it seems like the strategy seems to be to like use your Neos to run out early, grab the card, and even if it dies, you're not super upset about it because it's going to go back to your hand basically right away and able to... Uh, still collect the card value as well as not have to lose a card to secure it. Yeah, I'm not as familiar with uh, the skills that Neos has in this game in particular, but it does mm -hmm. seem like if you you can just summon him without a tribute, because normally is a level 7 monster, which mm -hmm. requires two tributes. Right. Um, but it seems like you're able to summon him with only 1,500 attack for that first go round, and then it becomes the level 7 with 2,500 attack, maybe with added skills after it gets destroyed, which is interesting. So you kind of like, yeah, you, there's no reason not to throw it out there as a feeler if it's only going to get boosted uh, later on once you once it gets destroyed. Yeah, you're not exactly upset to have to, to quote unquote sacrifice the card to go to the middle if you know it's going to come back just even stronger. It can be often in that case is probably an upside in that in that respect. Um, so we'll have to see what happens there. What's interesting though, I noticed that some person actually I can't remember what which knight did it, but they actually put uh, one of your cards in the center lane into defense mode, uh, perhaps not wanting wanting to overextend into the uh, the gigantic battle royale that's going to be happening between the cards <laughs> for the for the center card, uh, and perhaps taking more of a defensive, more uh, reserved approach to the match with with such high quality opponents, you're going to have to be a bit more careful. You know, these these dynamic and really aggressive plays are really strong still, but when you know that everyone in the lobby is capable of doing them, you have to be a little little wary that you you don't want to overextend yourself too much. Yeah, I mean, we saw that in the third pull, I believe. We just were that, or maybe in the fourth pull, just where that one direct attack ended the game. Basically, the game didn't right end, but yeah. the the life point swing from that one quick attack ended the game. It was, decisive. Game. It was, it was decisive. Yeah, it was decisive. Yeah, it was. Exactly. It was just over instantly. So definitely a lot of strategy involved. And yeah, playing. To, there's a lot more to playing defensively. You don't have to throw everything out. You, you, it's not a race to see who can get to zero first. It's not like the trading card game. You're you're just racing to get the other person to zero. Yeah. There's a lot of other aspects you have to manage in the game as it's going on. 
exactly it feels more so like a almost like a strategy rpg than in, in many ways where you have to be a little bit more measured you'd be a lot more careful because when everyone around you is a, is a human player as well and they're all capable of making really powerful strategies just based around you you, you have to understand that like and respect them in, in, a, in, a, in a certain way to to know that they could go for that type of thing oh it looks like we are getting back into the match right now and we can yeah, see not too much has happened it looks like mike's son got that middle card since he is the only one there possibly yeah We'll see what happens here. We got defensive in on the front lines of a rainbow and CD tournament on the mid lane. So we're gonna have Mike Stein flying into that right now. We'll see what ends up happening here. Orphan's 1500 attack unit is heading up the middle as well. Oh, here we go, XYZ. I love I love that it's like, it's the actual animations, like they're the life size, like a Z metal tank looks that same size as the base of yeah. the XYZ dragon tan. And it's so cool. Yeah, it works so well for that. We're gonna see him go. He's actually going heading towards Rainbow here. It looks like everyone is having some pretty solid defensive plays here. You see, Rainbow has three defense position monsters. You see, Orphanist has one defensive position monster, and then we have CD on one as well. It seems like people were being a little bit more reserved this time around. We're gonna way see different. Happening. Yeah, and then they know that the other guys know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When you start facing higher quality players, you are gonna play a bit differently. You gotta respect their opponent a little bit more. Let's see what happens here. See some fast movements here coming from CD Tournament and Orphanist, but they're both focusing Rainbow. I wonder if they watched that first game and were like, okay, Rainbow knows what he's doing. We have to go after him before that Ojama King ever touches down. Yeah, because they know if they, don't, if they don't stop him soon, Rainbow will just lock the game up entirely with, with the Ojama King. So let's see what happens here. Got two fast attacks going in on him and with a third one coming from Mike's down as well. But Rainbow is well prepared. Look at those defense totals. All right, here we go. Does lose there, but not by much. Manages to hold out on the right lane though against Mike Son. And it looks like Neos won't be able to pierce that middle one either. That is a thousand going in on against Rainbow though. CD's gonna be putting themselves ahead with that. And that CD taking an early lead. All right, here we go. There's a lot, lot of action on Rainbow's side of the board. We see three monsters on his field in defense mode. Three monsters going after him, or no, two monsters going after him. I think this other one is his going forward. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 it's Neos going at Adam. Yeah, so it's everyone targeting Rainbow. Rainbow on the defensive end here. CD tournament with an early lead. Seems pretty solid there. His right lane is open, though, against Orphanist, and you know how dangerous that can be. So we'll have to be really careful there. Yeah, now that CD tournament does have that lead, he will be a target, and Orphanist already doing that with the Gaga Ga Magician there in the left lane. Mike's hand holding on to a pretty powerful hand here. Yeah, that's the thing with like the mirror forge is when you see it in the middle and you go to grab it, um, you don't want to just set it right away because everyone's be like, oh, we got a trap. It's probably mirror force. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah. is probably either mirror force or ring of destruction. Exactly, exactly. And like that's 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 a danger, right? Is that no one wants to attack into him now, which can be valuable on its own. Just by that early turn one play, he has essentially mm -hmm. secured a lot of the aggression away from him, right? Because no one wants to yeah. risk fighting that mirror force, and that alone, the threat of mirror force is often just as strong as actually casting the spell itself. Uh, so let's exactly. see what ends up happening here. All the skills are being activated here. Everyone gaining a little bit of attack, gaining a little bit of life points. Ooh, Orphan's getting quite a bit there, 4,600. Oh, Gaga, Gaga Clerk looks like it has an ability to special summon Gaga, Gaga Magician. So that's pretty cool. That's a lot of attack coming in on Rainbow there on the right lane. That is three units heading to, sorry, two units heading towards it right now. And the first one, the Raider, will actually be able to beat the 2,000 attack, which is pretty substantial. Rivo is developing a, a countermeasure against XYZ. There we go, manages to take it out. Rainbow holding out really well here, despite the 3v, effective 3v1 coming at him. Yep, that Neo's going back to the hand. Yeah, Rainbow, you know, keeping, keeping tabs on everything. Here we go. Managed to pierce through and deal some damage to start getting on CD tournament here. Hopefully trying to make that uh, make it, uh, make that lead not quite as large. We'll have to see though. This is looking pretty tight still. Only third turn though. Still anything can happen yeah. here. Yeah, I, want, I think this one might go the distance. Might go all the way to eight turns and everyone might survive and it'll just be whoever has the most life points there at the end. But we'll have to see. Because, I mean, Rainbow is the one with the lowest life points, but I think he probably, he still has some cards in hand. You can see he still has his ace monster in hand. The only one who's used their ace monster already is CD Tournament. You can kind of see that by the card in their hand with the star on it. Mm -hmm. 
and especially with rainbows being such a powerful defensive deck as well that like even though rainbow is lower right now it's going to be much harder to take that 2900 away mm. from him especially once he gets rolling yeah, I, I, I see his strategy kind of. So, like, he just wants to get an early life point lead and then summon the Jama King. But now, since he has the deficit, I wonder how he's going to adjust and get those life points back to where he can sit on that Ojama King. Exactly. And, with, and perhaps that was the strategy by the other players, recognizing that he, he was such a powerful defensive deck. Hey, we need to put him out of his comfort zone. We need to make sure he needs to attack us. Because if we, if, if we just let him relax, we're not going to be able to fight him, you know? There's the Ojama there King, is. of course, the legend himself. What an Can't all help. <laughs> I love it. I love Ojama King. The fact that Ojama King actually made his debut in Speed Duel. So Speed Duel is kind of similar to Cross Duel. You have three monster zones and three spell and trap card zones, but it's a, it's a faster way to play the trading card game. And you have mm -hmm. like skills and everything, only 4,000 life points. But Ojama King came out in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Speed Duel uh, GX Duel Academy box. Oh, I so see, that I was see. definitely yeah. So it's definitely really cool. You can use that in Speed Duel. It has a cool secret rare variant, but that's neither here nor there for Cross Duel. <laughs> But if you're interested in cross duel and want to find a way to transition into the physical training card game, Speed Duel is a great way to do that, and you should check it out at your local OTS. Oh, here we go. That was the that was the mask again coming in, and pumping attack to 1700. One thing I actually want to call out here: Mike's not actually tributed their monster, expecting the Ojama King to come down, and then now it doesn't have to put the Raider into the Ojama King because the Oja the Raider was only at 100 attack, which would have been a 2900 deficit, <laughs> uh, which would have been that would have been bad. Uh, so really smart play there by Mike's son, using it to tribute summon the Blue Eyes here. So that'll be a huge win for them there. Still though, Neo coming in pretty pretty fast on that right lane from Orphanus. We saw how powerful that, that Neo can be. Yeah, Neo's is fantastic. Now Rainbow, let's see, he's gonna gain some defense back for the Jama King. He's still on Jama King, got some life points back, but Orphanus still in such a dominating position. Yeah, and even has locked down that front front uh, the front lane too with the 2400 defense monster. That's gonna be mm -hmm. pretty insurmountable with only three turns left. We'll have to see yeah, what he happens knows here. Yeah, because I mean, the most obvious move would be for Rainbow to go after Orphanus because not only are you increasing your life points, you're getting the guy in first life points down. So having that defense in the middle, na middle lane, definitely smart moves here from Orphanus. Yeah, and it seems like Mike San is in a bit of a rough space here, wanting to challenge Rainbow, perhaps try to end the game earlier, but then leaving himself open to Orphanus's Neos on the left. Like, that's going to be pretty bad, especially if any more buffs come out. You can see him lay down two traps, it looks like, too. See what happens here all the summons are coming out right now this is the fifth main phase so time is starting to wind down we're past the halfway point yeah, these plays are going to start need to come out now if you have a, if you have a strategy go for it yeah we see mike's son with a direct line open to orphanus though but it looks like okay so he got his monsters blue eyes got block attacked so blue eyes is going to defense mode Oh, and that's going to be pretty, really brutal, too, because that means that's an additional uh, 500 that uh, Jama King will get in the meantime, which means that it will actually be able to challenge the Blue Eyes in the, in the, quickly soon in the future as well. Really great play there by Rainbow as well. Definitely. All right, CD Tournament playing, protecting his field, making sure he destroys the monsters that were heading towards him. Oh, there's Looks Wall like, again. Yeah, Wall Disruption. Going to lower that Neos attack just a little bit. Oh, and the Mirror Force is going to be triggered. So, unfortunately, triggering both of his trap cards, it looks like, on one monster. But it looks like Orphanus has a trap that might protect Neos from Mirror Force. And it does. Yeah, there you go. We kind of expect that, too. Orphanus has always been going all in on his Neos. So, this makes a lot of sense. He had his defensive spells ready for it. More trades going out. Orphanus is holding on to that lead, as well as keeping the aggression on all the lanes, except for the middle one where he knows Rainbow isn't really someone to be aggressive on. This is really great play here by Orphanus. Yeah, this is light years different from the pool matches. Like this is the winner's match against, you know, all the Knights that have already won, definitely knowing what they're doing. We only have two more rounds and this is this is it. This, there will be a champion after this round for our Knights and they will be representing their streamer, their King. Yeah, let's see what happens here. I think at this point, everyone should be well aware that Orphanus is the one that we ought to be watching out for. But it might be too late with only two turns left to really make a huge attack into him. We'll have to see. Oh, man, just absolutely locking down the, the late game now with two 2,000 defense units. You're going to need to do something incredible here to really pierce through this. 
Yeah, the defense is amazing. You see, once you take that lead, it's just all on the defenses from that point on. If you can't take any more damage and you don't think anyone else is going to be able to do damage to the other players, you're just in such a lead, especially with two rounds left to play. Yeah, look at that. That's 3, a lot of <laughs> 3,000 that debris. Defense? That's oh, Debris okay. Dragon, right? I love yeah. Debris Dragon. I've never seen like the full card like out like that, but a lot of my friends, <laughs> my favorite card to set back in 2011 was Debris Dragon. During this, yeah. is this format where like you have Reborn Tengu, it's a very powerful like plant deck, but my favorite play by far was just set Debris Dragon 2,000 defense. It's not the most like the play you're supposed to do with the card, but yeah. I loved it. So to see Debris Dragon defense, fantastic. But we have a Absolutely lot going great. on here, a lot coming here at our leader. You know, with the turns winding down, they know they have to reduce his life points or it's all over. So everyone's going to be focusing on Orphanius. Indeed, indeed. And you see, Mike's time manages to get out their own Neos with the reduced attack to go in on the left there. But Orphanius does get the Neos back of themselves as well. But it's going to be really hard to pierce that 2,000 defense in only two turns. And, oh man, it, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to do this here. He controlled this game well. Yeah, getting a lot of the cards back to his hand here, too. Plenty of resources on the table. You can see attacks going in, but they are not anywhere near the 2,000 that they need to hit. It's towards Revealing Light, we saw that earlier. Rainbow does have, it looks like a monster that would be going towards CD Tournament, or is it, no, CD Tournament's monster going towards Rainbow. That would, either way, if one of these connects, it would affect the game a little bit, even though Phineas, they just need to do enough damage, like 3,000 damage to other players and just ignore our Phineas at this point, because I don't yeah. think they're going to make it through his defenses <laughs> in two turns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, to be fair, we are on the final two turns, which means everyone does get the double draw, so to help replenish their stores. Like, this this could be something that comes up here. Hopefully, maybe that's enough between the additional cards to really make a difference, because right now it's looking pretty bleak to try to stop Orphanus's massive <laughs> defense line here of a uh, combined total of 7,000 defense across his lanes. Yeah, um, I love the strategy. I love to get life point lead early, wall up the rest of the time. It's a lot, it's just that control aspect. It's a lot, a lot of players gravitate towards control strategies in gaming, like because it feels good when you can have a lead and keep it. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, just it's a lot, it's a lot easier to manage. Hmm. Orphanus actually swaps out uh, for Neos at full power there, probably trying to make a oh. mad dash towards Rainbow to deal a killing blow here. That was actually really smart by actually putting down the three thousand uh, deb uh, debris dragon. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it de incentivized Rainbow to play anything on the front lane, right? And then now mm -hmm. that Rainbow hasn't played anything, Neos, Neos is like, all right, time for me to jump in and use my enhanced <laughs> speed to fly down the middle lane. That That is that is really brutal. That is going to be onion, really hard. Man. Just yeah. got to keep peeling back the layers. There's strategy to it. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of, I mean, lots of the thing about gaming, it's like, you, you, it's about making your opponent perceive the situation the way you want them to perceive it. You want to mm -hmm. put the game, the game state in a way that they can be like, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to do the obvious thing. Well, now that I know you're going to do the obvious thing, I can think the next step ahead of that. Exactly, exactly. And CD actually used a, I think it was Sword and Shield there on the defense. So that defense is now at zero, meaning that uh, the uh, W Fighter Jet will actually be able to get in. Yeah, with go. an X head cannon right behind that as well. He's going to be putting on the onslaught in that right lane towards Orphanius. Oh, giant trade oh. though, pushing <laughs> it back to, to the hand. That's that's, that's that's not what it does in the TCG. I, <laughs> in the TCG, it bounces spells and traps. In the in this game, I guess it bounces monsters, but that is incredible. Two monsters to the hand that have already been played in that lane. Wow, yeah. that's going to be especially brutal because some of them were already on route, which meant they already wasted some turns traveling. Like that is that is a huge tempo play. Huge, 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 huge. If you play cross duel, you might want to be, like, be excited for a uh, giant trunade. I'm assuming that might be like one of the center cards. Yeah. All right, here we go. Neos Second looks like he's trying to sprint. Phase. Neos yeah. wants to sprint forward. Or Phineas in complete control here. Oh, that was so clever by CD. CD actually used Swords Revealing Light on their own unit to, to make it stay in the middle, so it would catch <laughs> the Neos so that it wouldn't one-shot Rainbow. That, like, see, this is this is the politics and interplay that's so interesting about a four-player free-for-all game, and because of that, like, Rainbow is going to be alive for a little bit longer, which means that there's more options now to perhaps maybe take out Orphanus in this last turn. It's looking bleak, but that is the type of play that you need to see in a four-player match. Yeah, help me help you. You know, we work, we can work together and do this. Uh, the, uh, a common enemy, you know, we're friends because of a common enemy. So exactly. definitely exciting to see this here in Crossville. Yeah, the aspects and the layers of the strategy, there's just a lot to it. Well, that's what I mean. I, re I really like the 2v2. The 2v2 is a lot of fun, too. So if you're watching Crossville and want to have fun with your friends, you want to make sure to check that out as well. For sure. All right, here we go. 
Oh, it's an absolutely brutal lineup there, right, Orphanist, for this last turn here with two spell traps down. It is, that is an absolute lock, though. We'll, we'll have to see what happens here, though. Last summons coming out here, guys. Oh, it looks like CD tournament maximum summoned. So maximum summon is from Rush Duel, where you play like three of three cards and they kind of piece together to make one monster. So sort of like the XYZ Dragon Cannon, but you just have the monsters on the field and then they're just one monster combined. And that is the maximum summon from Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Duel, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. Nice. Yeah, it's, cool. really it's cool weird when you see that. Look at that too. Yeah, yeah. This is the only game where you like bridges cross duel cards with the TCG cards as well. <laughs> All right, let's see here. The final battle phase, the final attack but boost going up here as well. We have a lot of spells and traps on the field, though, so this could shift a lot, but it's hard to see where it will end up shaking out here, especially with no current attacks really going really hard on Orphanus. He has that one Neos there, but that's still so much wall. Oh, nice attack defense swap there. Mm hmm. Yeah, Mike's on trying to do everything he can, sending his monsters in that left lane towards Orphanus, but him. Don't know if it's going to be enough. It might be that 2,500. If, you know, our Phineas doesn't have any good spell or traps set there for the battle phase. Oh, there's an enemy controller, though, to put that Neos into defense mode. It looked like that came from... Turn of CD Tournament, I think, actually. Yeah. Interesting choice. Interesting, interesting. Let's see what happens here. So it looks like CD Tournament's maximum monster protecting him, staying there. Nice, those two trade there as well. LP damage across each player there. Whoa, maximum summon monster. Yeah, it went after everybody. Yeah, doing, but it's not enough, unfortunately. Orphanus has did an amazing game right there, managing to secure a relatively early lead and then just put it behind it a bunch of walls of 2000 defense and because of that uh everyone had to overextend and as soon as they started overextending immediately went for the giant true nade bounced their board back to their hand a really solid uh, bait and punish right there really really great work yeah i think trump's faith in faith in his uh knight was well placed uh he, he unfortunately the jama king didn't really hold it down he came out for a little bit but was yeah. destroyed and sent to the graveyard but we will be right back. That is going to do it for the night portion. We'll be back for the King's Raid, and we're going to have our awesome kings here and see if they can take down Grand Marg, the Rock Monarch. We'll be back shortly. Don't go anywhere. strategy. Dual fun. Cross dual. 
Plus Duel for everyone. Plus Duel for the world. Friend or foe, four duelists cross wits. A new era of dueling. Four player card battles. Cross Duel. Duelist face off on a crisscrossed battlefield. Summon monsters and set spell and trap cards to defeat your opponents. Simple, beginner friendly rules for any duelist. Will you work together or claw your own way to victory? Optimize your strategy in real time. Class with fellow duelists in a battle like never before. Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel. My Millennium Necklace has seen the future of dueling with ancient Tomb Keeper cards to block your opponent's graveyard while testing your own powers of prediction. New hieroglyphic versions of your favorite cards and six different designs of sleeves to keep your cards safe. Your Yu-Gi-Oh! future awaits you in Magnificent Mavens. 20 cards and 70 sleeves per box. Each box sold separately. Hello and welcome back everyone to our Yu-Gi-Oh! King of the Cross tournament. That's right, Cross Duel. It's our newest mobile game. It's only available on mobile, but you can take it out. You can play along while we're watching this tournament going on right here this weekend. We've had an awesome journey so far where we watched our King's Knights 
duke it out until we crowned one night champion. Tell me about what we saw, Roy. Of course. So we had the four winners from their respective uh, little blocks earlier. We had Team Amaz, which was represented by uh, Rainbow. Team Kibler, which was represented by Mike Son. Uh, Orpheus uh, was uh, being represented by Trump. Uh, sorry, sorry. Trump uh, chose Orpheus to represent him. And of course, uh, uh, CD Tournaments was, rep was representing uh, Dog Dog. And honestly, the match was easily the highest quality match we had seen so far. It was really, really great stuff across the board from each of the different players. But overall, Orpheus, which was uh, Team Trump, did to pick up the win with a really really powerful showing yeah it was really awesome showing the power of neos really i mean we're seeing that dual skill time and time again now where he's able to add back to the hand and get stronger and like i kind of noticed the strategy like the winning strategy is to get that damage out early get an mm -hmm. early lead and then establish a board control where you're fighting off everyone coming out to trying to like even things out so you know maybe rely on saving your trap cards for the very end don't use them too early You'll always hold them off maybe till past round four when you know mm -hmm. things are going to get hectic as maybe other people start to use all their cards you can keep that card advantage and put them in a bad shape but we definitely saw yeah really skillful play there in that night's champion in the finals match and uh trump has to be proud of his champion you know i after trying to hear trump's opinions on ojama king you know, i was kind of like oh, i kind of hope his champion loses yeah. <laughs> but no no it's, it's it's okay it's just a personal fan favorite of mine and i mean the ojama king came out and he went and went in that last uh game but definitely really really fun to see our knight be crowned the champion there yeah, I think we really saw the difference between their different styles there, too, because that was uh, Rainbow, who had, who's playing the Ajama King, I believe. And as soon as we saw Orpheus secure the lead and then wall up with a variety of different defensive attacks and sort of bait opponents in really well, we can sort of see the difference there in, in Ojama King. Ojama King has the raw defensive power, but I think the flexibility of Orpheus's and the ability of the Neos to come back to hand really sort of set it apart and allowed, uh, allowed Orpheus to take openings that wouldn't be as easily uh, securable without such a flexible type of strategy. Yeah, I think it also helped out maybe if the players were listening to our commentary or we kept talking about Rainbow and like how well he did. So everyone yeah, just kind of uh, uh. had a target on Rainbow from the beginning. They were like, nope, I, you know, I may lose this game, but I'm not losing to Ojama King. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with losing, but not yeah. to you. And exactly. I kind of felt like that was kind of the vibes of the beginning. And like we just saw like the cross dual commercial. Like you can see like, how fun this game, even though it is a mobile game, if you're just in a group of friends, you can all like jump in and play together. You can like team up. You could be in different rooms and be like talking strategy while you're playing against your other team. Two friends in another room yeah. uh, you could all be four play free for all and then like when you attack one of your friends you know you get that look like you know what i do to you i thought we were cooler than that bro yeah, like yeah, i thought yeah. we were i thought we i thought we were bros and now you know you're coming after me like this like what what's the deal with that that's like my favorite part about cross school is the play with friends even though you can't play alone on like rank up online as well yeah, not to mention the 2v2 mode you alluded to earlier. Uh, also, another really great way to sort of have more of that team element, too. So you don't have to go for the free-for-all. You can go for that instead. But, of course, on top of all that, there's also the raids, where it's a full, full four-player co-op mode, which will allow everyone to sort of fight a PvE monster all together and have to combine their strength to really come out ahead. Yeah, and that's what we're about to see here is the King's Raid. And it's not just, you know, a raid. It's to have all our Kings working together before they're going to be facing off in a five-game gauntlet, uh, you know, to take down Grand Mark, the Rock Monarch. It's, the PvE is really interesting because you have, like, that one Yu-Gi-Oh! monster in the middle that's trying to fight all four of you at the same time. There's literally... So you know how, like, uh, the regular game, there's that card in the middle you can obtain? Yeah. Well, there's going to be, like, bonuses in, like, the lanes where you can grab them and it'll maybe, like, double damage the raid boss. So you can do double damage when you attack, like, the Grand Mark. And stuff. So there's a little bit of strategy of where you play your cards and how you're going to take down that raid boss. So let's see what they uh, have prepared for going into this once they're ready for that. It's going to be interesting. I, I'm a big fan of the the raid part because we, we you talked about it. The animations are the coolest part of these cards. Like you're able to play this powerful cards you've used, like the Monarch monsters, Rise of the Storm Monarch, Grand Monarch, and now you get to face against them. Yeah. Really cool. Especially really sells how big they are too. I, I saw I saw footage of, of the uh, Rock Monarch and he's just he's just lumbering over the entire board. It looks really really awesome. I'm really really excited for it um and i'm really excited to see how four really seasoned players uh and, and who in general strategy games all sort of come together and and try to and try to tackle this and see how well they do against it uh and that, we'll sort of see where that sort of lines up because i know there's actually a lot of elements involved with it as well such as the weak points that are facing certain players so then you might want to capitalize mm -hmm. hey guys i have the weak point everyone focus your resources to me and so on and so forth like that which will be really really awesome to sort of see between the four of them
yeah, there's even like cards in Cross Duel that only do something in the raid battles. So like you can, you don't want to put them in your deck when you're going to go play online because they have like bonus effects against like a raid boss. So we'll see if they include some of those cards in their deck as well to help against Grand Marg. Because he said he was you know pretty huge being out there. It looks really awesome. Yeah. The first one I think was Rise of the Storm Monarch, and I'm thinking like, oh wow. Like, this is really cool, because Rise is just one of those iconic ones. Grand Marg, notoriously not the best trading card game, because the Monarchs are all, like, tribute summon monsters of that course. do something when they're summoned. And Grand Marg, he just destroys a face-down card in the trading card game, while the other ones do much more and have much more reach beyond that. But definitely still a formidable foe that they're going to have to face here in the King's Raid. For sure, especially because in Cross Duel, the strength of these cards from their original forms is vastly different, right? So who knows? Maybe this time is Grand Mark's time to shine, you know? So we'll, we'll have to see uh, how it all sort of shakes out here as we get into the next sort of matches. Um, and also, we want to really ask them how they felt about each of their night's performances, because let's be honest, uh, before match even began, Trump was already calling out that, hey, Ojama King is not the way to go here. Like, <laughs> I know Orphanus has got what it takes, and he called that shot. Orphanus is the one who took it, took it, took it home. So we'll have to sort of chat them up and see how they all felt about the overall uh, games they, their nights played. So when we were talking to them before, they were, you know, talking, they were all, you know, excited about their night saying, yeah, I worked with them and everything. So do you think since Trump worked with the winner Orpheus, do you think he has an edge here against the other Kings when they're going to be playing against each other? Or do you think maybe they'll be okay either way? Cause they're such decorated veterans of, you know, gaming. I, I think they're, they'd obviously be really strong on their own, but there's always that level of specialization, right? They might be the, the best across all strategy games as a whole, but when you have like someone as powerful as or Orpheus has proved themselves to be at this point, you, you'd be foolish not to take some advice from them and take some pointers in terms of like, hey, what, what should you be doing? What are some cards you should include? What are some skills that are valuable? Because Orpheus didn't just win both of their games on like... Uh, on like a, by thin margins, like Orpheus <laughs> was pretty decisive in both matches. And so I think when it comes to that, that, that speaks to a level of, of skill and power that you should definitely respect, especially in a game where the, the Knights finals was a bunch of players who were clearly knowing what they were doing, but still Orpheus prevailed with a pretty solid lead. So I think at that point, yeah, you gotta have to respect it a little bit at least. Oh yeah, certainly. And I imagine that'll be the same for Trump, but I mean, facing that, I know if I was getting you know, the table and I had to face down a Moz, Brian Kibler and dog, <laughs> like, Oh man, those are some tough opponents. they yeah. definitely know what they're doing. Like they're strategy experts. They're able to like assess the game. That's kind of like when, you know, like a, a good player, a good gamer, like, their biggest thing is that they're open to being able to see what other people, what their ideas are, open to what they think is good. Like, oh, you play this game every day? Tell me what what works for you, what doesn't. What are the things that, like, are, annoy you? How can we fill the problems? Like, what are the weaknesses of this deck? What can I add to this deck to, you know, make those weaknesses not as bad? Uh, and that's, like, one of the aspects of these, like, top-level gamers that I think all of them are going to bring to this uh, this game to where they're able to, even though it's not something maybe they, they know too well or completely in deathly, they're going to be able to find a way to have the best strategy available to them, at least the most comfortable strategy, because usually the best one is the one you're the most comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I think that's that sort of speaks to something that a lot of people have misconception on in card games. Card games are, in for the most part anyways, were 1v1 games, right? But in reality, they're so collaborative across deck lists, construction, piloting, matchup spreads, that they really are almost, there's a reason why so many teams exist for <laughs> card games, right? Uh, and I think uh, I think that's what we're gonna see here. I mean, perhaps like each of these teams that each of these uh, kings sort of put together are in, are, in the back, are in the back right now talking to their king. Okay, here's what you need to do. Here's what some strats. Here's what we learned from our matches, what the other teams are gonna, probably gonna bring, you know? These are all things that are gonna be very valuable, especially as the matches sort of go forward. Yeah, I wonder if that's what the delay is about. I wonder if they, they were like, wait a minute. Right, that time was, out, time out, time out. It was like, hold on, that was really good. I need, I'm going to need at least 10 minutes here to talk to Orphinius before yeah. we get this started and uh, figure things out. That'd be hilarious. I'd imagine yeah, so. Be you know, being open, yeah, the, an eternal master, an eternal student is always a master. It's something like that. Where yeah, yeah, as yeah. long as you're always learning, yeah. like you're never going to be a, a true master. Is all an eternal. A true master is an eternal student. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. You got it. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. You're, you got to always be learning. Uh, For uh, sure, and especially when you're into grow. a new game like Cross Duel, right? Like there's so much more to consider than what is typical. Because I think that's that's the the X factor that that Cross Duel really has is that unlike a lot of other card games where you can transfer many of the skills just simply from like tempo and stuff like that, positioning, speed, and the politics angle of of Cross Duel are things that are much harder to test for and much harder for you to sort of be able to go for in these sort of situations. And because of that, I think it's just, it's just going to be a really spectacular showing.
Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting for sure. I really can't wait to see. And it's I really like that. So for this King's Raid, you're going we're going to take a step aside whenever we get our kings in here and then they're going to take over. You're going to be able to hear their banter like against each other while they're working with the king. I wonder if they're going to like already be talking about their match coming up, maybe yeah. a little bit of trash talking about who they think is going to uh be doing well. It's going to be exciting to see. Exactly, especially because the politics angle is going to be a huge part of it, too, because in, in, a, in a weird way, you might not want to overexpose yourself too much to how much you can do in, in the raid because, hey, wait a second. You, I remember you did something really crazy in the raid that you did like 3000 damage in one turn. I should probably be aware of that. Right. Like there's going to be elements of sort of seeing each other's deck list. I wouldn't be surprised if, if some of these seasoned players actually instead like brought raid specific decks and then swapped in something entirely different uh, as we go to there. But I think we're actually almost ready to go check in with the Kings. We want to talk to them about how they felt their matches went, their, their night's matches went, as well as get them ready for the raid. So let's head on over there and talk to them. All right. Hello, Kings. How are you guys all doing today? Yeah, good. Good. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I so I, I got I got a feeling as good as me, but. <laughs> yeah, i was gonna say trump uh you, you sort of called it didn't you? Uh, you you mentioned that ajama king wasn't the place to be right now and instead uh your winner orphanist managed to take the win why don't you tell us about how you felt so far i mean imagine running a trash monster such as ajama king when you can instead <laughs> oh run the mighty blue eyes white dragon what a <laughs> fool he was damn 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 true yep. true true so speaking about Blue Eyes White Dragon, I know one of you is a bigger fan of dragons maybe than the other one. So Kibler, tell me about what you thought about your night there. You didn't walk away with the victory, but it was still fun to watch. Yeah, no, I mean, it was it was pretty unfortunate that he ended up getting Mirror Force as the uh, the bonus card from the middle and then just getting it shielded when, uh, you know, finally did get a chance to use it. So I feel like it was a you know, bit of an unfortunate play out there for Mike's son, but I feel good about how he did. Nice, nice, nice. And uh, Amaz, tell us, tell us, how did you feel about your, your night doing so far? Uh, Rainbow, unfortunately, felt like they got pressured really early in the early game. Wait. Oh, I, I, I didn't even know I was on this interview. <laughs> I was so busy making the game lobby for us. Oh, no worries. No yeah. worries. So hot. Right, so Amaz, a little pre <laughs> preoccupied. But, you know, Rainbow, was, he got a little pressured early there, but... Uh, wasn't able to walk away with that victory. Maybe, you know, people knew there was the fear of the Ojama King. It was too powerful. They knew they had to take him out early. Uh, yeah, so I think that match was um, kind of mean. Uh, Rainbow <laughs> told me he hasn't unlocked all the cards yet already, and everybody just summoned attack monsters and tried to gang up on him. And, <laughs> and it was after Trump saying that his ace monster was bad, so I don't know, man. I think my guy got bored. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, truly unfortunate. Truly and of unfair. Course, yeah. And Dog Dog, of course, CD Tournament actually made some pretty solid plays throughout the match as well, trying to stem the bleeding from Rainbow, but it didn't end up being enough. How did you feel about your uh, Knight's performance, Dog? I feel like he played well. I think sometimes it just doesn't pan out. I think uh, his monster, his uh, Ace Monster got destroyed because he's playing Metal Tank, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, it got destroyed early, and he, he wasn't able to resummon it for a while. So, yeah, it didn't pan out, but... That's okay. He got second. Second's good, kind of. Yeah, we take those. We take those. We take those <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, but otherwise, yeah, otherwise, though, I think we are going to let you guys go off towards the raid that is going to be setting up shortly. Uh, how do you guys feel about the raid? Are you guys ready for, uh, to fight a, p a huge PvE fight? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, my I haven't ready. done a single raid yet, so I'm stoked to try this out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, awesome. they call me a PvE master, so uh, I'll be happy to carry this team. <laughs> All right, sounds exciting. I can't wait to see how y'all do against Grand Mark the Rock Monarch. So we'll let you guys take it over, and we will be back with after the raid for the King of the Cross tournament. So enjoy, guys. Perfect. Are you guys ready? Oh. All right, I think the game's all getting set up still, so give us one moment as we get all set up for it. But I think one thing I wanted to sort of look at here was when you guys went to start building your decks for the PvE, 
Yeah, well, when they start building their decks for the PvE, there's going to be a lot more for them to consider, especially when we start sort of building out, like, what strategies they want to bring into it. As you mentioned earlier, there are some specific PvE uh, different cards that they could be bringing to the match. Now, I know that some of them are, this is their first PvE match they're going to even be trying, but I imagine that their, their knights might have been able to fill them in with some more strategies. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to be okay. I mean, Trump, it seems like it doesn't matter if anyone else knows what they're doing. He's got it under control. He, he's The value has been assessed. He knows where to go. He knows how yeah. he's going to get the most amount of value out of the game. I'd love to see how it's going to play out. He's been he's batting, you know, 100 so far. His prediction was right. <laughs> you know, hard to argue with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I was like, is, is it confidence? Is it arrogance? But I think it's just confidence. He's knowing yep. exactly what he's doing. He knows what cards to be playing. And so uh, if he says he's got it under control, I am, uh, of course, going to believe him. But also, guys, for those of you at home, one real quick thing. We do, of course, have a giveaway currently going on right now. As long as you're active in the chat, you'll have the chance to win some of these amazing prizes. Uh, you also have the chance to win a Yu-Gi-Oh! themed power bank, uh, as well as some custom skinned AirPods for any of you who are at home. So be, be sure to be looking on the lookout for that they look absolutely amazing they have like the actual cross dual like logo into the actual case for them too it's like a really nice black case it's super sleek really really amazing yeah it's awesome i love the branding on the products it's really really cool this gives you something personal something where you're going to have something maybe everyone else has like the airpods everyone has airpods but you get your own unique customization on it really cool and it's free it's a it's a prize and that raffle at the end you got to stick to stay tuned until the very end we'll be giving stuff out all day along while this is going on um, but yeah, that is a little surprising to hear from Kibler that he hasn't that he hasn't done a raid yet. But we'll have to see how that's going to play out here in their Kings raid. So let's go ahead and let them take it away. We'll be back after the raid for the King of the Cross. So stick around. Are you ready? Can you hear me, Trump? Oh, nice. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Yes. Hello, everyone. I don't know we're all, to mute and unmute, you know? So, we're all together. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, Let's go, okay, team. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Enjoy the cinematic. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh, it's yeah. a rock. The cinematic's pretty sweet. It, it, it's a rock golem. Oh, my gosh. He's what the hell is You got some good right? You got a thousand. What is this? I can't count that high. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't worry, guys. I got blue eyes. I'm going to destroy him in one go. Yeah, I'm just going to destroy him. I don't think <laughs> that works work, against right? the raid I'm boss. Just, I'm just, I know. Yeah. I will say that despite the fact that I that I have, uh, you know, not uh, not played a raid before, I did put raid skills on many of my units, so. Okay, good. Oh, that's that's what you want to you do. Didn't. That's good. thing's so big okay um you guys got the rocks right my zone is blocked so dog yeah. you got that rock the, the, it's blocked toward me too the rock yeah thing. so yeah. trump needs to I cover that sense. side oh wait why do i have this <laughs> just gonna send some monsters middle sounds good yeah yeah sounds good but like if Should i attack you trump? like i I'll gain life well, back. We all gain life back if you um, direct attack someone. Really? Ooh, okay. It's my dream. Sure. All right. Oh, I, I, I didn't put the it there. Oh wait, no, that that one would need. Never mind. Oh, I hope it's going to like summon monsters. Oh, yeah, Wait, don't get the foot on race. This is the thing. I can't summon in that lane. What do you mean? Oh, it's blocked for you too. Oh, I think so. Never mind then. Oh. Yeah, I, I had a big X that I can't summon in the the left lane for me uh, to attack the okay, rock okay, thing. Okay. Dog, are you dropping the ball? Where's your rock break? Wait, maybe I could have played one there. It was red. I got scared. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, my zone is blocked. Your zone wasn't blocked. I'm cursing you guys. No! Dog. Why? Dog. Why are you throwing already? Dog? dog is throwing! <laughs> Sabotage! Did you see how with my brilliant raid skill planning, the, that guy did zero damage to my monster? That was pretty That's good. Cool. That was pretty good, show. That was pretty good. Oh. 
I normally wasn't going to immediately me. attack, but the weak point was it's facing oh, Tokyo, so I felt oh, really. obligated. <laughs> my poor dark resonator. Uh huh. Oh my Ow. gosh. Okay, it's okay. We're, we're healing later. It's okay? <laughs> it does not look okay. What is that? Wait, what is that? Change is all monsters, players, monsters in the center lanes to defense position. So that's gonna happen, yeah? What was it? Yeah, I guess. So if you see <laughs> okay. the spell card next to the guy, there's a quaking mirror force coming in. So someone's coming. Well, to make me, sure to grab that. those rocks. I'm gonna yeah, kill Don, the, you gotta kill kill the rock. I'm gonna attack this rock I got this it, time. I got it. Okay. So I shouldn't block your guy because I wanted to hit me, right? So defend no, first yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, then... don't block the guy. Okay. Right, I'm, I'm just gonna, guessing you can't both you... send attack monsters at each other. Is that right? Not that we need to. This heals us, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Arctic Tech heals us. I hope the mechanics work how you're explaining it. I'm not just going to die. So. <laughs> Maybe we should have played like cohesion on something so we could just like build up huge attack. Yeah, cohesion might be better for, for raid bosses, but then yeah. the, bo the boss can also just randomly destroy, destroy. monsters. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, you'll notice how I'm running these focus monsters because we wait a little bit. <laughs> All right, at least we killed the rocks this time. This is just as good as cohesion. True. Look at that! I'm I'm a healer. I'm supporting. Yeah, we're healing. We're healing. <laughs> oh, I blew up that rock. Okay. Yeah, I got there you. you. Go, rocks are down. Rocks are down. Weak point exp Ooh, Oh, now we, now we want to attack the it. Weak point. Okay, so it's what? It's Dog and Kibler's weak points? Wait, it's all of you guys. It's everyone. Since the rocks are It's dead. everyone. Oh, dog is coming to get you. Okay, oh, all our guys blasted. got destroyed. <laughs> um, wait, we have to kill this thing? There's no way we're killing this in time. Um, we're, we're doing this no, weak points. Weak point deals double damage. Okay. Wait, summon the monster. Yeah. Which okay. At the level, if there's a level four lower attack position, control by center lane, generous shield. Okay, don't summon any four lower stars in the middle. Really? Oh no. But 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 it's yeah, weakened. Uh, yeah yeah yeah. But he gains a shield, so summon something higher level. Oh. I'm gonna pass on. <laughs> They're gonna pass. Oh my god! <laughs> what? Wait, Trump, are you gonna destroy yeah, that? All, are you I'll, gonna destroy that rock or no? No, we'll, we'll play. I'm gonna summon Blue Eyes White Dragon. You fool. I, I, me too. Okay, go. I couldn't summon nothing. Let's go, Blue Eyes. Yeah, I'm carrying. <laughs> I like how the animation actually considers like the environment of the raid too. It shows like the cavern walls and stuff. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You want to kill the monster in front of me? Because yeah, there is one. Gain a lot I got of it. attack. Let's go. I'm all, does your blue eyes not have the kill all monsters skill? Yeah, it's raid. We don't need to do that. We don't need to stack up too much oh, of that. Oh man, okay. That's a fair point. Hello? Mine's 5200. Right? Well, well, good thing I killed Kibler's monster. Yeah, 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 yeah. It would have been funny if you accidentally just killed my actual monster. Like, not the monster <laughs> coming at me. It's like, oops. So does my guy just run into that that like oh no zone just disappear and do nothing? That's kind of sad. 
Oh, I should have yeah, played Blue I mean, Eyes uh, last we turn. We all gotta do our attacks constantly on it to get the HP down. So, uh, passing Wait not recommended. Second. Well, I only have so many cards, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be like 80,000 more damage. Wait, how did we not do double damage there? Uh, okay, there's rocks on, on Trump's side. Trump and Dog yep. have rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Huh. Send one to uh, Trump. What's up? I'll destroy the the rock. Okay. Yeah, I can't go to the rock, unfortunately. <laughs> the player has so many cards. Oh my god. All right. I guess I'm uh doing this. Yeah, uh, Milk and Bay there are going to be mad. Wait, how did I do Yeah, wait. He's playing a trap card, right? Earthquake? Uh, I don't think trap cards do anything in this. Well, they're a trap card. They... Oh, no, that's a spell. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Get him, Ram, dude. Ram the boss. That's not too bad. Okay, the raid only does monsters that have the special raid bonus. 1,000 attack? That's insane. 1,000 attack. Rate bonus. Yeah. yeah, you guys have all of those in your deck too, right? Right? Yeah, I have a bunch of them, but I haven't drawn any yet. <laughs> okay, this guy just destroys all like the monsters. What is happening? 5% of the damage? Wait, why is this guy so OP? Stop I blocking mean, my zone. Four of me would be easy. Whoa. Boss attack damage up. Um. Ow. We're, we're, we're getting kind of owned, guys. Trump and dog, you guys need to kill those ro those the rock things so we can, we can get the weak I, point. I or whatever, tried. Right? He destroyed all my monsters. Hmm. <laughs> Here, I'll destroy the rock. I'll destroy the rock. Yeah, but make sure to send the guy to the middle of the wall, right, dog? Wait, I what don't have any. Works? What do you do? You, you want it... the rock in the middle, Trump? You get one. I, 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 okay, well, I'm going to see if I can trap one of these rocks. What are you guys doing? I don't like this rock. And I'm I'm pretending I can actually yeah, hurt you. So I, I'm, I'm sending the monster over there. But definitely kill the rock. Just know that when you have the weak point thing, you generally want to get the monster. Yeah, yeah. You generally want to kill the rock. He's going to see what happens if I trap the rock. If I draw another monster next turn, I have blue eyes. It does like a ton of damage, but we'll see. I hope I didn't just screw over Trump by putting my <laughs> dragon <trying to> chat <laughs> rock. <laughs> see what happens. Oh, baby. What? No. Well, my guy can't change positions. Hopefully, oh, doesn't turn me and just blow up my guy. Nice skill. We should definitely have the um.
Okay, that did work. Nice. Yeah. Two more rocks down. Am I the only one doing damage to the boss? We got sense of defense position. <laughs> you know, I'm on uh, 500 damage isn't really anything. It's a lot when you guys are doing zero. <laughs> you got it good. Oh no, what? oh few didn't, didn't go my way. No, it did go my way. Oh my god. Oh my god, god. This is so funny. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Okay. Alright, this is the big turn, guys. Alright. If I draw a monster, I'll do a lot of damage, but uh. Believe in the heart of the cards, yeah, dog. I, I still haven't drawn my, my like weak point bonus guys. Who would be great to have right now. <laughs> oh, I drew a hippo, great. All right, well, I'm just doing this. We're gonna blue eyes. Got him. Ah, good news, I drew my plus 2000 damage on the weak point guy. I haven't drawn any of those yet. That might be a building failure, could we? I got a golem. I have a bunch of them. I hope you uh, actually took the skill to wipe out this little old guy in front of me. Why does the raid duelist icon like just look like a, a schoolyard bully? That's the, he's bullying us! That's what's he happening is. right now! <laughs> We're getting bullied! Okay, I'm, I'm gonna blow up their monster. I just blew it up also. We'll double blow oh, it up. Okay, well, it's really blown okay. up. We'll blow it up. That monster I mean, is go. super dead. <laughs> Perhaps we could have coordinated this turn better. <laughs> Don't worry, soon we're gonna get to the double draw action. Then you'll draw your uh, cards, right? We only have eight yeah. turns to win this. <laughs> we don't have enough turns. Oh, what? oh no. There's two shields, no! I thought you were trying to use that on the boss. I'd be like, that would be really funny yeah, if you just had zero the defense boss. and just like swap. <laughs> That's like, all we had to do? Yeah. Oh man. Kill the rock, guys. I killed the rock. And that heal for a thousand? Hello? I'm doing 5k? Oh no, 5,200 from blue eyes, let's go. All Boom. right, go. Damage. Okay. Oh, um, <laughs> about this. It did double damage, but... Um... Well, we, it's only down to 66,000 health with two turns <laughs> left. Huh. Hmm. Uh -oh. Ah. I got a rock thing. Oh no, I drew. Oh, we don't get the doubles, oh, Rob. We only drew one card. Don't double draw. Don't double draw. <laughs> oh, I think, uh, I think we're dead, guys. We got this. Oh, no worries. You know, I'm going to uh, pass. You got to pass? What? <laughs> what? You said passing was the worst. <laughs> what? You can't take my strategies. <laughs> All of your, um, don't put anything in the center lane if it's, you know, it's going to change the defense position and then die. Not if it's in defense position. Would it just be defense position and you change it back? No, nope. it doesn't work. But, like that. Uh, that thing just kills but... everything in defense position each turn. But I could oh, RNG something here. Oh, whoops. Oh, boy. Well, I hope you guys I are see. as bad in the tournament as you are in <laughs> PvE. Wait, Dang. how much damage did you do, Trump? Just, this, this, yeah. this fight. Where's the damage charts here? You're taking it. You're back. 
<laughs> yeah, we, we, we need some oh. uh, MVP scores or something here. Let's see how. Um... This will be quite impossible. The Nobody could have won this. I killed a rock again? Oh no, oh, oh no. Uh oh. Um, guys? Guys? My guy got destroyed. Okay. I think this is a victory if we get it into half life. I think that's what the rules are, right? Uh, I don't think that could even happen. Uh, there's, there's no way that could even happen. Are we going with the D? Right, healing your teammates is here. super bait. Or healing yourself is so, so, so bait. Oh. Okay. Oh boy. Well, get him, tank. All right. Keep it middle. That's all we have. Everything mid. We're playing ARAM. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're losing ARAM. You're running down right now. <laughs> Alright, uh, good, good effort, team. Yeah, great effort. <laughs> yeah. Trump talks so much trash. It's like, good try, team. Good try. Yeah, good job, team. Let's go. Oh, this one I think is one of my anti. Yeah. Plus 500 battling the raid boss. Let's go. <laughs> Amazing. Wow, oh, look at that, 500. Oh, not bad. Uh, we got it down to half, right? Yeah. That's a win. Moral victory. We did it. Hey, we, we also survived. Is that the goal? To survive? <laughs> <laughs> Do we? Is it? We survive? I mean, it's below half. I feel like I feel like now that I've actually played through a, a, a raid, I have a better sense of the sort of things I want in my deck to win this raid. Oh. Yeah, it seems like you want the don't switch positions in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Protection from destruction, uh, trap, things like that. Oh, all right. <laughs> well played. Oh, it Kings. does say <laughs> I have three crowns, guys. I have three crowns. <laughs> I have two crowns. I think. How many crowns do you have, Trump? Trump, <laughs> where are your crowns, buddy? Well, I'll have Thank you know that's because there were shields on my side both times. Oh, oh. <laughs> I did like how Doc called so it. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun match, though. You guys did well. I mean, Grand Martin, you know, kind of a formidable monarch. It did seem to have a lot of, you know, uh, health there <laughs> to, to go through. Uh, but y'all yeah. did, did solid. Uh, yeah, it seemed like yeah, the destroying the defense mode monsters. Yeah, it was a little rough. He's having his way, just being able to wipe out so many of y'all's cards so often. But it was fun to watch for sure. I enjoyed you guys trying to work together and to to take down the Grand Mark. Do you yeah, have any favorite moments, Roy? Yeah, the the honestly, I, I was really surprised about how many mechanics were actually built into the into the raid. It felt like like a true boss battle, and in terms of like a, like a, a traditional video game, you know what I mean? Like a, it was like, oh yeah, he, watch out, he has to make everyone defense mode. They can destroy all defense monsters. Watch, you got to clear the rocks on the side of the stage. Like it felt like there was a lot to do across it. And I think now that our kings have seen what he's what he's uh, what he's capable of, they might be able to structure their decks a bit differently and uh, have a bunch bit different strategies, especially going into it. Um, but yeah, Kings, how do you guys feel about your uh, overall performance here? Was there anything you're going to take from this lesson to go into the uh, Kings Cross matches at all? Or what are you guys feeling so far? I think they're all a lot weaker than that boss was. So I'm, I'm feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think there's any uh, 131,000 attack monsters uh, in, in the regular game. So I think you guys will be safe from that respect, at least. What? Uh, Did you yeah. not bring those? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> truly unfortunate. 
But yeah, we will be right back after a short commercial break and we will begin our King of the Cross section. That's right. It's a five game gauntlet. Only one of our kings will be crowned the king at the end of it all. So stick around. We have more cross tool action coming. See you soon. For Yu-Gi-Oh! Dimension Force! 100 new cards you can add to your deck, plus tie-ins with Tactical Masters, new Predaplant Fusions, new Performa Pals, and the first ever Pendulum Monster that's also a ritual! Odd Eyes Pendulum Graph Dragon! Yu-Gi-Oh! Dimension Force! Available now! Nine cards per pack, each pack sold separately. Also available, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel! Rated T for Teen.
Hello and welcome back, everyone. It's Billy Brake and the Skilled Roy. We've had some awesome cross duel action so far. We got to see our King's Knights go at it, and we eventually crowned our champion. And now we just saw our Kings take on a raid boss, Grandmark, proving to be a little more difficult than maybe they initially anticipated. Um, but now they are no longer going to be on the same team. They're going to be facing off against each other. You want to talk about that a little bit, Roy? Yeah, of course. So right now the, we have our four kings, Dog Dog, Trump, Amaz, Kibler, all here to put out their best matches again like cross duel, each of them bringing new strategies and new sort of cards to the table. I'm really excited to see what they do. Uh, but we're going to be doing a, uh, a f I think, a sort of five match gauntlet and taking up the whoever wins the most uh, points from that, those five matches. Uh, but I think our kings are ready to sort of see us. So let's go ahead and head over to them and see what sort of strategies they have. Hello, Kings. How are you guys all doing today? All right. Nice. Oh, oh hi, hi. Everyone doing, yeah. Everyone doing awesome? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. yeah. awesome. seated and ready to go? Awesome. All right. So uh, we guys just saw you guys uh, attempt uh, the uh, raid bat boss, but uh, Amaz, tell me, what are you what are you thinking of changing uh, from your strategy from that raid boss to tackle on the uh, more human opponents this time? What are you talking? I had to, I had to literally coach Kibler and Dog real time during the raid. Okay, I don't need oh, to do that whoa, for the, now. So, well, I'll be, I'll be fine. You don't need to believe that, but uh, that's not reality. <laughs> Kibler that's was like, "What do I do? What do I do if I send monsters against you?" You know. <laughs> that was pretty good. No one's testing. Right. I was experimenting. You know. Yeah, you gotta figure out what works and what doesn't. That's the way you get the right answer. Uh, Trump, are you a little bit worried going into this? You might have a target on your back with the pre-game trash talk that you kind of already had here. Are you worried? Do you think that maybe you have a target on your back because you seem to know what you're doing? You know, your knight won the champion. You know, you've been working with your knight. You've talked him up. Are you worried about having putting a target on your back? No, not at all. Even if all three came at me, I'm sure I could slot them down. Okay, so we have a plan. Wow. Now. <laughs> Kibler's I'm already on board. Guys. Get him! <laughs> no, no, no! I'm joking. I'm joking. That was a joke. That's a joke. Just don't don't gang up on me. Jerk. Look at look at my uh, look at my portrait there. I'm just a kid. <laughs> You're also highest um duelist collection score. Okay, everybody get him. Well, yeah, that's because that. I put them all into the PVE skills. I'm like you guys. Oh man! Uh, speaking of which, actually, K Kibler, you said you uh, you said you hadn't played too much of the PVE. Is that because you've been playing so much of the PVP? Yeah, I've only been really been playing the PVP stuff, trying to uh, you know, trying to to learn and uh, and figure out exactly like what sort of monsters and skills that I want to have on them, traps, spells, etc. So never really had the opportunity to dive into the raid uh, with that. So, but it was fun, and I definitely want to explore it more. Yeah, it was fun watching you guys. Just seeing you guys trying to figure it out. Y'all's initial reaction to how much attack the Grand Mark had was hilarious. I loved that. Uh, but <laughs> it was it was a lot. And so, Dog, so you're in here. Are you looking at anyone in particular you want to try and go after first? Or is there someone you want to team up with? Uh, I'm going to send all my things at Trump. Because he <laughs> was a bully during that raid. And he's, <laughs> I won't forget it. I'm petty. <laughs> we'll have to see if that comes back to bite him for sure oh, all no. right so we'll be going into a, a five match uh, sort of gauntlet here with each winner first second third fourth all getting different uh points associated with them so each point each position will matter quite a bit here for between you guys uh so across the five matches whoever ends up with the final largest point total is going to be considered the victor so even if you might win the first one be sure to adjust your strategies because even if you get second or third you're still in the running you can easily make it back the point difference uh and i think it's going to be a really exciting match for you guys Nice. I do think, yeah, I do think it will be really exciting. Are you, so five games, that's a lot. Are you guys, yeah, so you talked about you can switch up your strategy throughout it. Uh, we'll start, yeah, Maz, do you, are you planning on using the same strategy throughout, or are you going to be changing up how you play to keep everyone off guard? We'll see, we'll see. Um, I, already <laughs> changed the, I already changed the one card based on that rate battle just now, because <laughs> I think I can predict the meta a little bit. Fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, Trump. So, is it safe to say you're not bringing Ojama King to the to the to the verses? <laughs> yes, that's fair to say. <laughs> but I am gonna say that I have a few uh, tricks up my sleeve. I wouldn't recommend coming at me. 
<laughs> nice. And Kibler, I mean, I've been, I know dragons are kind of your thing. Are you going to be relying on? You don't have to really give away too many secrets, but are we going to be seeing dragons maybe? Or you just want to keep that, you know, closer Absolutely. to the chest? I don't need to keep that secret. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty fair that's pretty fair and of course dog uh i know there's probably a lot going on for what, what strategy you came uh came for this final match here uh, have you been talking to cd tournament your knight at all about what possible strategy you should be bringing for this yeah he sent me the the list that he thought was the best and uh he sent me a couple but i picked one that would suit my play style a little bit more and i'm excited to uh get into it let me interject real fast since Dog came at me. If uh, Dog's the one net decking, I'll let you guys know. I homebrewed mine, so you should probably go after Dog. What? <laughs> I, I, I also brewed mine. Like go up the Trump back. Yeah, you know, the out. Yeah, I only oh, and the politics game is everything. I'm probably net deck, but I brought decks made from my heart and soul. <laughs> yeah, there's an That's advantage there. Means so you know. Empty. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a good thing. You guys kind of took it the other way, yeah, but yeah. I, I mean, I'm always, I'm always, you know, the more comfortable you are with your cards, kind of really can outweigh the power. Like sometimes in games, there's a card that's so powerful like you have to play because it puts you in such a big advantage. But knowing what your deck does and knowing what your how to utilize your cards the best is definitely the way I like to go into like you know sort of big gaming events like this, or just knowing what at least knowing what you're going to do and not having like unexpected surprises coming from your own cards at least. So I want to see how it plays out versus Trump's homebrew and Dog's net deck. Uh, just just for the record i guess we should ask then uh maz and kibler uh did, did you guys make your own decks or did you guys uh talk to your knights about what is the perhaps best thing to bring oh no i made my, uh, own, I deck. my own deck uh, you know i was i was just sort of experimenting with stuff uh pretty much in the same vein more or less since i started playing and just kind of tried to find more things that worked like you know identifying specific monsters skills traps etc but kind of stuck with the same core strategy the whole time nice how about you, Maz? Oh, yeah, no, I built my own deck, too. I just don't need to, like, brag about it like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like there's a clear target so it's already forming before the matches even begin. But, of course, that will obviously have to change as the standings uh, also adjust themselves as well. Uh, and we'll see who ends up uh, sort of uh, carrying across, say, games three and four, who's the target is at that point. Yeah, I think the five game dynamic of this is the really interesting because we could see something completely different. By the time we reach game five, you guys are going to know what everyone's trying to do. They're kind of key strategies and you're going to be able to adapt your play style along the way. But I do think we are finally ready to see the match underway. Good luck, everyone. I can't wait to see which one of you awesome players is going to win. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Good luck, guys. All right. Hey. To begin things off with yeah i'll see what everyone sort of decides at their opening plays here again that first middle card there is going to be the bonus card so players can opt to go for it and attempt to secure a really powerful spell or trap card we'll have to see what ends up happening here each of the players sort of scoping each other out here we see a great number of good cards from both all the players here we see trump here as well getting set up on his set of sort of a board state here as well We'll yeah, I mean, this is there. the main phase of the first turn. This is where we're, the, the strategies are going to be revealed as soon as they place monsters on the field. And it looks like three monsters coming down from Ramaz right off the bat and Dog not holding anything back. While Trump did not summon anything on the first turn, this is the strategy that I identified to be the one that I favor the most is this Trump strategy. Like, I don't see any reason to summon monsters on the first turn. Why not wait a turn and get uh, an idea for what the opponents have in mind, and then you can play your cards accordingly. So I really like to see this out from Trump here. Exactly, but we're also seeing the exact opposite from both Dog and Amaz here, going for a full three uh, summon here, pushing out early aggression. It does have its advantages, of course, but we're gonna have to see what Trump makes of this. These are two pretty beefy units coming in. Of course, summoning your units early does mean they get to activate their skills earlier, which means they could potentially score a bit of an advantage here, but we'll have to see what Trump does in respect here. Now, of course, despite his lanes being open, they are going to make it only halfway because they're traveling at the normal speed. Uh, they can only travel that far if they're quite a bit faster. In fact, we actually can see Kibler's Z-Metal tank is going way faster than everyone else. They're gonna secure that thing and immediately sprint past the incoming <laughs> fight there. Really great stuff and heading right towards the open Trump. That is three units coming straight at Trump right now. 
Yeah, and Dog and Amaz units trading, both getting destroyed. So you really see the advantages of playing those cards that speed up your monsters. Kibler not only able to getting that card, but speeding past that battle in the, the middle lane to where his monster survives with full attack points, and he got that bonus card. Yeah, this is a quite a bit coming at Trump here. You do the quick quick math on this. This is like 2,000 on the right, 2,300 on the left, uh, 1,500 coming straight at him. You're going to have to have a pretty substantial hand here to really fight this. Now, thankfully, Trump does, in fact, have one. He did play really defensively on the first turn, so he has a lot of cards in hand right now. We'll see what he ends up doing with it, including, of course, his ace card, which could also potentially swing a huge damage number back at one of these opponents here. There we go. The last couple seconds of the main phase. Putting down any last sort of cards they might want to put out here. Everyone still has pretty substantial hands. Kibler and Trump both at pretty large hand sizes. Here yeah, we'll see how Trump deals with this early aggression. It looks like they did decide to live up to what they were talking about beforehand, that Trump has that target due to that trash talk before a game. I wonder if you know that moment where he was like, good good job, guys. That was him trying to save face, realizing maybe he was putting too big of a target on his bag. For sure, for sure. I, I, I do fully expect that to change as the games go on, because obviously with the difference in uh, position mattering for the points, it's going to cause players to value, hey, should we attack the person who's currently winning in the match we're mm. currently playing, or should we play the fight the person who's currently winning the, the five-round gauntlet uh, more so instead? So we'll see that change uh, very quickly as the matches go on here. I guess. Oh, that is a huge yeah. Z-Metal tank there from the side of Doug. That's over 3,000 defense. Yeah, Z-Metal tank skills in this game are really good. Definitely, I know when the game first launched, that was one of the main monsters a lot of people were looking at to include in their decks. Indeed, indeed. And and the Perform Pal Silverclaw there in the middle. I love Perform Pal Silverclaw, one of my favorite uh, monsters. Not a pendulum monster, but part of the, you know that pendulum theme mm -hmm. from yu gi Arc 5. Looks like the attacks are going in right now. We see Z-Metal tanks and probably be trading here with the middle lane of Trump. And it looks like Trump is actually heading off this defense quite well. He's going to take a bit of a loss here on the right, it seems like. Oh, Sword and Shield, though. That's going to change things up quite quickly here. Only 300 attack. Nice play by Trump there. That's a solid defense, it looks like. It is, yeah. That's, that's what I kind of like about holding your cards. I mean, while you do fall victim, if someone decides to put uh, speed a monster up towards you, but on the first turn, if they have the speed up, they're probably going after that middle lane so you can get that card so you don't have to worry about it. Trump mm -hmm. may knowing this, so he didn't have to play any cards. And yeah, just really getting that option to see where everyone else is going before you have to invest any of your resources, your monsters onto the field. And yeah, even though he was able to set it up, he still lost a couple of his monsters and has monsters coming towards him. But now let's look from Dog's point of view. Let's see what he has got going on for him. It's like he has a defense mode monster. He has one monster going towards Trump, one across the center heading towards Amaz. All right, let's see what ends up happening here. Beginning of the uh, third phase. It is still anyone's phase. game. <laughs> It's crazy. We're already seeing that everyone is still at 4,000 HP. Everyone's sort of uh, counteracting each other really well here. No one yet has left an opening. Yeah, we see a lot more. I think the egos are on the line more than anything. Everyone wants to be like, anytime you beat someone else in another in a game or anything, that's trash talk you can use for the rest of your life. Be like, yeah, no matter what you say, I still beat you on this day. Don't forget it. Yeah, you can sure. always hold it over their head forever. So yeah. definitely a lot on the line here for these players. Yeah, the title of the true king of the cross is up for grabs. So this is be really, really exciting to see. All and the gold here. coming out. Intricate plays so far. A lot of monsters on dog side of the field. He's got monsters on the board. He's got monsters protecting him. Kibler still with a ton of cards in hand, so I kind of look when we're still early in these rounds with many rounds to go. I kind of look at all the resources, and Kibler might be in pretty good shape. He's also, you know, just incredible at card games. I mean, all these players are incredible at card games. Kibler just might have a few more years of experience on some of these players, though, just because he's been playing them for so long. Very, very true. And you can see that with the reservation here, five cards in hand, even up to more than Trump, who's already playing pretty reserved. So we're going to have to see what these last sort of turns look like. Kibler might go for like a big blitz play and drop a bunch of cards in one turn. All right, back over to Trump's POV here. Lots of really great matches here. Again, solid defensive by Maz, holding out well against two different attackers. Still no damage being dealt yet. Everyone seemingly answering each other very perfectly here. But still, you have to wonder, only Kibler has five cards. Everyone else's card resources are slowly dwindling over the fourth phase we're now getting into. All right, here we go. About halfway through, we're at the halfway point. Only four more rounds left if someone doesn't reduce their life points to zero. And with all players sitting at 4,000, but we do see this 2,900 tags. He will take on its way to Kibler. Kibler's yeah. going to have to keep an eye on that. 
Uh, Kibble does have the resources though, so I presume at this point Kibble is probably drawing at least one answer for it. So we'll have to see what ends up happening here. A full mid of cards in his hand, and Dog has two, but it's looking like he has a quite a decent board state. Whereas Amaz also only at three cards, but not nearly as a as impressive of a board state. So we'll have to see what happens here. Yeah, Maz definitely feels like he's on the back foot a little bit with two monsters in defense mode, but he does get another monster into attack mode now. It looks like that's the Seven Roads Magician. I can't tell from here, but it might be Seven Roads Magician from Yu-Gi-Oh. There it is, the blue eyes. Awesome engine of destruction. Few of face just live to tell the tale. Of course, Kibler playing the Massive Dragon is only on brand for him. He's going to be setting it out on the right lane there to push into Amaz. But he has to wonder what are you going to do about that Z Metal tank? That Z Metal tank coming on the left side, that's going to be incredibly scary. Yeah, a lot of cards here from Dog. He has monsters on the way, monsters in the back row. And you can have multiple monsters going in the same lane. They'll just be following each other. The Z Metal tank's up to 3,700. You see, maybe this net. And usually when you net deck, that means you're kind of looking at the list online. You find, like, maybe a list that won a tournament, a list that did really well. You're like, oh, if it won this tournament, I'm going to copy it. Exactly. And that's like the terminology they mean by net deck. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Maybe he's already using like a deck that's been proven before, uh, you know, in local circles. And you have to wonder that that Z-Metal tank is very scary. 3,700 attack can end a game almost outright. It's going in on an open attack on Kibler here. Yeah, Kibler's gonna need a trap. And he does, he has the Mirror Force because he sped and got that card at the beginning, but it doesn't destroy the Z-Metal tank, only the Gaga mission because he put that uh, in the, you have to pick which zone the Mirror Force goes after and not the right one. And now Z-Metal tank, Putting Killer down to 300, Dog at 7,700. That is uh, looking a little spooky. Just remember, guys, if Kibler loses here, it, the match immediately ends, and Dog will be considered the winner of the first round, uh, the first match of this uh, saga here. But we'll have to see what happens. Now, this, this is where we're going to probably see other players start trying to help out Kibler because if if Dog left leaves unchallenged, then it's going to be uh, an automatic win for Dog there. Everyone's surveying the board. Dog a little excited, he saw a big smile and cheesing a little bit there after that, getting that direct <laughs> attack through on Kibler. Yeah, I can't be can't be too upset about having suddenly 7,700 LP uh, looking pretty solid here. At this point, though, it's, it's also a big target on his back, so we'll have to see if anyone else tries to challenge him here. Yeah, we'll have to see if the Seven Roads Magician connects to Trump here from Amaz's side. A bunch of summons coming out here. Not even a planet can stop the Seven Rose Magician. Another Blue Eyes, here we go. The Ace cards are coming out now as we get down to the final uh, phases of the, of, the, of the game. Gear freed in defense mode there. Mm -hmm. Dog throwing out a Performa Pal. Silver Claw, and then another, another Blue, Blue Eyes. Eyes. Everyone seems to be sold on this Blue Eyes. It does seem to be like the key ace monster. A lot of them are focusing on playing uh, probably due to that bonus effect. You get to immediately, you know, burst stream of destruction and destroy a monster on the field as soon as it is summoned. Extremely powerful here. Let's see where they end up choosing their choices here. In fact, in a way, playing your early blue eyes could have been a risk there if it immediately gets destroyed. That's 4,000 on the Z-Metal tank. Oh, man. So he just gets to keep going. It's 4,300. Z-Metal tank. I, I was talking about it earlier. I think that there has some skills involved with it that make it very powerful for just being a normal summon monster in cross duel. Ooh, nice. Getting the teleport there to swap out their characters, so completely shifting the lines of attack there against Trump. That's yeah, Mercy teleport actually teleporting. Pretty cool. So we see a compulsory evacuation device in Killer's hand. That's a powerful trap card in the TCG, so I can only imagine it could, might help him here dealing with this 4,300 attack. But it's in I his hand, so. he didn't it. Just had the defense for the gear free, so he didn't take the, any more damage, but he has a blue eyes from Amaz headed right at him. Yeah, it looks like everyone's trying to finish this off, but we'll have to see what happens here. This is looking a little risky. Dog getting even higher life points now. 7,800. Killer's looking stressed. Is there any answer that can stop both of these with so few cards in hand? We're not even at the phase where you can start drawing two cards per turn, so you're gonna have to draw a miracle here. Dog just in the lead. Kibler's gonna need to do something. He still has to deal with this giant monster that Dog has coming at him. The Z-Metal tank just, it's been 
an absolute monster since the beginning and hasn't slowed down since. He just had that one defense monster, the Gear Freed. Got its attack down a little bit, but still has way more attack than any monster in Killer's hand. Yeah, this is going to be a really rough position here. Have to... And he's also looking at another blue eyes from a mod coming right at him. Yeah. It's not looking too good. It looks like Amaz might be playing for second here, knowing that he can't challenge Dog, trying to end the match quickly, get the second place and play for the next round. That would make sense. Like, you kind of right off the game, you know you're not gonna be able to get first, but do the best you can. I like that strategy. Yeah, in a, in a five in a five game series, you gotta play for the future. It's only the first of five. Let's we'll see what happens here. That looks like the uh, Killer played the trap on the uh, blue eyes here, so it might be going back to hand if it's anything like the TCG. We'll have to see here. He's like, oh, yeah, hopefully it bounces that blue eyes back or this would be it. Oh, that is it. Oh no. Oh, Killer no. destroyed by what he loves the most of dragon, the blue eyes white dragon. And that will settle our sort of uh, winning winner standings here. That's going to put Dog Dog in first, and then Amaz in second, Trump in third, and Kibler in fourth. All right. What a match, guys. It seemed pretty impressive. So I'm going to go to uh, Dog first. Dog, was that your plan all along to get that Z Metal tank uh, really big and then just launch it at Kibler and hope he wasn't ready for it? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the deck is uh, double cohesion is pretty sick, so I just try to block one monster and then I send it and hope they can't deal with it. It works pretty well because it has a uh, immunity to destruction, so it's nice as an ace monster. Makes sense, makes sense. And Amaz, actually, I saw that once uh, once Kibler took a quite a hit there, you decided to still send the blue eyes uh, after him. Were you considering just playing for second at that point, or what was your thoughts? Hey, Kibler said at blue eyes against me. When he was getting attacked by dogs Motex, so I was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to have to crush you, too. Okay, that's, that was ridiculous. Yeah, so Killer, I was talking at the very end. How did it feel being, you know, ended by a dragon? I know you love the dragons, but you know, having the blue eyes facing you down. I mean, that, that, game, that game generally was really rough because, like, I had I had the mirror force, but dogs, dogs think it was, was indestructible by destroy effect. And I had blue eyes, but it was indestructible by destroy effect. And I'm like, okay, all of my tools to answer this are not working, and it's huge. So I had to set blue eyes to try and, like, at least get some life back. But then Amaz was able to blue eyes my blue eyes, so it was really kind of hopeless at that point. Unfortunate, unfortunate. And Trump, so it was bizarre. We, we all thought you were going to be the target going in on this, but uh, it seemed that you didn't have to deal with too much. What are your thoughts on it? Um, it was... I'm honest, I would have done more against Dog, but you kept sending monsters at me. So <laughs> yeah, that was I'm the like putting originally. My, I'm putting my palm against my face. Like, these idiots, do they know what they're doing? <laughs> I had to defend that whole game, basically. All right, well, Trump putting a bigger target on his back, making sure everyone wants to go after him in the next games. Maybe they'll lay off. We'll have to see how it plays out. This is a five-game series. We've only done one game so far. And we'll be right back with our second game of the gauntlet. So stay tuned. We have more King of the Cross, cross duel action. Don't go anywhere.
being able to bring something like Speed Duel over to you know someone's house and be like, yeah, you can pick it up and we can play it. Coming from the competitive side of things, I know how complicated the game can be and how like daunting it is for new players to try to like play regular Yu-Gi-Oh right now. I think Speed Duel is such a good introduction to the game. It was really neat to just open a box and have all of these different decks instead of going out and having to buy all of the different cards. I'll put in, put in Cobalt Eagle. I'm definitely a fan of the Elements of Hero cards and the Winged Kribo just because it's uh, the main character, uh, Jane and Yuki's like, favorite cards. All right, so I'm going to activate Polymerization. Mm -hmm. Send these two to the graveyard and to start my battle phase, I'm going to activate the skill card. It shows that there's other ways to play the game and it's not just one rigid way to play. It still gives you that flow, that pacing, but at a much like lower level to the point that it's much easier to understand. I think it's really good for the game. All right, welcome back everyone to Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel. That's right, it's a special event today. It's King of the Cross, and we are one game down with our kings, and we saw Dog walk away with the victory there, and Maz coming in second, and Trump coming in third, Kibler coming in fourth. So that's the current standing order of the tournament as they do well in the upcoming games. They'll get more points, and it might fluctuate. We'll try and keep tabs on it and let you guys know who is in the lead as the games go on. But it was an exciting one to begin with. We definitely saw strategies come out and emerge, and we'll have to see if it evolves as the second game starts. Yeah, especially when we are looking at the, uh, the very fact that now that Dog Dog is winning, that inherently puts a target on your back as we get into the next sort of matches here, of course. And uh, as we sort of see where the uh, sort of alliances start drawing, we'll have to go from there. But uh, let's let's hear from them first. Let's hear how they're preparing for the game, too. Uh, let's head over to our Kings. Hello, Kings. We're about to get started for your second match. But uh, I got to ask right off the bat, Dog Dog, do you, do you feel a little scared that now that you're winning that you'll immediately have be uh, sort of targeted by the other players? Not really. I feel like there is a lot of opportunity to attack people whenever they're targeting other people. So it kind of self-balances in that way because it's like an open lane. So they probably won't just jam everything at me. It should be fun. Yeah, definitely. I can see that happening. But now, so, Kibler, you know that Dog's uh, Z-Metal tank has that destruction protection. You know that he might be coming after you again since you, you already have cards that you know they're due to destruction, like the blue eyes and everything. Are you going to be maybe playing more defensive against Dog, or are you going to be trying to go offensively against him and just, you know, pay back the favor? I, I know it's planned now, so I don't want to reveal what answers I may have to that plan, but I got, I got <laughs> something in mind. Sounds good. good sounds hear. good. And Trump, you were unfortunately put on the defense for most of that first game. Where are you, how are you going to change it up for this one this time? I'll offer this bit of advice for my fellow duelists. Uh, if the Z metal tank is going for someone, you should not attack that person because they have enough to deal with. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, Trump saying let's not end the games quickly because as soon as that one player dies, you know, we all lose. So let's kind of work together to keep the game going on longer. I think that's a solid sound strategy. Oh, and I'm a long game. You look so unlike him. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and Amaz, you seem to be you dictated your strategy in game based on what was happening in the game. You know, you said Kittler sent that blue eyes after you, so you just returned the favor right back at him. Are we going to see more of that in the second game? Uh, I'm flexible. I have multiple strategies. You'll know how I think, you know? <laughs> I'm going to add Kittler. Yeah. You, you definitely should have sent blue eyes and Doug. It, I couldn't. <laughs> I would just kill it. <laughs> no, it was just a big monster. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Lots of attack. <laughs> I, I know Trump you can't destroy the Z tank, but you can just uh, destroy something else. New plan should uh, be winning, Kibler. Good luck. That's always the plan. <laughs> like I said, it didn't work out the first time. I'm gonna add one thing, dog. Like, if I, I know that if I'm the person who gets sent the Z metal tank, uh, that it it's a disadvantage <laughs> even though I can hold it off. So I'm gonna suggest a dog. If you send it at me, you're going to lose, and I'd rather you not. That's all. Oh, I see. <laughs> you sound a little scared, Trump. Just a little bit scared. It's okay. No, I, I definitely am scared. I'm just letting you know it would be mutual destruction. Oh, so okay, I'd okay. rather you that not sounds send good. it to me. <laughs> I like the I like the strategic planning here. That's the best you know word of advice. If you're coming after me, you're gonna lose. You don't want to do it. But uh, definitely hilarious. So we'll have to see if Dog's gonna you know sound your, hear your warning, heed your warning here in the next game. Indeed, we have a remember still have four matches to go, of course. So even uh, even if a strategy has to sort of change here, I, I strongly suspect we'll see start seeing the development of like a internal uh, meta game here between each of these five matches as uh, people start leapfrogging uh, threats and answers on top of each other. Uh, we'll have to see how that sort of uh, goes for the next game. Um, in general, though, I think we are going to be getting into those matches just shortly. We'll just be getting up for the setup just uh, no, just a little bit. Um, but before then, uh, is there anything you guys are, have learned uh, since that first game uh, in general? Dog Dog, tell me, is there anything you feel like you might be changing yourself for this game at all? I mean, it seemed to work. So if it's, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> All right, well, hearing that, Kibler, are you, are you going to be prepared for Dog? You know, he's going to send that Z-Metal tank your way. That means you got to get ready for it. I have learned that tanks are scary, and I need to figure out how to answer <laughs> them. So I, I have, some, I have some, uh, some thoughts in mind. So don't try it again, Dog. It won't work out. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. I think we'll have to sort of see uh, as the Z-Metal tank sort of keeps growing, uh, uh, if it sends it to someone else or if we have a different answers for it entirely this time. Uh, but we'll have to sort of see. Have you guys made any big deck changes to your deck since then? Trump, have you made any large deck changes at all, or do you run with the same thing again? Uh, the deck that I have is good against a Z-Metal tank coming my way, so I have to stick with it. <laughs> oh, so you kind of prepared for the meta. You, you knew that Z-Metal tank was kind of like the thing that everyone's kind of talking about, like one of the more powerful options, so you just prepared your deck uh, before the I, tournament. I like to think of this game as having like a few levels, and the first level is basically sending the biggest stats at people, and Z-Metal Tank is one of the best ways to do that. So that does create a like really frenzied tempo scenario. Now, the good news is like if we actually decide to give the person who gets sent the tank a little bit of leeway, I think the person getting sent to the tank can stop the tank. It's all about the other pressure that's coming on when the tank's already you know headed towards you. That makes a lot of sense. We'll have to see if you know that plays out, but I wonder if any of you guys are going to adapt the strategy. If you, oh, you see the the uh, dogs tanks going after somebody else, are you just going to gang up and maybe try and get that advantage from that? Maybe just get second a few more times and be okay with getting second place, or is dog just going to walk away with it all? I mean, that's really exciting. That's that's cross tool is each game plays differently, right? Like even though you're playing with the same card, since it is four players, you know, free for all going at it, depending on which lanes you play your cards, the results of the games can be quite dramatically different just based on your choices that you make, uh, based upon, you know, who's summoning stuff where. Definitely one of my favorite parts about the layers in Cross Duel. It's, we are talking about Skilled Roy. It's kind of like an onion. Each strategy, like, oh, if I'm putting this here, you're going to think one way. I'm going to think the next step ahead. So it still has that like trading card game aspect. Uh, to the mobile version of the game. Yeah, I think we saw it in the first game. I can't remember who it was, but they, they actually tributed summon something to bait an attack in one direction with the lane. They tribute summoned it so that he could sort of bait an approach that way and then go towards uh, putting it down another attack and another sort of angle. Uh, and we'll have to see if that sort of uh, strategy continues to develop. All right. And, and Amaz, so let, let us know, what, what are you feeling so far about making your deck right now? What are you sort of feeling uh, for the next sort of round? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm making a new deck right now on the fly. <laughs> oh. I, I don't think it's ready yet. Uh, I will maybe play it in the third match. 
Sounds good to us. Sounds good to us. We'll be getting into our uh, next match as soon as we can in just a little bit. Uh, and we'll be able to uh, sort of see if these new strategies and new sort of meta developments between these four incredible players uh, creates a, a new sort of uh, game plan for each of them. Uh, we're waiting just a little bit longer and to get everyone all set up for this. All yep, we'll right. We are about ready. So let's go ahead and jump into the game. Ready for game number two here of King of the Cross. This is a five game series and all the points will be added up at the very end of it. You get four points for first place, three points for second place. All right, three and then two points and one we goes, it goes down for each place. So the better you do, the more points you get. And at the end of it, we're gonna take the top point getter and he's gonna be our King of the Cross. But here we go, game number two. Dog is in first place going into this game. We'll see if that means he has a target on him right from the beginning or if the players are just gonna be focusing on that center card. We saw Kibler get the center card in the first game and not making much of an impact because it was a mirror force and it couldn't even be used on that Z metal tank. Yeah, so it seems like the center card, does, while it is powerful, does have some counterplay to it. So it's not just whoever gets it does win the game. It's, it's an advantage, but not something that's insurmountable, as we just saw the player who did end up getting it, uh, unfortunately, did lose uh, while holding it. Uh, so now we'll see what happens here and what the strategies end up being. That really quick, fast-moving Z-Metal tank that, that Kilber sent out though, initially, I wonder if that's going to be the same play here or if you're going to go towards something more like, like Dog Dog is doing and just stacking it up to make it do a bunch of damage. We'll have to see here. Oh, there it is, the Z-Metal in defense. Gonna start trying to use that skill, build up his attack every turn until it gets a little stronger. Oh, nice to see Exodia there as well. Z-Metal tank. <laughs> Star of the show for this meta, early meta development here. Yeah, Z-Metal Tank's kind of been the talk of the town since Cross Duel's release, so I'm not surprised but we're going to see it here at the King of the Cross. Yeah, look at that. Already getting a, a massive attack uh, attack and defense bonus there. Up to 3,000. gets the double cohesion, so everyone has a lot of attack. And we see Trump sending... It looks like, yeah, he, Dog took that challenge. He put that Z-Metal Tank yeah. in Trump's lane. He said, you said I'm going to lose if I do this? Well, let's see if you are you're telling the truth. Uh, it He's been pretty accurate so far. We'll have to see if it will spell the same or if it was just a tactic to try and get Dog not to come after him. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, Kibler actually got Wide Dragon had to fly out and immediately grab the card just like last time. So Kibler again with the card here. We'll see what ends up happening here. Actually manages to win the first fight against Amaz on the right lane. So he'll be taking advantage of that, putting some small chip damage towards Amaz that way. Let's see how these things go here. Like like World Magician there, yeah. All right, let's see what happens here. We're getting into the uh, second uh, main phase here. So now we see the monsters they put out. They have some monsters to see if anyone has an open lane. Not really. It looks like the center lane here is kind of open, but Dog's monster is going to probably be battling with Trump's monster, even though he does have that speed. So it might speed right past, actually, and go straight across to Kibler. But Indeed. Trump definitely sending a monster towards the Z-Metal tank. He doesn't want it to start building up. He wants to go after it as fast as he can. So I imagine Trump might put another monster in that same uh, right lane to go towards dog. Yeah, there, and you're right. You're right indeed. That's a, one to answer Kibler's uh, why from the middle lane and then putting another one to follow up his own unit on the right lane there to, to try to challenge that Z metal tank and stop it from just running at him. And the music in this game is amazing. <laughs> An attack going up there across the entire board. See what happens here. 2200. That's probably enough to start challenging the Z Metal Tank if both hit. Trump, he warned Dog. He's like, I know how to play against this card. He, I mean, that's all the preparation for the tournament. You want to see what everyone else is using, and then you want to figure out how to beat it. That's a way to like find an ace and a way to really come out with that first place as opposed to just doing well throughout it. We see the point totals outdated here. Dog with four points, Amaz with three, Trump with two, and Killer with one. Killer using Sword and Shield there to get the advantage on the, uh, uh, I think, Performer Pal that was there, placed there by Trump. So then that'll be an easy attack there, I think, for just over 800 attack. Oh, Trump entering with it with her own attack and teammate swapping it back. There we go. And that'll be an easy answer there for Trump. And Joey's shield and sword card, definitely fantastic here in cross duel, catching your opponent off guard. All right, let's see what happens here. Nice. Trump's promo pal managed to push through there. To meet Pursuit Tricks in the middle, and it's gonna trade for 300. 
Zemel Tank manages to survive, but that is a huge uh, amount lost to its uh, defense total there. And that wall of destruction hitting four monsters. All have zero attack now. Definitely smart there from Amaz. A yep. well-timed trap card. Yeah, using one single card to nullify four is uh, pretty good for you in that case. And we're actually seeing a lot bit more conservative hand sizes here. You see Amaz is still cruising at five five cards. Kibler has four. Dog is at three because in inherently his strategy involves playing out his cards quite a bit. And Trump is obviously at four here with most players still holding on to their ace cards. So this is going to be quite interesting. We'll see how these things develop here. Despite there being a lot of units on the board with four of them being no attack, it actually is quite open for anyone right now. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, this is interesting. Like everyone has a decent amount of cards in hand. Everyone seems to be playing a little more conservative. We saw that quick like sneak win there from Dog in the first game, but it doesn't look like we're gonna have that be the same case here. I mean, Trump warned him. He said, I know this strategy. I know how to counter it, but we'll see if it's enough. You see, what is that? Is that a gear free? Yep, gear free the Iron Knight. Oh, the first blue eyes is coming down. Here we go. Where is it going to target? We'll have to see. Yeah, we kind of saw in the last game, summoning your blue eyes first can kind of backfire because then one of the other um, uh, kings can summon their own blue eyes, use the destruction effect to destroy your blue eyes. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's almost like a deterrent policy, you know? You got to be really <laughs> careful about it. But we are seeing here an attempt to challenge Dog's Z Metal Tank. It's at just over almost 5,000 attack now, but it is getting challenged by uh, Trump's various uh, units here on the right hand side, so it won't have that much high of an attack by the time it eventually does meet, reach it to Trump. Here we go. The battle phase is beginning. We see one thing from Kibler heading towards Trump. That's gonna take about a turn to get there. For now, though, we're gonna be whittling down the power of the Z Metal Tank. Yep, it's still gonna survive after all those attacks. Oh, wait, it's going to lose a little bit of attack, but it's still not enough. Going to still have 600 after this battle. Ooh, mutually destroyed destruct, uh, destruction from his, uh, Dog and Kibler there, meaning that Trump doesn't have to worry about that attacker coming in on him anymore. This is pretty good for Trump. You managed to neutralize most of the threat of the Z-Metal tank while still having cards in hand. Can't be too mad about that. Yeah, I wonder if he, since he's down to just one monster in hand, probably going to draw another monster here. If he's going to look to get this Blue Eyes White Dragon out from the hand... Uh, soon, because I mean, soon he won't have any monsters to tribute. We'll God. see. Maybe he'll throw a debris dragon in defense mode. One of my favorite plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah the classic. I, I have to I have to almost encourage the blue eyes going onto the right lane here to fight uh, to fight dog. Dog is quite a few cards down, and with his eight and his main card being destroyed with Z Metal Tank, it stands to reason that you could get a huge counter swing out back at him. We'll have to see though for sure. Yeah, Maz we'll with a ton of cards in hand. Yeah, we're getting about to the halfway mark of the game. This I fully expect him to start playing out quite a few cards here. We'll have to see. Three seconds left. Here we go. More so stuff going out here. You got a trick star on that side. You got a golem. A melodious monster, I believe. Oh, there you are. You're right. Debris Dragon in defense mode. Good <laughs> call. They both gain a huge amount of attack and defense here, but still managing to stay ahead of the Z-Metal tank, and that's all that matters. Ooh, Dog Dog just pumping so much attack. 1,600. Still not enough. We'll see what happens here. Ooh, Amaz bringing back their own Z-Metal tank, it looks like. Turn it to the hand. The Maz is playing a much more value-centric strategy this time around. Just a lot of cards in the hand. We'll have to see if these last couple turns really come down to just playing out a bunch of threats. 200 damage coming in on Maz. Not great, but it's not something that's insurmountable. A second one, though, is a bit harder, though. Yep, that Mad Archfiend and Bersinichix getting a little bit of damage in there. Blue Eyes is going to fall to the Golem. Oh, it looks like a trap card has been triggered. It's Ring of Destruction from Kibler. That's going to destroy the monster that was on its way to face him, but it's going to be protected by Amaz's trap card, which protects one of his monsters from destruction. You see Amaz popping off there a little bit. They managed to read that that play. And now we got a full attack coming in on Kibler. And Kibler only has one card left. It's a little dangerous for him. Well, there we go. The Z-Metal tank has been officially been neutralized. And that is a cornerstone of Dog's strategy there. 
Indeed it is, and we are only halfway through. Dog does have the lead. Amaz has more cards than everyone else. Kibler low on cards and kind of not looking good on the board state with, you know, that 1600 attack monster on its way towards him. Yeah, you have to wonder if uh, if Amaz has just been waiting things out to sort of see where everything went and then just start dropping cards. He knew in inherently the dog would be quite a bit of a threat thanks to the Z Metal tank. But this time around, it's looking like it might actually be in his favor. We'll have to see here as the next summons come out. I fully expect Amaz to drop a bunch of summons here, especially against some of the players who don't have many cards. We can see Kibler's hand here not looking too great. Only two relatively low-powered monsters. Can, can answer the 1600 on the right there, but it's not going to be great no matter which way you go. Yeah, there we go. The full board state from Amaz right there. Yeah, that's what holding off your cards for a long enough time, you're able to use them all at the very end. Kibler definitely going to be banking on drawing these two cards once he gets to the later two turns, now that he is out of monsters. But, you know, his opponents uh, are going to okay. notice that he's also out of cards, so we'll have to see if that's going to bother him. Yeah, we'll have to see right here. Things are going to be a little interesting as we... Oh, huge wide attack swings there from Amaz's board state. We'll see where they all grow there. I think Dog's actually a pretty good target for the players right now. Out of cards, not many monsters on the field. Already won that first game. I think everyone's going to be eyeing him a little more closely. Completely agree. And we'll sort of see where that sort of ends up here. Oh, man. Huge attack loss there. Across oh the board on Amaz. The trap was so sick. Here mm. we go. Mm -hmm. All right, Mass Brutality. Mass. High attack, low oh defense. Boy. Oh, that's a lot coming at Kibler, and he has no spells or traps to answer this. Amaz still remembers that Kibler sent that blue eyes his way in the first <laughs> game, and he's not letting it go. Never forget. And that mm. is quite a lot, too. You look at the follow-up, too. Another uh, performer pal right behind it, 1,800 attack. That, that could just spell the end of the game right there if Kibler doesn't draw well. And with no monsters to tribute either, it's going to be pretty bad. Yeah, it's rough, and yet yeah, Kibler still one round away from the two draw phase. You know, that starts on round seven and eight, I believe, so definitely going to need to survive this turn. 2,500 attack coming in at him. Oh, boy. Oh, no. It's like the trick star is going to attack Dog for a little bit. But yeah, these direct attacks Kibler. Huge for Amaz. Puts Amaz in first place. And with the Moz getting, yeah. uh, with the Moz getting second in that yeah. first game, he's able to win this game. He'll get a first and a second right off the bat. That puts him in a huge lead to start things off. It's not looking good again. Yeah, Sparkman's there, but that's not going to do very much to save him. He could throw an attack mode against the twenty five hundred. It's going to put it down to nine hundred. He's going to eat that, and then he's going to eat the monster that's behind it as well. So it's tough. He's going to need I'm some help from one of his other. One of the other players definitely has to help him here, or else it's going to be lights out for Kibler, which would mean guaranteeing the victory for Maz and a second place for Dog, which would then therefore kind of mirror their, them as the first, first and second type for first uh, positions true. here. Just flip flopping their results from the first two games. Yep. Yeah. Got a, a jet in defense mode, and of course here comes the blue eyes white dragon. That's probably going to go after Kibler's card. I think Amaz is looking to win this game right now. And the fastest yep. way to win this game is to eliminate Kibler. Makes a lot of sense here. Hopefully yeah. the other players recognize this and have any way to help. A second blue eyes. Blow up that guy. Blow up that mutually assured blue eyes destruction. Yeah, that's a good point here. If Trump, if Trump manages to choose a strategic ch choice here, like say taking out that, uh, taking out the attacker there, it could be huge. Yeah, I think it's a seven rose magician, but definitely needs something. Trump, even with all that attack, is not gonna make much of a difference if he has nothing to attack. What? Oh, so what? he just oh, the monster. <laughs> I guess they just sometimes you just want to watch someone lose. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Trump's okay, okay, letting him come in third again. Unless there's something in spells here. No, that's going to be it. That, that's our second game. We did see Dog and Amaz flip-flop, so they're going to be tied for first, while Trump is going to be in third, and Kibler 
just being the target early and like once you get targeted it's tough to come back i mean that's why the early game is so important like you're able to you know i talk about holding off to see where everyone else is going at the beginning but once you get down low in life you become a target for everyone because that just means the game's over faster and we kind of saw that there killer how what did you i want to jump into killer first how did you feel about that uh blue eyes effect destroying your monster there at the very end kind of seemed like some salt in the blue eyes who came up that last turn killed my guys i was like mm-hmm. oh that's how it's gonna be huh <laughs> and then again what are you talking I got about the, the bonus card the the effect, the destruction effect got stopped so yeah. uh, I kind of feel like things have not been going exactly my way. Well, speaking of um, Amaz, what was your strategies for that game? Uh, honestly, you you clearly took a really solid win there. Talk us through it. Yeah, I did so good. <laughs> I reduced all their guys to zero attack, held off my cards, and then saw what was happening before I put my cards down. It was amazing. Yeah, we were talking about it earlier, but how uh, holding back your cards is really, really powerful. Uh, Billy, please. Oh, yeah, no, Trump, yeah, it was the wall of destruction was huge, but Trump, so you told Dog, if he sent that Z-Metal tank, you were prepared, and we saw that in that game. You didn't have much of a problem with that at all. It didn't seem to preoccupy your most of your time during that game, though, however. Yeah, like I said, uh, I brought a pretty middle-of-the-line deck. Uh, if I get Z-Metal tank sent at me, I'm not going to win, uh, but I can hold it off. So I guess it was up to Kibler to deal with some laws on that one. Uh, very so fair, very fair. I guess I'll just repeat. I don't recommend sending the tank against me or this will happen again. <laughs> Kevlar, using the sword and shield against me was brutal. I could have used that against Dog and then I could have held off some yeah, I of wish that I had like, that back later on, I'll tell you that much. Like when there was a, yeah. the, the thing that got plus a thousand, minus a thousand, I was like, you know what? It'd be great to swap this to zero instead. I know. And I am going to let people know I am willing to use my spells to help them. Uh, so using it against me forced me to use it again you know, against you. So that sucked. Yeah, that's totally fair. And Listen, I think I just wanted to survive to have tribute fodder, but then I just had tribute fodder because half my team became <laughs> zero attack. So. Oh, man. I think that is going to be uh, it for now. We're going to be heading off to our next break, but stay tuned. We're going to be going into match number three very shortly, and we'll see how things shake up from there.
It's time to doom! Ghosts from the Past, The Second Haunting, with dozens of new cards, plus nine famous ghost rares from all Yu-Gi-Oh! eras. Yu-Gi-Oh! Ghosts from the Past, The Second Haunting. 20 cards per box, each box sold separately. Welcome back, everyone. It's the Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel event here in Saturday in December. It's uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross, the King of the Cross. We've had a been a lot of like a month building up to this, where we've had streamers that were you know learning how to play Cross Duel, playing Cross Duel with their chads, and now all four of those kings are here duking it out in a five-game gauntlet. We've already had two games underway. You want to talk about what we saw there, Roy? Yeah, of course. So right off the bat, we have our four kings, Amaz, Kibler, Trump, and Dog Dog. Uh, in the first game, we saw Dog Dog take it away with a Z metal tank, absolutely running over the opponents. Uh, really great stuff there. And then the second game, we actually saw Amaz take that victory instead. And so now we have a win-win for each of the for each of those two kings. With uh, now uh, Trump and Kibler having to sort of figure out how to catch back up. We, there is still three games to go though. So let's uh, let's uh, check in with them real quick and see how they're preparing for this. Hello, Hello Kings. It's good to see you all. How are y'all doing? I mean, it's been two games so far, three games ago. You think y'all are starting to figure out each other's strategies and everything. So Amaz, you just won this last game. Uh, you, you and Dog both flipped. So you both have kind of a pretty big lead going into this next game. Are you going to be working with Dog to ensure y'all keep that lead? Or do you think you're going to be more going after Dog to make sure you can kind of break away from him? Well, I, I have a new deck, so... They're gonna be surprised. Yeah, new deck, <laughs> baby. So, so you just won and decided to switch your deck completely. Yeah, I actually just built it like on the spot just now. It'll be great, I'm sure. I can't. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Well, speaking of Dog Dog, obviously you and Amaz are now tied with one win, one second for each of you. How are you feeling about this? Are you going to try to secure against Amaz specifically or just going to try to play play the long game for maybe matches four and five? I'm just going to go for the best opportunity on the board. Amaz played really well that last game, so I'm a little concerned because he played so well, but uh, that's okay. Eh, maybe it was luck. Who knows? <laughs> Well, speaking of luck, Kibler, you seem to be getting a little unlucky. You know, you're getting that center card, but you're facing monsters that you can't use you against even a little unlucky. What are you going to do to try and turn this luck around and get things going? Honestly, I don't, I don't really know. I feel, I feel like there have been a few just like major blowout situations that have gone against me in every game, like between Dog's Tank, you know, coming at me when I had only destroy effects to like Amaz getting two of my guys with the zero attack thing. <laughs> so like... I've just had these major moments in both games that have really swung against me. So, you know, now I have a better chance, a uh, better understanding of what their, their decks are trying to do. I can try to avoid those things happening again. Indeed, indeed. And, uh, and Trump, unfortunately, you've had to play a lot of uh, reactive defensive play for the last uh, couple matches. Uh, are you going to try to take the initiative this time around? What are, you, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, I'm glad that we're playing a best of five because... With two people in the spotlight like this, uh, I think I have a better chance this time. Yeah, we, we are playing five total games. We're not even halfway through it. Midway point through this game, it will be that halfway point. So there's still a lot more games to be played, and the results are going to change. So I can't wait to see what you guys are doing here in game number three. Amaz says he has a new deck. Let's go ahead and check out and jump into our third game here, the King of the Cross event. All right, here we go. Loading into the third match. You can see the point totals on the left there. Kibler at two, uh, Trump at four, uh, seven on Amaz and seven on Dog Dog. So we can see two clear current winners right now. Uh, we'll have to see if that changes people's targeting and how they sort of in uh, interact with that. Focusing on Kibler here might be a detriment overall. Yeah, I think Kibler would be the one I want to lay off of. Maybe let Kibler get a chance to breathe and maybe focus down Dog or Amaz if I'm Trump. Completely agree there. And let's see what happens here. We have right off the bat, the card right in the middle there. 
we'll see what happens here. Amaz, yeah, I, holding I, I up wonder, the tank, it looks like. So Kibler's been making an emphasis to get this card, so we'll see if uh, he still goes after this card, or if maybe he's going to hold back, and maybe, you know, what's the point of getting this card if it's never going to really work out for me? Sometimes, that, yeah, that initial card and investing stuff into it is a little bit of a trap, because everyone knows that's what people are going to be going for at the start. Indeed. All right, here we go. Everything's all setting up here. Z-Metal tanking once more. The plan begins. All right, here we go. Exodia being summoned there as well. Z-Metal tank is also there as well. Here we go. Everything's going to start and get us set up here. Oh, it looks like we're seeing two speed units running right for that that card in the middle. So we'll actually be able to see them start fighting right off the bat. Yeah, we'll see if that card's going to play. If it's going to be Mirror Force, it's going to be Ring of Destruction, or maybe something like Monster Reborn. I think it, it seems like in this matchup, it'll be better if it's not a Destruction Trap and more of a... All right, here we go. See how the tax card is trying to scale up here. All right, big attacks coming on the left-hand side there. We have Dog with 2,000 attack against the Raider with a 2,100 attack. Yeah, full board here for Dog. It seems like that's been his strategy every game to make sure he gets three monsters on the board so he can start buffing up that Z-Metal tank right away. Oh, winning by a close margin, 100 attack, managing to push through there and secure the card. That's Trump with the card now. First time against Kibler. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past Trump to have known that Kibler has been doing that every single round and had to develop his own counter strategy to win just by a slight margin to steal the card this time instead. All right, still no damage being dealt yet. Let's see how this goes. Big Jaws. I love Big Jaws. Big Jaws, yeah. <laughs> Let's see what happens we here. Perform pal turn toad in the dog's hand. Yeah, of course, the blue eye still there as well. Killer is sitting on a whole mid of cards, six cards in hand, with Dog only at three. And unf but you know that is a that is quite the card going at Killer though. The Z metal tank looking like a reprisal from game one. Let's yeah, I wonder. Happens. Dog thought it was so easy. You know, he, he didn't go after Killer in that game number two. He went after Killer in game one, won that game. So maybe going back to that same kind of strategy. Kibler wanting to make sure he doesn't run out of cards this time. I think that's what he kind of felt in that last game. He was just out of cards. So holding back on summoning a lot of his monsters here. Yeah, I think at some level he had to expect that Dog might do this. Yeah, there's the uh, uh, the trap card being placed there as well. Hopefully it has an answer for that tank when it eventually does show up. Right. Kibler summoning all his monsters into defense mode. Yeah, probably looking to stem the bleeding there. There's Debris, Debris Dragon once more on Trump's side in defense mode as well. Facing That's off against so cool. that blue eyes, yeah. I've never seen the 3D animation for Debris Dragon and just seeing it in this game is really cool. It is really dope. We see Z-Metal tanks getting bigger. So a mod switches deck to where he was gonna also have <laughs> power of the Z-Metal tank. Yeah, it looks like uh, the, the meta of the Z-Metal tank is here as two of the players have quickly found it to be the most effective strategy for them. But the problem is, though, is that now that everyone's sort of playing around it, it might not work out for him. But Kibler's being focused by two of them, so that's going to be a, a bit of a rough spot for him. All right, here we go. Perform a power from Kibler, though, is going to pierce through, this, through the Tiger Jet, though, and be able to attack towards Trump, which is also huge. You see that Compulse sitting in that lane. Perform pal Silver Claw protecting Kibler. Definitely Kibler. Kibler's like, dude, one thing's for sure, he's going to make sure his life points stay high this time. He doesn't yeah. want to come in last. He, he knows that there's only three games to go. He can't take another last place probably and expect to climb back into this thing. So he's exactly. going to probably be really focused on not finishing in yeah, last place. But you know, obviously being first would be the best way for him to jump back into it. He would still be behind Amaz and Trump in terms of points for the games, but would be a lot closer. Yeah, exactly. And I think we're going to see right here between Amaz and Doug and dog what we can do here still facing down two tanks heading at you is terrifying i'm not even sure if you'll have a direct answer for this we'll have to see they're quickly scaling up 
Yeah, that Z middle tank is getting pretty big. We see 2,900 defense sitting over there. Kibler knows that it's there, so he has a monster in that zone. And now Trump also hanging out, doing his thing, kind of way to see where everyone else is going to be playing their monsters. There we go. Trump's finally getting some more monsters onto the field. Kibler tribute something for Summon Skull. God, 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 Magician and Big Jaws coming down for Dog. All right, here we go. There's a lot of units heading towards that middle lane, though. Everyone's got, everyone wants to meet in that middle and have a big fight. Yeah, it looks like it. With that much attack going wild here, we'll see what happens. Battle phase will begin here. One thing I noticed as well is the Y head also has the increased speed buff on it right now. So it'll be able to hopefully challenge that uh, Z metal tank a little bit earlier and still be able to develop in time right afterwards. We'll have to see though. 3900 attack on the Z metal tank on right hand side for Amaz uh, and 3200 defense on the one on the left, which probably puts it around the same attack as well. We'll have to see what happens here though. Uh, the Z metal tank definitely powerful. Ooh, Dark Hole, that's an impactful spell. It's gonna destroy every monster in this particular lane. And it looks like he went after Dog's lane. So there goes his Z metal tank. I think he might have actually destroyed his own monster as well. Just like in the TCG, Dark Hole, Dark Hole usually destroys all monsters. Everything. Opponents monsters. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But still, that means nothing coming from Dog, which is huge for him. Trump will take out the first one, but it will meet the golem next and we'll probably won't be able to defeat that. Still 2,000 instead on that Z metal tank. Much, much more, uh, more, uh, manageable. Uh, manageable, yeah. Oh, that's Summon Skull taking out everybody. It's headed straight towards Trump as well. Summon Skull, you know, a Yugi card from the very beginning. Definitely an iconic classic card. Yeah, absolutely. It was legendary. actually one of the best cards, like when the trading card game first came out. One tribute, 2,500. It was all the rage. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy back then. Yeah. All right, here we go. Former Pal Silverclaw. Add to his hand of Dark Resonator and Blue Eyes of Dragon and Fairy Meter Crest. We'll have to see how this plays out. Yeah, this is gonna be really rough. Trump needs to find a way to to, to get himself into the game in a, in a greater way. Two third places back to back is really unfortunate for him because he's just not he's not being in, in the action, right? Like most of the action is focused really heavily on the interactions with Kibler or Dog Dog and Amaz. So he needs to sort of like take the initiative here and maybe start swinging towards that open dog lane, right? Dog has very few cards. It could be a chance perhaps to secure a bit of an LP lead. So even if he doesn't win it, he's at least coming in second instead and getting a higher points total. That's very true. And then maybe use like that blue eyes of destruction. He could, like go after dog with the blue eyes, use the destruction effect to take out the golem. Uh, yeah. Maz is sending his way. But it looks like he is going to go over the blue eyes for um, on Maz's side. But I wonder if he's still going to take out that golem just to try and get that 3000 towards Maz. I mean, when you have Maz and dog sitting on either side of you, like either one of those players you go after is the guy in first. So you have a good option either way. For sure. We'll see what happens here though. Former pal also getting summoned out there. Another blue eyes, of course. See what they decide to destroy. Yeah, both players are thinking, where do they want to fire this? There is a blue eyes with an effect in the trading card game. It's a blue eyes alternative white dragon from Dark Sides of Dimension, the movie. Yeah. It was really cool. It has a similar effect where it just destroys a monster on the opponent's side of the field. So even though this is a blue eyes white dragon, it kind of more functions like the alternative white dragon. Yeah. But you see it getting even stronger from the skills. Now he's going to use the destruction skill to take out the... So he's doing the flip-flop of what I thought yeah, he was going to start to do. Yeah, exactly. He's going to the other side, destroy the dog's monster that he sent after him, but still smart stuff. Yeah, it actually works out even better this way because uh, this has less attack than the, the raider would have been to fight directly, so this actually works out even better. Oh, yeah, for sure. This is some That's good timing a, here. Yeah, this is anticipation. Trump had to anticipate that dog was going to summon a monster in that lane. And after, you know, dark hole and destroying dog's cards, you can bet the dog's going to come back with a vengeance. Be like, oh, you want to destroy my monster? I'm still coming after you. And yeah. Trump reading that situation perfectly. Yeah, really great stuff by Trump. I think this is exactly what Trump's needs. With still four rounds to go, that Blue Eyes is going to have quite a bit of time to make it over to uh, Amaz. And look, Amaz is just about to lose his E-Metal tank here too. Really solid stuff here. Here we go gonna take down one of those blue eyes that's headed towards him but he still has another blue eyes from trump on that right side and amaz only has a flute of summoning karibo in his hand i think it might i'm assuming it's gonna do something similar to the tcg where it can summon a karibo yeah but we'll have to see all right the standings are shifting up a bit here 
Kluber just 300 down. This is looking a lot closer than the previous rounds. We'll see how this goes, though. Killer still has a quite a few cards despite taking that hits, though. He's actually one of the most cards right now. But Man, he does have an attacker coming at him. Um, yeah. We'll see, see what happens what, here. Yeah. Amaz is sitting on these two spell cards. For the Flash of the Forbidden Flash, I think it's something like that. It's from Cyberdark. Yeah. I think of the TCG. It does it does some burn damage, uh, direct damage. So I'm assuming it does something similar and cross duel. We'll have to see how Amaz is going to use these cards. No monsters are summoned, though. Not great when you're facing down a Blue Eyes. But hopefully the yeah. Flute of Sunny Karibo can actually summon a Karibo. Yeah, 2800 is not looking too great. We'll have to see what happens here. Here we go. Battle phase begins. Exit cannon. Gonna be following up that blue eyes to head towards Amaz. Looks like a killer one two punch there. Maybe it looks like Trump is trying to take the win right really quick. Especially with Amaz having so few cards, it's gonna Dog's be hard tank. to answer. Dark's tank is up to 5,000 attack points. So if he finds a way to move that over towards Kibler quickly, he could end this duel in one attack. Oh, but remember though, Kibler still has the uh, uh, evacuation device on that first mm. slot there so maybe that'd be enough to stop kibler's i uh, sorry to stop doug's uh uh tank we'll have to see here it's kind of like render it where it's like stuck there gaining a bunch of attack with a second he moves it it's gonna yeah. be removed we'll have to see uh there's flash of the forbidden spell and it looks like it does something different in cross duel and makes them lose attack okay oh, so you saw it saw there yeah i saw 1000 point loss between the two units there not not enough to uh to really blunt the attack but it does make it so that it only does 3900 so Maz would still technically be alive um, so that is pretty important there. We're going to see how this all shakes out right now. Oh, Fairy Meteor Crush. Ooh, gains quite a bit of attack, too. Silver Claw getting a little stronger. Oh, and it does summon a Karibo. Yeah, it does summon a Karibo, of course, of course. I assumed. I was like, there's nothing else this card can do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a flu of summoning Karibos. It can't do too much else than what it does on the tin, you know? All right, here we go. Lots of attacks going out. Oh, Evacuation device. Returns to hand. That there it goes. Huge, 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 huge tempo swing there. All the turns you spent using to building it up, all gone now. Yeah, we're in turn five now. I think Doc's having that in the very first round, so definitely sad to see that for dog but killer you know he's learning that's an attribute of a good duelist as you learn as you go and you get a little stronger each match indeed indeed looks like trump here is getting in a bunch of damage in just a bit as well even with the karibo gone it'll be it only stall things out for so long here we go all the life points really tight all within 600 points of each other yeah, this is still anyone's duel. This is looking a lot more even than in the previous ones had been. All right, we'll see where everyone's starting to place their cards now. We are getting down to the final cards. This is the last round of single draw. The next two rounds will have every player drawing two cards per turn for a last sort of blitz here. So Kibler is at the advantage here with two, but actually Dog's still holding on to their ace card. That could be huge. Definitely, yeah. I'm I'm of the boot camp where I like to hold on to like my ace monsters. I mean, there's an advantages and disadvantage to it. If you use it early, you can get a lead early and maybe you know ride that to victory. But when you're holding on to it, all your opponents know that you're holding on to it. They can see it, so they're going to be a little more fearful that you're like planning something for the future. So definitely, just another layer to the game and strategy that you can bring into a cross -table. For sure, and we're going to see how these attacks wind up going out here. Ooh, wide. Yeah, huge attack gains right there across the board. Man, that's a massive wall. 2,600 in defense there. Dog Dog is going to have a hard time pushing into a Maz with that out there. Nice. Oh, just stop it. Silver Claw? Yeah, that's what it looked like. Nope, Gear Feed is going to make a direct attack here on Trump. Oh, no, he had to destroy the Exodia, so not able to make first. a direct attack. Yeah. yeah. 1,500, though, that is substantial against Amaz. Trump putting himself in the lead very quickly here. And the Blue Eyes only get stronger. 
Oh, it's spiking like crazy. I believe we also have X there as well, so that should be another attack coming in shortly as well. Trump in the lead with only 1,000, but he is facing down another card here, but he does get to draw two here though. So we'll be able to start fighting these off more rapidly. Two 1,800 yep. attack monsters, really solid right there. Yeah, it's gonna be up to what Amaz has to stop off this next Blue Eyes attack. He's gonna at least need a monster in defense mode. And then, I mean, I don't know, Trump at least, uh, it's, it's tough to say what you do here. I mean, you definitely don't want to take this attack from the gear for each. So one of these monsters is for sure going in the right lane, and then maybe put one in the middle lane to watch that monster that's coming across. Yeah, I think right now, Trump, you just want to hold on for dear life, you know, play really defensively on the right lane, and then uh, uh, meet the person in the middle on the middle lane, and then hope that your Blue Eyes gets, gets there and ends the match quickly with Amaz. You know, it does seem like that strategy Trump is going for here in the seventh main phase. If nobody loses in the next couple turns, though, the game will end, and the player with the highest life points will be the victor. You have to wonder if everyone's going to start pushing towards Trump here with only two turns left. Maybe start directing more spells towards them to try to steal a better spot. Or in the case of, uh, of Dog and Kibler, they could try to go after each other to try to secure second place as well. Because Dog Dog can't be too upset if he gets another second place. That'd be fr uh, first, second, second in terms of their standing so far. Yeah, definitely puts them in a solid position going into the last two games. And meanwhile, if Trump wins this, he really wants to win this game just to jump back into the contention. And Kibler also desperately would want to win this game to, you know, catch up from those first two games. Yeah, so there's all destruction. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, nuke the defenses quite a bit there. Attack quite a bit there. Whoa, wow, that is brutal. Yeah, it is. The more monsters, the more attack they're going to lose. And now Blue Eyes only at 500, but still going to connect. Really solid there. And now, of course, Trump's cards will gain attack as their skills sort of allow them to. But that is a huge uh, slowdown on what was going to happen originally. Lots of trades here going out. Am Cloud are getting destroyed. Gear Free is going to bite the dust. And Dog is still not letting up. More cards coming in on Trump there as well. A little more attack points there for the Blue Eyes. Here we go. We'll see what ends up happening here. This is looking really tight. Looks like we are moving on to the final turn. This is turn eight. No matter what, this game ends after this turn. So let's see if someone reduces their life points to zero. He gets to draw two cards. Looks like he's going to draw Stargazer Magician and Stardust Dragon. Along with this enemy controller, we'll see it's enough to survive the turn. But I don't think he's going to be able to do enough damage to make sure he wins this game. So right now, things are looking good for Trump as long as he can just maintain this lead through this last turn. Yeah, and his, his biggest threat for that, of course, is the dog on the right-hand side there. He has to really fight off against the two units coming on from the right. And there's no units coming from Kibler, and there's no units coming from Amaz. So there's 100% of his attention is going to be on trying to stop Dog from taking the first spot from him. Because if Dog takes first here, that's going to be really hard to, to, uh, to avoid in the five uh, in the two match we have left. Yeah, two first place and a second place, that's that's tough. Like, when there's only five games total. Unless, like, I mean, I'm assuming at that point, everyone would just have all eyes on Dog. Oh, and dog. Every time in the fourth place last, every time. Last that's why it's, yeah. the games are all going to be different because, yeah, everyone's, like, ideas are going to change based upon the seeding and who's doing well already so far through the five games. I think it's going to make for a really exciting fifth game to see how it plays out because they'll know exactly what they need to do to get into the right position. Yeah, I completely agree. Oh, it's a huge defensive wall by Maz, though. Going to be able to fight off against that Blue Eyes. Yeah, Dog has a lot of monsters in attack mode on his that he summoned, but they're not going to be able to really get too far, but a second place still wouldn't be bad for him. Yeah, Trump's going to be able to answer right there as well, so we'll see how this goes. All right, see how these trades start happening here? Enemy controller, of course. Looking to put that into defense mode. Amaz trying his best to stay alive here. Two units with extremely low attack. It looks like Amaz is playing really defensively, but unfortunately doesn't have the life point lead for that to matter too much. Just trying his best to stay alive. Yeah, it's tough. It's kind of the yeah, once you get the lead and you're able to hang on to it. Oh, dog doing a little bit of damage there. It's going to knock Trump down to 4,900. 
Doc up to 4,200. He might be able to make the difference up. This is really close. Now, probably a first and second situation, but it's also important to note that Killer's not really losing any LP either, so this actually could be enough to put Killer into second. We'll have to see right here. This going to be really tight. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's going to be close. The dog's going to be gaining a lot of life points here. A 1,900-point swing is going to knock Trump down and put Dog up to 6,100. Now Dog in first place again. And here Killer in managed to take it in second, though, so that's actually pretty solid here. And there we go. In the final round, we get to see a swap between uh, Trump going from first to third, falling into third place once more. Uh, truly unfortunate there, as we see... Uh, uh, Trump gets pushed down into, into third place once more. Hey guys, uh, hey Kings. Uh, so first things first, dog. You managed to secure another win. Incredibly solid work there. Uh, but you didn't act, you didn't get there on the back of the Z Metal Tank. You actually managed to pressure another way. So why don't you walk us through that real quick? Uh, well, I wasn't putting pressure on other people, so it didn't seem like anyone was going for me. So I kind of just held my cards a little bit and then took the opportunity once Trump was in trouble from another source to like push damage on him so it ended up working out that chop card was really good from kibbley though okay well, kibbley let's I, talk about that two tanks. <laughs> 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 yeah we were, we were joking but we saw a mazda he switches deck oh it's another z metal tank i, I see why he switched so yeah mazda what, what made you want to switch my somehow yeah. this time i got second instead of last <laughs> yeah so i was getting owned super early couldn't really cut back and then trump Freaking, you know, got me when I was low and just kicked me, you know? Ah, disgusting. Unfortunate. Speaking of Trump, by the way, unfortunate falling from I'm, first to third in a single fell I'm swoop. I'm so sad. I, I'm going to mention this, Amaz. If I were you, I would have used the Z controller on Dog. Right at the end there. That would have gotten me first, and Dog, like, Dog now has two firsts. No, you summoned a Blois against me. I'm not going to give you first. <laughs> <laughs> really? Are you kidding Dang. me? Oh. You, you said we learned that in the first game. Do not send Blue Eyes a Mazway. He will not forget about it. <laughs> he still has you. Four games in no. But uh, Killer, yeah, you played a lot more conservative in that game. It seemed like you were holding your cards back, kind of waiting to see where everything went. And it netted you a, a second place, kind of like a surprise second place out of nowhere. How was that? Well, was that what the game plan was? I mean, yeah, like once once it was clear that like yeah, I was I was, you know, being bullied by double tank and everything, I was like, okay, well clearly I'm not gonna win this game. And, you know, I, I ended up uh you know, drawing that that sword and shield the last turn, but then there was the enemy control to stop the life gain there, but because uh dog was able to take Trump down, I still managed to squeak out second, so I felt pretty good about that. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. That's why you can really never know like how it's all going to play out to that very last turn when the last attacks can really change everything. Since you're like you're lo making someone lose life points and you're ga gaining it, the swings can be pretty huge. But it was really awesome to see you guys go at it there in this third and final game, uh, third game before we go to our fourth and final game. Yeah, and uh, of course, guys, we're getting ready for the fourth and last game right now. But uh, feel free to start readying up, and we'll get ready to go into the next match. Yeah, I can't wait to see how it's going to play. I mean, Dog taking two wins. I know Trump was talking about how we should have teamed up against. I know maybe, uh, Dog, do you, are you worried that everyone's going to be coming out after you in this last game? Like, like they have to beat you or go home? Like, what? what how are you going to go into this game preparing for that? <laughs> uh, I'm just going to play my cards and hope for the best. I mean, if they all go for me, maybe they'll win, but I'm pretty ahead, so we'll see. Okay, sure, so I imagine sure. maybe like a defensive strategy or something. What are you, what are you thinking, right? You think he's going to play defensively? I think you kind of have to at this point. You, at this point, you, it's more so he, even I think a second place or even a third place would still get the overall victory for Dog. So Dog just got to focus on playing a bit more chill, and I think that will secure it for them. Uh, but we'll be into our match just a little bit as all of our kings uh, finish up their final changes and their decks and hit ready up. Uh, we'll be able to get started onto our final match in just a little bit. Uh, super excited to see what ends up happening here. Um, I'm kind of kind of interested in see how the matches will change now that the final round is finally here, uh, and we'll see how everyone changes their strategies. Yeah. So, Trump, are you are you thinking maybe like you're you're so close to getting like the your goal from the game? You're you're planning things out, but then that last little minute, you just feel like the other kings aren't helping you out enough to win. Or what's 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 your game plan here? It's. So brutal, I can't begin to explain my frustration at these simpletons. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, Trump, so you go Trump, against me. We've got to work I, I, together. I'm going to go against you, all right? Trump. Oh, my goodness. 
Yeah, so maybe Trevor should take some of his own advice. I think, are we about ready to jump into this final game, Roy? Yeah, I'm about ready to jump in as well. Let's head in as soon as we can here once everyone's all readied up. And we'll head in and see who our final winner is going to be. Yeah, it's been exciting. Yeah, I've had a lot of fun watching you guys. You guys are all, you know, amazing duelists and uh, gamers just in general. I mean, it's I mean, it's an honor to watch you guys like go at it and uh, find the way you decipher the strategy and try to come out on top. It's really, really awesome to see. And I can't wait to see how it's going to happen here in the fourth and final game here of our Yugo King of the Cross. We're about to crown our king. Let's go ahead and jump into our fourth and final game. All right, here we go. Loading into the final match. The scores are relatively close here. I think we need to switch the dog, dog, and Trump's scores a bit there. But other than that, things are looking pretty solid here for each of the players. We're going to be doing quite well as we get into each of the match right here. The first round, as always, going to be really determined around that first middle card, seeing what people can get from it, seeing if we're going to go for the speedy approaches like we've seen in the last couple matches. But we'll uh, have to see what goes on here. And yeah, ignore these points. These points are not correct. <laughs> oh, there we go. Now they are. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot more along the, the scales of where it is. Dogs won two games, and he got second, so that'd be four, four, and three. So he's sitting at eleven points. Amaz has gotten a variety of finishes. The finish with eighth. Kibler with a couple of last places, but then getting second puts him into five points. And Trump sitting at six. So this being the final game, it's going to be looking at how these players are going to team up. What is Kibler and Trump going to do to make sure Amaz or Dog does not win this game? Because even at the end of the day, even if they walk away with the most amount of points, you can at least say, like, you've won one of the games at least. Yeah, exactly. And in this case specifically, Dog would have to get last and then Maz would have to get first for there to be a change in the standings that's dramatic for first place at least. So I wonder if Amaz is going to really try to specifically target Dog because that is, that is their main way to get this victory here. And Dog has not changed his strategy any of these games. He's just doing the same. Some of my three monsters get my Z Metal Tank in defense mode to start buffing it up. This has been the winning strategy for him so far, and it seems to be playing out the same way here in the fourth and final game. Trump holding back on playing any monsters on this first turn, as we saw him do in the first game. We'll see how that pays off. Everyone's running for that first card. Golem and Killer manages to take it this time and still maintains a decent amount of attack here too, running in against Trump. Trump has two big threats coming at him. We'll have to see what he ends up doing here. Next card is getting drawn out here. Killer has to deal with a 2000 attack coming at him on the his left lane. But other than that, looking pretty happy as he runs towards Trump. Nothing between Amaz and Kibler just yet. I have to imagine we won't see too much action there, but because of a uh, because of their set setups for the next matches. Let's see what happens here. We're looking at Trump's side lots of the board. Lots of cards, lots, lots of cards. Lots of cards, full minute cards here. Tricks. We haven't seen the Trap Tricks Atrix uh, in the drawn yet, so let's go to see the Trap Tricks monster. He also has a Forest Raider, a Go 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 Golem, Silver Claw, X Head Cannon, and that fantastic trap card we've seen to make a lot of impact here this weekend. That's Wall of Disruption. I mean, it's really cool that on the digital games, Wall of Disruption's impact. The first time it debuted was actually in the Duel Links, and it was just incredible because you can only have three monsters on the field, and you reduce mm. all their attack to zero. They just sit there. It's kind of similar to what happens to them here in Cross Duel. Exactly. Wall seems really, really powerful, especially if you end up being a player who's getting focused. Like if Dog has it in their deck this, this, uh, this game, it could be absolutely brutal. All right, here we go. Yeah, Dog's starting to scale up that tank. Oh, this is really interesting, actually. So Trump is actually putting their Golem into defense mode to win out the initial fight. But because it's gaining attack, it'll be able to shift into attack mode and then attack with its full force right after. Really Smart. solid play there by Trump. Yeah, Trump seems, to, Trump seems to have a pretty good grasp on the game. It has an idea and a strategy going into things. Just whether they play out the way that he's anticipating has been the only difference. But I really like where his head's at in these games and how he's planning his plays. I mean, that's what this game is. Yu-Gi-Oh! is always about planning and thinking ahead. Like, how do you beat your opponent? You think the next step ahead, but you really have to plan in this game with, you know, so much going on, being attacked three different ways, and you have to take the time to send your monsters across the board. It's all about the plans. Looks like Dog and Kibler's cards actually cancel each other out there, so Trump is actually having an open lane now, and we're going to see the Z-Metal tank and the uh, 2000 attack monster on the left there both heading in, and that's going to be... A lot to answer, but he does have the cards to do so, including the wall, which this could be a, perhaps a decent spot to put it. Like, for example, tribute something for the blue eyes here, killing the 2000 unit and then challenging the tank outright. That could be enough for, for to swing the favor and, and to swing these towards his favor. 
Yeah, certainly. I'll have to see. I mean, Trump just said, I'm always going to be in favor of the guy who has a lot of cards. Trump, our king, has so many monsters in his hand. And anytime you can just summon these three, like the only downside to holding a lot of monsters in the trading card game is you can only normal summon one per turn. So if you have four monsters in your hand, the only as good as how many as you can put from your hand. And cross mm. you can play as many as you want, including like you can summon and attribute that a monster you put down immediately. So just holding like two monsters with a blue eyes or dragon means at any point you can summon the two monsters, tribute both of them for blue eyes or dragon right away. So definitely uh, cool to see the strategies that develop as cross tools, you know, varies from the trading card game. For sure. And you saw we actually he put down X to face off against the Z Metal tank, which probably perhaps to try to bleed out some of the uh, power on it. We'll see what happens here. Sure. Yeah, that's another big change is just being able to slowly whittle down strong monsters as opposed to having that just kind of run you over, over and over again. But we do see that a lot with the Z-Metal take here in yeah, this game. We do, we do in this case specifically. But watch out, Dog actually also played a Blue Eyes, and if the Blue Eyes has the effect, it's going to target the X, destroying it, which means that that's, the tank is going to be able to get in for the full attack of 3,700 here. That's going to be brutal. Dog not playing any games here with Trump, that's for sure. He's sending two giant monsters straight at him. Yeah, but of course, we got the wall there. Try to stem the bleeding the best you can. Oh, that, that's Maz's wall, actually. I believe Trump also had a wall as well, so hopefully that comes out here. Yeah, there it is. Gonna nuke all the attack coming at him. Five units, that's gonna be a massive decrease. Oh, man. Trump always with the plans. Knows how to get the maximum value. He held that wall disruption until it was the perfect amount of value and just deemed it worthy to use. Really great stuff there. Suddenly what seemed insurmountable is now gonna be a lot more uh, reasonable to deal with. He'd probably answer both lanes with a single unit each and with him holding six cards right now, he is absolutely fine. Cover Dog did manage to get one strike off, so he is taking the lead right now. And that's all he needs to secure this overall win. Let's see where ends up people end up going here. We got the Tiger Jet flying in and against the Golem, but the Golem will win with a 200 lead there. But Doc is running out of cards quite quickly, and we're only on turn four. That could spell like doom, and if he doesn't get to the draw two phase fast enough, especially yeah, if every other player had a, had a full hand. I think he might need to just a full send to this Mad Archfiend towards Trump and just have three monsters lined up trying to end this game as fast as possible. He's not going to win the game if it goes to eight turns, probably, because you mentioned he's down on cards to everyone. Everyone else has a full hand. Yeah, he's going to want to try yep. and take out Trump as fast as possible. Really solid play there by Dog. Only this really is only option here. Yeah, playing out to his outs really well here. Try, try his best to see what happens. We'll have to see if it's enough, though. Trump answering with quite a few cards of his own. I like that you mentioned the playing to your outs. That's a big key uh, ingredient to doing well in any sort of card games. Is you may not be in the winning position, but all you can do is the best play possible, or the next card you get will put you in a better position. Exactly, exactly. And especially in a game like this where it, there's so much going on, and there's so much you have to consider, you have to just analyze it to what is your actual win condition? What is your best way to win here? Oh, oh no, Moss actually got the teleport in too. That's gonna teleport the 2500 unit oh, wow. right in earlier. That could not what Trump was expecting at all here. That means to be, what is that, three? I can't tell the attack totals. There's probably 700 attack total difference there as well. That yeah. combined with a huge wave from Dog, that's going to be brutal. Yeah, Maz, hey, Maz already made it clear. He doesn't care who wins. He just only cares about who loses. <laughs> very fair, very fair. He's okay with Dog walking away as long as the person that went after him is the one that's going to be taken down. We see all the battles happening, monsters being destroyed, direct attacks going through, Trump taking another 700. Now we're gonna see Silver Claw. Oh, the Golem's gonna destroy a monster. Silver Claw's gonna take on this Vorse Raider. And Matt Archfiend's now gonna take on the Vorse Raider. That's been weekend. The Gear Freeze trade. Everything's trading out here quite a bit here. It's still looking quite close. Oh, 100 just barely managing to beat the Golem. And Dog's looking pretty happy here. Yeah, low on cards. Trump, Trump has four cards in his hand, including his ace monster. Plus, he's going to draw one for a turn, so it goes to five. So he'll probably have some defenses here. But we'll have to see if it's enough. Is Dog going to keep sending units at Trump? I feel like he almost have to at this point and hope that everyone else is on board with attacking as well. But you have to wonder if everyone else is going to sort of transition here to moving against Dog now that he's out of cards. We'll have to see here. This would be really close because if Trump gets eliminated too early, Dog is going to take the win right off the bat. If I was a Maz, for example, you have to start looking towards Dog, because if Dog isn't getting literally last place, Dog's rocking away with the whole win. Yeah, this is definitely good position if I were Dog. 
I'm trying to think what could go wrong for him. Kibler has three cards, including his A's. If Kibler decides to go after Dog, I think it might help him, but yeah, it does look like Kibler is going to summon a summon skull in that lane against Dog. Amaz is still going after Trump here, though. He, he guys locked his eyes. Uh, it's hard, his yeah. Target inside, yeah. And Trump doing his best here. Tiger Jet in defense mode, 1800. Summons. Oh, no, that's Blue Eyes. Blue Eyes, White Dragon. Here we go. Now, I wonder where it's attacking. Probably immediately pop the 1800, I would expect, but we'll see. He could. I mean, if you want to go after the strongest monster on the board, you're going after Kibler's Summon Skull, but does that Summon Skull really bother you when you want Dog to lose? I don't think Trump's going to do that because he's going to want, he wants Dog to lose this game for sure. So I imagine he's going to destroy one of these three monsters that Amaz is sitting out after him. Maybe the one in the middle that has the most attack. We'll have to see how it plays out. Skill activate gain attack here. That blue eyes can wipe out that entire wave. Let's see where it's end up finding an attack here though. I feel like I might be targeting the... Oh, here we go. Lowers defense. Everyone just throwing their skills at Trump. Yeah. Blue Eyes does have enough attack to take these guys out, though. Summon Skull doing quite well there as well. It looks like that third monster is going to battle the Blue Eyes and destroy it. And now Trump's defenses have fallen. He's lost some cards from his hand, down to just two more cards, but still has an onslaught of monsters headed his way. It looks like all Trump's trash talk leading up to this final game. This is everyone's chance, last chance to go after Trump, yeah. and it looks like they're kind of taking advantage of that. For sure, for sure. It does look, Dog has to be careful though here. Look, even though he wants to keep pressuring Trump and end this game sooner, that Summon Skull coming right at him is gonna be something he has to consider, especially with only drawing one more card this turn. You gotta wonder what, what you can do here. Yeah, I might just have to throw that Melodious Monster in defense mode and just hang on for dear life, but still have three more rounds to play, including this one. But yeah, you Dog took the bonus the cards. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. Is it still anyone's yeah, we'll, game here? Yeah, we'll see if he decides to go defensive or just to go keeps that steady, steady stream of monsters. Yeah, it's going to be the defensive option against Kibler. Makes sense. Amaz still pressuring Trump here. Everyone gains his head. Melodious Monster Skill is going to let him boost all his other monsters' attack as they go after Trump. All right, so he is going to be able to take down this Gear Freed and connect against Trump for 900 as long as nothing else changes. Yeah, we'll see. There's quite a few other spells and traps around. Maybe someone's able to help him. We'll see. Battle phase is beginning. 13 seconds. And if Dog wins, everyone loses. <laughs> here we go. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, Trump doing his best to fend off the attackers on the left and left lane as well. That's quickly getting pressured out here. Summon Skull takes them out as well. Gear Freed's going to be able to connect for a little bit more damage, advancing Dog's lead a little further, pushing Trump down a little more. And Trump is now out of cards too. Everyone's on the same footing here now. Sorry, I mean, out of those two. Amaz still has two cards, including his ace, so he's looking to probably play that sooner than later. Kibler is also at three cards here as well. Let's see what the plan is here. Final couple turns. Yep, only two turns remaining. They got that double draw here in main phase seven. I think inherently, if you're dog, sorry, if you're a monster, you probably want to send at least one thing after dog to put some pressure on him through the mid lane. Get, even getting one attack through to sort of pressure dog could be huge for you. Yeah, I mean, pretty much at this point, you just have to decide, do you want to try and go after dog? Or are you ready for dog to walk away with the victory? And it looks like a Maz is just going to throw out a defense monster, but a blue eyes white dragon is coming down as well. Couple more monsters here. Really solid Dark stuff Rex. here. Yep, Dark Resonator and Backup Secretary. 
Is that Junk Synchron? I think that is a monster effect monster version of Junk Synchron, which is cool to see. Yeah. Junk Warrior, sorry. Junk Synchron is the effect monster. Junk Warrior is the Synchro monster. Yeah. Use takes, one of you says ace monsters. 2500 attack, though. That should be enough to push through. Yeah, we'll be able to fight out both of the entire lane there. But the Trump is going to lose a lane. Though. Yeah, Trump's going to lose another card to the burst beam. Yeah. Yeah, Ma's still just sending more monsters towards Trump. I think he has summoned a monster in the Trump's lane every, every turn. Every turn. Yeah. this last game. Summon Skull looks like it fell to the Dark Resonator. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Couple of traps here from Kibler. He's prepared for anyone that's coming after him, but it looks like this is the first game they decided not to go after yeah. Kibler. <laughs> Truly unfortunate there. But, but it, still, attack totals are really close here. Kibler mm -hmm. could easily make something happen here. This is the final turn of our final game. We will be crowning a king of the cross champion after this match. And then after the match, we will also be doing a giveaway for those custom AirPods. So make sure you stick around after we uh, determine a winner so you can make sure you find out how to win. All right, here we go. The final turn. Dog looking pretty confident with a sword and shield in hand as well as a blocker. He's going to be able to basically stop just about anything that gets thrown at him here. Let's see what Dog's thinking. Silverclaw is going to protect him from this worst raider. Yep, makes sense to me. Nice stuff. Star Gazer Magician coming down. Or Time Gazer. I'm not sure which one that is. I can't. I think it's Star yeah. <laughs> But Blue Eyes. Definitely on the field. We see a couple of them flying around. We see that Junk Warrior hanging out as well. It looks like we're looking at a pretty solid winner here, but let's see where the second and third place fall for this. Well, this, if, if Kibler's Warshader attacks Dog here, it'll flip-flop them. So Kibler might be able to walk away with one game. When I told you the the... The gamer inside Killer might not want him to walk away without being able to take one of these games. So I imagine he can still try and aim for that first place here. For sure. Let's see what happens. Attack and defense switch. Nice. Enough to keep Killer easily ahead there. This is going to be really tight. I actually can't do the math on this. It's hard. <laughs> it <laughs> could work out for Kibler. I can't, I can't really tell, though. It's 1,200, so yeah, it's 52, to, and then he'd be at 45. So he'd have a 700-point lead. And he's also going to lose month, uh, some life from the Junk Warrior attacking him directly as well. Mm -hmm. Direct attacks coming through. Kibler up to 4,900. Dog going down to 3,900. Kibler's in first place. Amaz is in a close second place, though. That is really tight. Is that it? Let's see. And, oh, that is it. Kibler walks away with the last match out of nowhere. Kind of showing off when, you know, everyone's not ganging up on him. He knows how to win the game and gets that first place finish here in our last game with Amaz coming in second. What a wonderful last game. That was well played. You know, Kibler, anything you got to say about that one? What, did you play your strategy different or did you just, was that the first game you really felt like he got to like breathe a little bit? Well, I mean, for one, I wasn't staring down a bunch of tanks trying to kill me. That oh, helped a lot yeah. with my ability to actually play the game and not kind of just be trying to survive. It was pretty funny though, because I, I kept having all of my all of my monsters like exactly die, so I never had tribute summon material until like I drew my resonator the last turn. I was like, okay, this could actually get my monster through to do the damage for the win. So that felt good. Nice work, nice work. Uh, and uh, Amaz, so talk me through your strategy of like really pushing into uh, Trump there throughout the match. Yeah, uh, a lot of things are really close. Um, I could have actually used the mask, uh, that was an attack mask, for, uh, to make Trump beat Dog, but I was like, eh, 
it doesn't matter. Trump is going to lose anyway, so I just didn't do it. Damn. No, so you didn't want to. Right. No benefits there. Mazi seemed very really focused on the solo aspect of the game. It didn't, yeah. it didn't really matter, right? So, like, there's no the point, you know? Trump just couldn't carry himself at the end. <laughs> Alright, well, Trump, so you got a, you got a response to Mazi there? <laughs> it's great that these these fools had fun playing their silly game but i had fun defending against their attacks i'm i'm honored that they felt the need to go so hard against me all right, but it was fantastic. Thank you, guys. I am a, a huge fan of all of you personally. I watch y'all all the time. Y'all are excellent, excellent gamers, and I thank you so much for being here. It was an honor watching you guys and so much fun watching y'all duel it. But we are going to just stick here with our winner here, Dog. But thank you, guys. You are all awesome kings and did it incredible for us, and it was a really awesome time watching y'all play. I had fun. Awesome. Dog, <laughs> dog, do I need to check my PayPal after against. this? Well played. <laughs> maybe, maybe. All right, bye. See you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, dog. It, it, amazing work throughout each of those matches. We were kind of surprised. We thought for sure that like throughout like a, a series of four matches that there'd be a lot more differential here. But you actually managed to secure multiple wins. Uh, how did you? How did you? What do you put your uh, your success to? Uh, I think that once you target one person, they're gonna be like really defensive against you so i just try to like target one person each time that way you know they're like thinking about me and then i don't do anything to them so like i didn't i went kibler and then i went to trump and then i went to a Moz one game and then i went back to kibler just to like i don't know it's not at the front of their minds uh, if you ignore them for a round so that's what i was trying to do Okay, a little bit of misdirection, you know, communicate your place off through yeah. the way you're playing your cards and yeah, misdirection, get them thinking you're coming out there. Maybe you're not, you know, maybe they're not thinking you're coming out there, and then all of a sudden you are. I like that. Uh, that's fantastic. See, it paid off a big, you won, you got first, first, second, and then uh, I don't think you got third there in that last game, I think. Uh, yeah, I think but yeah, so. definitely, definitely good results there. It's fantastic. See, is there anything you would tell the people out there playing cross tool uh, to get better at the game or yeah, something they could learn from your play? Uh, I would say that contesting the middle is really difficult because you're fighting against four people. So a lot of times when you send cards down the middle, you're just kind of sacrificing the card and not getting much value. So you kind of want to let people like battle it out and then see who's preoccupied with what and then push when you can. Probably the best. Makes a lot of sense. Makes sense to me, yeah. And especially one thing I thought was really interesting was that even though you clearly were uh, a pretty focused plan on the Z Metal Tank, even when you lost it, you still had a really solid strategies to sort of back that up. Uh, do you think that people maybe perhaps focus a little bit too much on the Z Metal Tank and then just let themselves open to the rest of your sort of play? Well, there's just a lot of different places for pressure in this game. So, like, uh, let's say someone summons a Blue Eyes against you and then they destroy your monster. You're going to be focused on that Blue Eyes, right? So you're going to have to allocate a lot of resources there. So you just have to like keep track of their cards or how many cards they have, and then put pressure whenever they know you know you they can't deal with you, and that that's, that's it. So you don't have to rely totally on your ace monster. All right, makes a lot of sense. So there's a lot of you're talking about a lot of strategy that goes into cross tool. So here's a final question: Like, do you are you, would you recommend cross tool to people to play kind of for fun? Like, what do you think is the best setting for cross tool? You think playing with your friends, maybe trying to grind on ladder, maybe a little bit of both. I would say it's definitely fun to play with your friends, like uh, kind of trash talking each other. And uh, I don't know, getting it's, it's just like having fun with it. You know, you just you just play games and you, you talk to each other and you have a good time like that. that. That's the best setting for it, I would say. Yeah, I think the banter between the kings, it was my favorite part of the event. And I really didn't care who won. I mean, I'm fans of all you guys. And so I'll see you walk away with is not a surprise to me. I mean, you've won plenty of things in your past. So definitely used to being that champion here uh, for the weekend. It was really fantastic to see you guys and uh, a lot of helpful insight. And it was really, really awesome. And thank you for joining us. And congratulations again to our king of the cross, Dog Dog. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for casting, guys. It was, it was great. I appreciate it. Thank awesome. you once more for joining us, man. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Well, what what an incredible series and tournament that was. Uh, honestly, uh, for those of you who are, who've still been watching, there's been an amazing, like, just incredible strategy across the board for seeing like four really acclaimed strategy players all like really flex their muscles and, and get get a chance to sort of showcase what makes this game so special. I, I'm really excited to go and, tr and try some of these decks I saw my, myself actually.
I got I to go get my Z-Metal tank and figure <laughs> out how to make it as awesome as it was in that match. So I'm going to be doing that right after this. It's been really awesome. And you, we've been talking about it all along that there's going to be a raffle here at the end. You're going to enter in the chat. Only U.S. residents can win. So if you're not in the U.S., don't really bother entering because, you know, you're not going to be able to get the prize once we get down that far. But if you are a resident in the U.S., type in the chat and you will be entered to win the custom Apple AirPods. So definitely make sure you do that before we go here. Yeah, the Apple, uh, the, those uh, those custom AirPods look so cool. Uh, the, the case itself is like a solid black and has like these really cool like symbol on it. It, lo it looks amazing. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really jealous of whoever, whoever manages to, to take that, take that home. Certainly. And it's been an awesome Saturday. I want to thank everyone, all the viewers at home for joining us. It's been really cool to see what exactly what cross duel is, what it's about. We got to see these decorated duelists being able to, you know, play the game. It's a mobile game. You can it's available in the iOS store, Google Play. You can download it on your phone, jump into play right away. If you can do you saw the Knights Raid uh, or the King's Raid where they took on the raid battle, you can team up with other people online, or you can play against them one v four one v three in a four way free for all. Cross duel is really awesome. I want to thank our kings for do, putting on such a show, the knights that came here and you know really help them through the process kind of maybe show them how good that zemo thinks and yeah. i want to thank to everyone behind the scenes konami for putting on such an awesome event all the production and everyone that goes into this a lot going on to make these events function. and thank you to the skilled roy my other caster it was so awesome to have you here do you want to say anything before we head out well thanks obviously to you as well billy obviously uh quite a bit more experience than me in a lot of these types of uh, games so i really appreciate that but obviously thank you also to everyone who watched back at home if you guys want you guys can easily download the app right now on your phones uh uh, you go cross duel absolutely amazing game it was some of the most fun i've ever had playing in a, in a four player game before a really really great time it was awesome thanks for joining us we will be back next time with some more yu-gi-oh action so make sure you follow the channel if you're interested in the trading card game master duel duel links or cross duel we're going to have more streams coming in the future thanks for joining us have a good weekend bye so in the trading card game all the monsters have attack and defense just like in cross duel well, we're getting a lot of AC cards coming out right off the right out of the gate here. Looks like a really fast paced sort of match here. <laughs> Hero cards everywhere. Everywhere. Three, seven. <laughs> wow, that is crazy. You coming in pretty pretty fast on that one.